Happy 25th anniversary to the Pokemon franchise as celebration. For the first time ever on YouTube, my wife and I are going to go through all 151 Generation 1 Pokemon using the Pokemon Fit, otherwise known as Sitting Cuties Plush. Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, Lithium here from my channel Nintendo Collecting with my wife Ivory. Hi! And we're going to go through all of them. This video is going to be long, so what these are, they are plush that are either called Sitting Cuties in North America or they are called Pokemon Fit in Japan. These are essentially exactly like Beanie Babies. They have little beans in the bottom of them. You can sit them up and display them. They're really well made. You can buy them from the Pokemon store. We collected all 151 because of course we did. So we're going to go through all of them. But first I'm going to give you an overview. Then we'll go through them one by one in order. Here's a quick overview of all 151 at once. If you're interested in getting these, you can pick them up in North America at Pokemon.com. They're going for $10.99 each US dollars, but you can also buy them in Japan. Not only is Generation 1 already out, but you can get Generation 2, which is another 100 of these that were announced and they came out earlier last year. Now Generation 3 was just also announced in Japan and I'm really hoping that they come to North America. If you're picking them up in North America, they're actually called Sitting Cuties, whereas in Japan they're called Pokemon Fit. I prefer the name Pokemon Fit because they fit in your hand, but let's be honest, these are basically just like Beanie Babies and they're really cool to collect. So my my wife just said we have to get all of Generation 1. I have a few of them from Generation 2, but I might just get the urge to collect all of them and then start going for Generation 3. It would just be so cool to have every single Pokemon kind of as these Beanie Babies in one set. So there's your general overview. Let's get to each one individually now next. First up, we have Pokemon number 1, 2, and 3, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur. Just to give you a brief overview first, these have beanies in the bottom of them. They're also extremely soft. Most of them in height are somewhere between four to six inches on average, and they do have a tag on them. Most of mine you'll see have the Pokemon Fit tag. Some of them have the Sitting Cuties tag. Just depends on what region you get them. Again, Pokemon Fit from Japan, Sitting Cuties from North America. So I'm going to give you an overview, but Ivory, let me know, what do you know about Bulbasaur? So first, Bulbasaur is a grass and poison type Pokemon, and I'm pretty sure he's the only starter uh, of the three that had two types. So that's pretty cool because it, it gave him some additional advantages. Uh, also, they refer to him as a seed Pokemon, but in my opinion, he's just a little baby dinosaur and it's adorable. He is. At what level does he start? You can start evolving Bulbasaur into Ivysaur. He evolves into Ivysaur at level 16. And Ivysaur is just a really cute additional version. Gets a little more blue, but yeah, I really like Ivysaur too. The leaves on this feel like they're kind of made of felt, of course. They're really, really soft. And there's not much like, obviously they're like a leaf, so it's very, very thin. So there's nothing really else for that. But the flower on the top looks starts to look incredible on this. Looks really cool. And then at what level does Ivysaur evolve into Venusaur? At level 32. And so what's neat about that is that's the earliest that you can get it to evolve to its final evolution. The other two starters evolve later than level 32. So that was definitely an advantage of picking Bulbasaur at the start is you got to your final evolution faster. And what I love about these guys, each of them have some patterns on them, almost like scales that we were talking about earlier. We were talking about this off camera. So Bulbasaur has some simple ones that almost look like they're just off green. The geometric patterns are kind of simple. Most of them are four vertices or three vertices, like rectangles and triangles and stuff like that. And then Ivysaur, they become a little bit more complicated with more vertices, maybe pentagons, some triangles as well, and they're blue. But then when you get to Venusaur, they look like they're U patterns, almost like horseshoes in a way, really representing those scales for like a dinosaur. Love the flower on top of Venusaur, by the way. Looks just fantastic. Really good. Yeah, even though these were $11 each, $10.99 each American, like you said, like I started getting just the starters of these and you were like, you need to get all of them. Well, how do you collect only nine? It's Pokemon. You got to collect them all. That is what they, they promote. We needed them all. So there's the first three. Let's go to Pokemon four, five, and six next. Woohoo! 
Here we have Charmander, Charmeleon, and a lot of people's favorite Pokemon, Charizard, especially in the trading card game. But first of all, let's take a look at Charmander. Ivory, what do you know about Charmander? So, Charmander is a pure fire type. And what's neat about Charmander is he gets referred to as a lizard Pokemon. Um, I also love how happy-go-lucky Charmander is. He's just so adorable and just kind of putters around on two feet. He's really cute. Do you remember in Pokemon Snap when you can finally get all the Charmander in one photo and they're all just like, Char! And you get them all really close to the screen to get more points? I can't wait for the new Pokemon Snap game, by the way. Yeah, that'll be so much fun to play. I can't wait. The flame on this guy and all of them looks pretty well done. The beanies, by the way, again, are only in the very bottom part of the Pokemon. There are no beanies in the tail or the head or the arms, just down here for Charmander. Alright, when does Charmander start evolving into Charmeleon? So he evolves at level 16 into Charmeleon, and what's funny is he gets like this like glare in his look, and it's like he's a an adolescent that's just like very angsty, it's really funny. Um, and what's interesting is where, where Charmander is a lizard Pokemon, Charmeleon gets referred to as a flame Pokemon. He's also a pure fire type as well. That's, look at how, this guy looks just huge. Like he looks like he would be a jacked Pokemon. In a lot of the games, he has a lot of like, not only in the games, not only in the games, but also in the TV series, he has a lot of personality to this Pokemon a still. Lot of personality. You can just tell, like, just by this guy's pose. He looks like a little bit like squished down almost. Yeah, I think he's a little more chunky than I think uh, he is in, in most of the games, but. Overall, he still looks awesome. He just looks adorable, yeah. He still looks adorable. So his arms are connected to his sides. There is a connection right there. So you can't really pose his arms in any way. And again, you got those beanies in the bottom. At what level does Char Charmeleon evolve into Charizard? Level 36. So this is later than Venusaur. And the this is pretty consistent amongst most of the starters in the rest of the Pokemon series. They usually evolve at level 36 into their final evolution. This is just like, is th what is this a dragon Pokemon now at this point? Is that what it's considered already Still in the series? Still called a flame Pokemon. Still called a flame Pokemon. The wings look so cool. I don't even know what to call this color in between green and blue. Yeah, I I think it's supposed to be like a teal kind of color. Matching the eyes too. They're trying to match it. Now, when he gains his wings here, he does become not only a fire, but a flying type Pokemon in the original games. In the later games, it kind of depends on what games you're playing. Sometimes he gets referred to as a dragon Pokemon as well as fire, uh, but most consistently fire and flying. So this one, one of my favorites too, love Charizard in most games. Such a powerful character and such a collectible card. So all of these do have like little nails on the bottom of them that you can see are just little felt attachments for this. Look at this hand too, like little claws just like a dragon or what I would think would be a dinosaur way back when in the day. The eyes do match the wings as I was mentioning and I didn't notice ever, I didn't notice this ever previously, but the eye colors do change a little bit, just slight changes I think, because Charmeleon's eyes, they look like they go to like purple They're blue. Very blue, yeah, like a periwinkle blue almost. And we were also just talking with each other previously, like I thought these three would have gone from like orange to like deeper orange red to maybe like fully red. But it's interesting how they just like chose the color scheme to go from one to the next and so forth. Yeah. Love them. They're really cool. Alright, so next up we have Pokemon, then it would be 7, 8, and 9. Let's get to it. Woohoo! Here we have Squirtle, Wartortle, and one of my personal favorites, Blastoise, if not my personal favorite Pokemon of all time. By the way, comment below the video, who is your favorite starter Pokemon or your favorite Pokemon from the 151, especially of Gen 1. But let's get to Squirtle first. Ivory, what do you know? Uh, first of all, I gotta say, Squirtle is my hands down favorite choice for my starter Pokemon. Look how adorable he is. Like, oh my gosh, the tiniest little turtle Pokemon, and that's what he gets labeled as. And he's just like the cutest little, the cutest little tail and the color, and he just walks around blowing bubbles. Like, honestly, just the cutest Pokemon. Squirtle is definitely, hands down, one of my favorites of all time. We're both on the Squirtle squad. Uh, he's a pure water type Pokemon, and I just love him. Oh my gosh. And he involves into, again, probably my favorite Pokemon of all time. So it's just, I'm all for Squirtle. I loved on the show when you meet the Squirtle squad and they're all wearing like sunglasses oh, and they're just so, so cool. Really adorable. 
So Squirtle is obviously a little bit smaller than the other two, which makes sense in the evolutionary standpoint. Eyes are red, just keep that in mind, we'll get back to that. At what level does Squirtle start evolving into Wartortle? Level 16, so all the starters evolve at level 16. And what's interesting is when Squirtle evolves into Wartortle, he becomes a turtle Pokemon instead of a tiny turtle Pokemon. He's also a pure water and yeah, he's a really cool Pokemon. He's got a sweet tail. I think his tail wins for like the coolest tail for sure. This guy's awesome. What a name though. War Turtle? Like yeah. that's brilliant. I know when they have to translate over from Japanese into English, it doesn't always work out that nicely. But War Turtle, they crushed it. Squirtle, War Turtle, Blastoise, like I just think the names are so cool. A lot of them really have a nice wordplay, almost like puns. This one has these little, what would you call those? Almost like like blush yeah. on humans, or like, like when you have dimples. Yeah, maybe it's like a dimple. I'm maybe it's sure. supposed to be dimples. You can also notice the teeth on War Turtle. It's almost like this is like a teenager in angst. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. And the color is a little bit darker on this guy too. Almost, almost a purple, if you want to call it. A very dark blue, definitely. And what what are these? Like, are these supposed to be ears? ears? <laughs> Like, look at this. Know. Squirtle's got no ears. Super cute. And then, like, giant ears. And then, like, realistic ears after that, which is hilarious. It's like when you're a teenager and you go do some crazy ha hairstyle growing up, and then you you look back and you're like, oh, man, why did I ever think that was cool? That's exactly what's going on. Eyes are brown, by the way. So we go from red to brown. And then at what point does War Turtle start evolving into Blastoise? He also evolves at level 36, so both... To get to Charizard and Blastoise, they evolve at level 36. So, whereas Venusaur evolves at level 32. Now, I gotta say, Blastoise is definitely my, like, hands-down favorite Pokemon of all time. I can't believe we agree on that. Like, <laughs> I can't believe we both have the exact... That's why we're together. That that's what. It. That's it. it. We're meant to be... It's the, it's the Pokemon starter theory. Did this that? guy's so cool. Oh, like, I just, just, I just like, love Blastoise. How could you not love a turtle, a giant turtle that has... B water blasters coming out of his cannons, shell. basically. Can like it's so cool. Mega Blastoise, by the way, he gets one giant cannon oh, yeah. on the back as well. It's so ridiculous. Uh, so Blastoise, when he goes from being War Turtle into Blastoise, he becomes a shellfish Pokemon, which is interesting because what? He's a turtle. <laughs> that almost makes no sense to me. This yeah. guy is a shellfish Pokemon. I still think of him as a giant turtle for sure. Yeah. So this one, look at the eyebrows. The eyebrows on this guy look really cool. We got ears that are real ears now. Squirtle had none. And then, you know, teenage angst. And then this guy right here. The shell. The shell looks a little bit darker, for sure. Way darker. I think it's like lightest, almost red, and then really dark. Mm -hmm. And then it grows up. I think these are just so well designed. I love Blastoise. Oh, man. And nothing better than pulling out a hydro pump on your enemies and just... Just crushing them. Look at that little tail on the back of that guy. That's he hilarious. Is just the best Pokemon. What happened to the tail? <laughs> you got this little tail on Squirtle that's adorable. Then, like you said, War Turtle, one of the best tails. And then, like, Blasto is just like, I don't need it. I got cannons right. instead. <laughs> My tail has grown up into two cannons. So I love Blastoise. We both do. Probably our favorite of all time. Of Every all single time. Pokemon out For there. Sure. Yeah. Blastoise. Just so amazing. All right. Next up, let's get to the following. So now we're past the first starters, the first nine. Let's get to Pokemon 10 and thereafter. At 10, 11, and 12, we have Caterpie, Metapod, and Butterfree. First of all, let's take a look at this first bug type in our list for Generation 1. We have Caterpie. This guy's a little adorable. Look how cute he looks, even as a bug. He gets listed as a worm Pokemon, but he's obviously a caterpillar. He's so cute. How is he not listed as a caterpillar? That's so strange. I wonder if they'll update that over time, because they do change some of them eventually. Yeah, yeah they label him as a, a worm Pokemon. I mean, this is definitely a caterpillar. Look how cute he is. And like, when you get to playing the game, he is so ample everywhere. You can always find a Caterpie. It was a little annoying at times, You're like, oh my gosh, another Caterpie, but like, he's so cute, and he evolves into such a cute Pokemon at the end. It almost guarantees most people eventually have a Butterfree when the first time they play through the game. So this one does have the beanies in the main part. I would say like the second section of it, that's mainly where the beanies are, not anything in the tail and not really much in the head. So it's right here basically is where they're at. I love, what do you even call this? Is this like antennae, I guess? Little pink red antennae so. at the top? Yeah. It's kind of like on a worm Pokemon with antenna. Well, Cater 
pillars do have that kind of like yeah that's why it's strange it's listed like out. that yeah you got the yellow eyes Look at those pupils coming out. This one somehow looks adorable, mostly because of the coloring. Yeah. I think the, this one does better than Weedle for me in terms of the coloring. For sure. I think if I had to choose between Weedle and Caterpie, I'm picking Caterpie every time. So at what point does this evolve? Start well, evolving. Level seven. You so can get early. A Metapod at level seven. Metapod, everyone's favorite Pokemon that oh sits God. there and hardened. Just it does have an attack though, doesn't it? Well, if you evolve it from a Caterpie to a Metapod, it'll get it'll keep its tackle. But if you just catch a Metapod right off the bat, you're probably just getting one that has hardened, and it's so annoying. Reminds me of a show too, when literally in the original show where two like Ash and someone else is using Pokemon, both of them are using Metapod, and they're both just. You know, use hardened, and they just keep doing that back and forth and back and forth. So painful. So it's this so one looks boring. like a big blob, but its tail does look like it has a little bit. It looks like it's being squ like squunched, squinched, squanched, squished from the previous one. <laughs> All of these different like, what were they called when we learned this? We learned this about insects way back when. Comment below if you know what each of these rings basically is called on an insect. But it looks like all of them were kind of squished together, and now they're all at the back it's a, here. It's a cocoon Pokemon. If it, you've ever seen a caterpillar go into a cocoon, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. A cocoon. Of course. I'm just wondering what these rings are called. So this one almost reminds me of a ditto kind of Pokemon. Just like, it's in a cocoon, but there's not much going on. You have these eyes. I think this is kind of like its antenna or its nose coming out. And then suddenly Metapod. This one does have the beanies in the middle of it as well. But is there anything else we could mention about Metapod other than Harden and Tackle? Uh, it evolves qu pretty quickly at level 10 into Butterfree. So that's like the good news. You only have to go from level 7 to level 10 if you want to evolve it quite instantly into an adorable Butterfree. They're so cute. It's like a butterfly. And what's awesome about Butterfree is in the game, you could train it up to learn Confusion, which was helpful in the first battling Brock in that first gym. So I, I definitely made sure that I always went in with a, a high level but, Butterfree. So. The antenna here are amazing. I love these. They're not posable, but they actually they are. These are totally posable. I never knew that. You can completely kind of twerk these in any way you want with that. Giant pink eyes. We got blue legs, arms, nose looking so cool. But look at how beautiful these wings are. Honestly, that that detail is quite impressive. It really is. They did a great job on these. Again, it's just felt attached at the back. You can't really pose the wings, but they do look so cool. I really like how this shows such a sharp contrast, which is true in nature as well. When so, when an animal or insect goes into a cocoon, it comes out completely different after metamorphosis. So they did such a good job. Green to green, the same green it looks like, to purple and blue. <laughs> like, who designed this character? So cool. Butterfree, what's cool about Butterfree too is, again, he gains wings, and so that means that Butterfree also becomes not only a bug type, but a flying type, and so gets that nice combo, which is nice. Um, Gigantamax Butterfree, though, is gorgeous. Like, highly recommend, if you can ever get a get Gigantamax Butterfree, like, so pretty. I don't think I've ever appreciated these as much because, you know... Just gotta love Metapod, but I think Butterfree's <laughs> totally worth it. If you can get there, especially considering level 10, you can get to a Butterfree really early. I'm pretty sure my, the first time I ever played, when I was like 10 playing Pokemon, I had a Butterfree going into my, like, f the final four. I was All the way. battling the final four. I had my but Butterfree from the start. I loved that Pokemon so much, and it was like level like 60 Butterfree and just attacking everything. It was awesome. Alright, so let's get to the next ones after this. So that was Pokemon number 10, 11, and 12. Let's continue. At 13, 14, and 15, we have Weedle, Kakuna, and Beedrill. First up, let's take a look at the first evolution. Let's take a look at Weedle. What kind of Pokemon is this? So they refer to him as a hairy bug Pokemon. A hairy bug Pokemon. Yeah, hairy That's selling bug it. Pokemon. <laughs> Everyone wants a hairy bug Pokemon. Positively... Weedle gets referred to as both a bug and a poison type Pokemon, so that's definitely an advantage over a Caterpie, which is just a bug type Pokemon. Okay, so it's a little bit better. You got two types at least. Probably because no one wants a, a Weedle over a Caterpie. Look how cute Caterpie is, right? Do you remember an attack that he uses in the game? String shot. String shot. It's just like, <laughs> seriously, string shot from a 
Harry, Harry Bug, Bug Pokemon. Pokemon. Yep. So this one mostly featured brown. We have a giant white horn on the top of here, which almost kind of looks like Beedrill, like eventually has two of them on the ends of the arm, so that's kind of a neat connection. Then we have red little, I guess, legs and nose, but the back of this Pokemon has this little, like, hook right here. Like, do we ever... Does he use that during attacks at all? He, he does have that poison sting, and so... Because, like, that's where it basically... sting you with poison, and it did suck when you're battling a, a Weedle, and he gets you with a poison sting, and you actually have a poisoned Pokemon. Cute. Very annoying. Little tiny... Like, we got really small in terms of the eyes right here. They look like they're tiny, of course. Then you have the pupils and small white. At what level does it evolve into Kakuna? Also into level 7. So, Kakuna, again, is a Cocoon po po Pokemon. I think probably a little cooler looking than Metapod, in my opinion. Yeah, this one looks a little bit cooler, yeah. I think. Also, like, a Bug Poison type Pokemon, just like Weedle. I don't know. I think he he's definitely the cooler of the co co Cocoon Pokemon. Now, is this one as useless as Metapod in battling? Well, so he also keeps the stuff from from Weedle, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to hope that it has the same, basically, or you evolve it, because if you yes. catch it... It was always better to evolve it from a Weedle to a Kakuna to a Beedrill. Now, the problem that you'll probably notice about these three is they don't stand up very nicely, so I am using some stands just to kind of stand them up for us. It's almost like they need some moral support in some way. At what point does this evolve into Beedrill? Also level 10. Beedrill so. just chilling there, by the way. Look at him just, just hanging out. <laughs> just hanging out. So Beedrill gets referred to as a Poison Bee Pokemon, which is pretty consistent. That's what I would call him. Very before. accurate. Yeah. Uh, still a bug poison type Pokemon, so that remains consistent throughout. I don't know, I just, like, when I looked at Beedrill and I looked at Butterfree, I was definitely more sold on buying Butterfree, or sorry, catching Butterfree and yeah. buying him. <laughs> yeah, I think just more beautiful, like, yeah. really, right? More cute, this one's not that cute. I don't know who I would want to face in a fight less, Beedrill or Scyther. I feel like both of them have these crazy arms that they could just take you out really quickly. What else do you know about Beedrill? Well, when Mega Be he evolves into Mega Beedrill, he gets more of those poison stingers, so that's scary. <laughs> Terrifying. The wings, again, really similar, but these ones actually aren't felt, as opposed to Butterfree. These ones are kind of like material-based, but they're not felt-based. They're shiny, as you can tell on this. They're well done, but it's just different that it's kind of like strange that they didn't choose felt for this one, but they probably chose that for a unique reason. I mean, I like that it's shiny. It looks nice. It, it brings that little bit of a pop, and I think it's more consistent with what a bee, like a bee's wings would look like. Yeah, I thought they did a good job with that. So good choice when they made these sitting cuties or Pokemon fit. This almost looks like blue. I think it's like a gray blue for all these detail work with the antennae and the limbs on this. And of course, you've got the swirls here of color, the circles of color, and then the stinger right on the bottom of this. Anything else we should know about Beedrill? I think that's good. I think that's great. So these three, again, they don't stand up if you're interested in buying these. So you might want to just display them like I am. I'm just using these little plastic pieces, basically, to display. I found these online. They're not very expensive. And they're great for displaying anything. You can also put them sideways if you have two of them. And then you can put a shelf across it like that as well. So that's what I'm using to hold these up. Because they won't stand up anyways with that moral support, as we mentioned. <laughs> Alright, so let's move on from these three to the next. At 16, 17, and 18, we have Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and Pidgeot. Let's start at the beginning with Pidgey. Pidgey's definitely a classic that you get very early in the game. Everywhere. Everyone has one, and they are everywhere. And he's a cute little tiny bird Pokemon, honestly, and has that combination of being both a normal and a flying type Pokemon, Pokemon. so kind of the first flying type Pokemon that you get to see and have access to, so... A classic to have in your original group when you're playing the game. They did a really good job with this, with making this at least look like it has feathers. So the tail is just felt, but the arms, the wings, they are attached to the Pokemon, but at least they put these little extra bits here to kind of make it look like they have more feathers on them. I really appreciate that. Look at the spikes on the top of the head you've got here with more feathers. I like that a lot. And the feathers themselves look like they're a lot darker brown than the other two variations. We got pink for the feet and the nose. They look like they match, so that's really neat as well. What level does this evolve at? Level 18. So it takes a while because you catch takes a too long. at like level 3 or 4 usually. It's a big commitment early in the game. It's a big commitment to go on to level 18. 
Uh, but Pidgeotto is a very cool Pokemon and becomes very helpful in the game, I find. I feel like I prefer Pidgeotto over Pidgeot. I'm not sure why, just like personal preference. All three of these are really similar to one another, to be honest, but I just love Pidgeotto, probably because of Ash Ketchum. That's fair. I think in the game, Pidgey is much smaller and Pidgeot is much bigger, but in this, this pairing of three, they're definitely pretty similar in size. Good point. Obviously, these are not to scale. Otherwise, <laughs> Onyx would be the size of my house. Uh, Pidgeotto is just like labeled as a bird Pokemon, where Pidgey was labeled as a tiny bird Pokemon. Also a normal and a flying type Pokemon. I don't know, I like Pidgeotto a lot. Cool name, cool look. Yeah, cool design. So by the way, three, basically two, like, two toes, I want to say, and then one at the back. But eventually when you get to Pidgeot, it's three. Yeah. And Pidgey only has two, well, I guess three of them as well, but I meant going up. So like one at the heel and then two at the top, but Pidgeot is a little bit different. Look at this tail. The tail is gorgeous. They did this so well. You have three reddish pink ones and two yellow ones. I like those a lot. And the hair is just getting a little bit longer. I want to call it a mullet. <laughs> Basically, this is like a mohawk into a mullet. Yes. This Pokemon lives to be in like the 80s or something like that. All right, at what point does it start evolving into the final form? Level 36. Again, takes a long time and a lot of commitment to get to Pidgeot. Huge commitment for this one, I feel like. Early game, especially. Yeah. Again, a, a bird Pokemon. Now, I find that this little dude here does not do Pidgeot justice. Like, in the games and in the in the series and all the movies and everything, Pidgeot is gorgeous. Like, she, she has, like, this flowing mane of hair that, that this mane is not doing it for me. Yeah, so this one... <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure how they could have made it better. They could have made it maybe Separatable? maybe separated like the tail is. Yeah. So maybe separate it, maybe make them a little bit longer even, because it is huge. Yeah. It's so much bigger than the other two in terms of evolutions. So you do have those, look at those three like three toes here, and then the one heel. For some reason, it, it gains one in evolution. Why not? We can't really argue about <laughs> the logic of Pokemon evolutions. The wings are attached mostly, just the bottoms are not. So just a little bit bigger in that regard. And look at, like, look at that yellow. The yellow on top of the mane looks a lot better with those feathers. Again, and we got a huge... Gorgeous in the show and gorgeous in the game. Yeah. Uh, like, this Pokemon's great as well. I don't know why I always prefer Pidgeotto. I just do. I think it's the show. The show really gets to me with nostalgia and everything. What do you guys like more between these three? If you had to just check one forever, I wonder if more of you would agree with me or would think Pidgeot at this is the final form or anything else. All right, so after these three, let's move on to the next ones. At 19 and 20, we have Rattata and Raticate. This is our first evolution that only has two. So far, everything's had three in the evolution, and they kind of switched it up here. So first of all, let's take a look at Rattata. So Rattata is a mouse Pokemon and takes on, in the original games, normal. But if you play to go on to play in the Lolo, and you get the Alolan Rattata, he also is a dark Pokemon. So it has two types, if you can find that, if you can get that version. Purple mouse Pokemon, basically. Red eyes looks kind of vicious. Look at these, I, I want to call them like their whiskers, basically. Yeah. Only Wind Whisker on Rattata. Raticate has three of them. Deep I know, red eyes. Is terrifying to me. Like it that is. little tiny mouse Pokemon, very scary. And like this is really well done. The tail is great on this guy. I really like it. This guy or girl. There's always a percentage that's a guy or a girl. It's actually 50-50. This one's perfectly 50-50. A lot of them aren't like that. Now I think this is the teeth. The like buck yeah, teeth of the Pokemon, the of course. Yeah. So you do have that, just this felt kind of coming out of the mouth of this. What I level? Kind of like a classic mouse, right? When you think of a mouse, they have those like two front teeth that just like gnaw into everything. So it, that's pretty consistent for sure. Purple, interesting choice. Yeah. Uh, so Radicate evolves into Radicate at level twenty. So let's take a look at Radicate next. This one just looks a little bit funny to me. I don't know what it is. This guy just makes me smile. Look at this pose. So this is a pretty long commitment because you usually get your Radicate at like level three or four again in the game, and then it takes till level twenty to get a Radicate. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of commitment, but then you can also just catch Raticate at some point in in the game. That tail, though, that looks like... I mean, they call it a mouse Pokemon, but that's a rat tail. That is definitely a rat tail. That looks so cool. Look at the spikes on the back of this guy, by the way. They are a little bit sharp. 
I don't. I mean, they're sided with felt. It's supposed to be like fur because he's not. It doesn't have spikes. He's yeah, just it's like not furry. spikes. It's supposed to be fur, but they're definitely kind of sharp to the touch. I think it looks great with that texture look. But just like this pose, this pose looks hilarious to me. I don't know what it is. He's like surprise <laughs> with his hands up like this. And the fact that he always has his mouth open because his teeth are so big and he can never close them. That would be crazy to be like that yeah. as a living like thing. You yeah. can never close your mouth. So the eyes from Ratata, which were red, are now just black as it became more of an adult and it evolved in some way. So this one, I really like it. I think it doesn't look that accurate. It doesn't look 100% accurate like a lot of the other ones do, yeah. but like in a good way, because this one just makes me laugh when I look at this. The whiskers here, three of them compared to Rattata's, one basically on each side, and those giant buck teeth, so well done. This guy is a solid one. At least they sit up on their own. Hello, surprise. They look hilarious. <laughs> All right, let's awesome. move on to the next ones. 21 and 22, we have Spiro and Firo. At least they made them rhyme for this. So first of all, let's take a look at Spiro. So Spiro is a tiny bird Pokemon, and it gets considered both a normal and a flying type Pokemon. So you can actually get Spiro pretty early in the game, but a lot of people didn't realize that the first time you were playing. And so most people ended up with Pidgey as their their flying type Pokemon early on. I think once you choose a Pidgey, you're probably, a lot of people aren't also going to then choose Spiro and Firo. Yeah, they're, they're very similar in terms of their type and everything, and so you probably don't need what, both, you probably pick just one. Now there's not many Pokemon that have black in terms of their design. This is just like off black, really close to black. Most Pokemon are so wonderfully colored, and there's certain colors that are more dominant, like blue and purple is very, very common in Generation 1, but not black in terms of his design at all. The tail! The tail looks pretty cool with that felt kind of coming off of this. This is really well done, and even here we have like the mane of the bird right there with the feathers. That looks really cool as well. Now, I think the beak is just like this little tiny beak, but then when it evolves, what level does it evolve, by the way? Level 20. Look at the beak on this guy, it's huge! So, great that you bring that up, because he goes from being a bird Pokemon, tiny bird Pokemon, to being a beak Pokemon. That's Literally. That's what he's referred to as. I'm at, this defines you, basically. <laughs> yeah, Firo. What can we say about this guy? He's a little bit more fluffy, and they did a good job to represent that, I think, in this little little stuffy here, because he, he does have that fluff in the game. Beautiful, like this one actually does look really beautiful overall. I almost wish I liked this guy more than I do. I just think in terms of flying Pokemon, I would probably prefer still, I think, picking Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and Pidgeot. I think having the three op options of evolution is definitely enticing, and it keeps you wanting to keep them in your in your group for longer, for sure. The tail feathers, four tail feathers? Look at this difference, three tail feathers. Huge upgrade in that evolution. Evolution upgrade, cha-ching! And it really does, look at, what do you call this on a bird? I can't remember, there's a name, uh, there for, that. A name for that. There is a name for that, let me know in the comments below. It has five, like, head feathers, but it's not that kind of name. Huge amount of detail on this Pokemon. They really sold this one really the, well. The detail on this is quite impressive. It's fairly accurate, I would say, to the, the game and everything. So. Huge Mohawk, beak Pokemon, though. Beak Pokemon, they nailed it. They nailed that. All right, let's move on to the next ones. At 23 and 24, we have Atkins and Arbok snake type Pokemon, I guess, obviously. Yes, snake Pokemon, and so Atkins is a poison type Pokemon. So what's cool about Atkins is you can get it 50% male or female, so not many of them are like that, which is nice. Now this one, I love the tail, just because this obviously looks like a rattlesnake, and it's gonna warn you basically when it would attack in the real world. The yellow bottom and then purple on top with the ring right around the neck. It almost looks like royalty in some way, like a prince or something to me for some reason. I like the design of this because how do you make a snake look more interesting? Yeah, I, I you get to see a lot of Ekans and then Arbok as well because they are Team Rocket Pokemon and so it's definitely nice to like see these kind of, it's, it's cool to see them evolve in battle, it's nice. So this one has yellow eyes, the very much like a snake right here. It's not really smiling, it has those little tiny nostril holes just like a snake does as well. At what point does it evolve into Arbok? Level 22, so it takes a while to get your Atkins into an Arbok. And so when it evolves into Arbok, it actually gets referred to as a Cobra Pokemon, which seems to make sense. Yeah, it looks like a rattlesnake into a Cobra, and I love this right here. That's so well done. 
it's supposed to like I think attract things to it and then it would eat them obviously in the real wild so they did a really nice job of that yeah that almost looks like its own Pokemon right here in itself. It almost reminds me a little bit of Halloween, like a jack-o'-lantern right here with like it's eyes and a, a mouth. Face, yeah. It's supposed to be a face, obviously, like that as well. So yeah. I like the way this is designed. The tail is connected to them right here, so you can't pull this apart. But when they did that, it allows it to stand up quite nicely. So I think that was a good design. I like when they stand up on their own and you don't need to stand for any of these guys. So overall, this one looks pretty cool. I do like how it evolves, and when it evolves, it looks like the same, but kind of like a cousin of it, which is a lot of them. Some of them are just way too similar for me, again, going back to Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and Pidgeot in this sense, especially in these types when like they're the same size, because obviously it gets way bigger when it evolves. And again, Team Rocket with Arbok, just my childhood. Just remember just, that so much. Just nostalgia. Now, is this one really common to get in the game? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it was. I, I didn't really see it very often, but you got to see a lot with Team Rocket. Yeah, let me know if you caught this one and used it in the game. I don't think that many people generally, but maybe I'm wrong. I didn't use these when I was no. playing through the game at all. I think snakes scare a lot of people. I did have a roommate in university that had a snake. Scared me a lot, but obviously it was quite small. I just didn't know about that kind of pet. Some people love snakes as pets. All right, let's move on. I'm excited to introduce number 25 and number 26, Pikachu and Raichu. Pikachu is like everyone's little Pokemon that they would start with in Pokemon Yellow. What can we say about this guy? Definitely a fan favorite, Pikachu. Pikachu is a mouse Pokemon and as I'm sure most people know, is an electric type Pokemon. Now, this guy, I think a lot of the different plush that I've seen out there, there's tons of them that you can buy for the different sets. So in this set, this is not my personal favorite plush that you can get for Pikachu, but it does match the entire set design really quite nicely. The tail is attached probably a little bit higher up than I would like. I would probably have liked the tail to be attached maybe a little bit lower and it can sit off the Pokemon a little bit. We got those Red Cheeks Pikachu. Shout out to the card game, by the way, if you can get an early edition Red Cheeks Pikachu in the card game from the original base set. I think this guy is just like Ash's best friend through and through for so long. He'll be synonymous with Pokemon. I think, I wonder who's more of a face of Pokemon, Pikachu or Ash? What would you think? Oh, for sure, Pikachu. I think Pikachu is more predominantly used as the face of Pokemon, even in front of Ash Ketchum. People who don't know Pokemon at all know that that is Pikachu. I do think this one, I wish they didn't have the seam work as apparent on this one throughout the face and across the body. So they might have done a little bit better job back here, but overall, he's adorable. He matches the set really nicely. When does he evolve or she evolve into Raichu? So what's interesting about Pikachu is that you can't level them up to a certain level to evolve. You have to use a Thunderstone. Exactly. So that's like very different so far with all the Pokemon we've talked about. And that's really true to the show as well. You can choose to keep the Pikachu all the way throughout your game, as you can the other Pokemon, but I think it's a little bit more difficult to evolve. Well, in the show, it's not that Ash that chooses to not evolve Pikachu or not, it's Pikachu refusing to evolve and wants to stay as Pikachu. Yeah, I thought that was such a cool moment where like, it was really great to have the Pokemon themselves like have their own personalities, make their own decisions as well. The tail on Raichu with that lightning bolt, it's attached right in the middle of the body and then a little bit farther out as that, this is not felt though. This one almost feels like- Like silk? Um, like not silk either, but like almost like material that you would have I'm not even sure. I guess maybe like silk, but it's not as smooth or as soft as the rest of the Pokemon. Look at these cute little feet. Look at those little pads down there. I don't know. It almost reminds me of our cats. Raichu, again, is a mouse Pokemon. And what was annoying in Pokemon Yellow is if, like, obviously you had your Pikachu, and that Pikachu would have refused to evolve. So the only way to get a Raichu was to have traded for another one or caught another Pikachu. Which is, was very frustrating. But. It was, but like, the Pokemon company was really encouraging people, obviously, to use those trade. But back then, you would have the trade link cable. You couldn't just trade oh, wirelessly. Yeah. So worst. you had to get another friend I, and actually <laughs> connect the cable, which was actually it's, a cool experience. It's so inconsistent. Oh my gosh, they, the like link would break all the time. What's awesome about, uh, they have an Alolan Ra Raichu, and Alolan Raichu is awesome. And he like surfs on his tail. It's so cool. 
I really like both of these, and I actually think, like, I always think of just keeping Pikachu, but, like, Raichu is really cool as it is, and then they made a baby form of this as Pichu, which is in Generation 2, which maybe we'll show a video of the Generation 2 ones if we eventually get them. But let me know what your thoughts are on Pikachu. I think he's the face of the Pokemon franchise more than Ash Ketchum personally. But let me know what your thoughts on that are on that as well. So let's just continue this going. At 27 and 28, we have Sandshrew and Sandslash. I remember Sandslash in the Pokemon Snap game. You threw something into the wall and it jumped out at you. Love it. Terrifying. So here's... It was terrifying. <laughs> but the first time, it, like, it kind of startled you when you played through Pokemon Snap. So what do we know about Sandshrew? So they refer to Sandshrew also as a mouse Pokemon, just like Pikachu and Raichu and Rattata and Raticate, but... Shrew? Know, isn't Shrew. Like a Sandshrew, isn't he like an armadillo? He looks a lot more like an armadillo. And they are like armadillo, because they go in the ball, basically. So, like, I don't know why they named them a mouse Pokemon. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but Sandshrew is a ground peg Pokemon, uses a lot of, like, sand attacks. I think Sandshrew is super underrated as, like, one of the cutest Pokemon. I think he is so adorable. He even looks adorable as this. Yeah. Like, even though we have the seam work here, it's not as bad because the seam work going up the head, you can't tell as much, especially because we have the design and the pattern on this one. But he does look like a little adorable. Look at his little arms just kind of attached to his body. He's got his nails going out there and everything. Honestly, I fell in love with Sandshrew just from the games. Like, I thought he was so cute and needed to have him in my party for a very long time before I evolved him into Sandslash, and I don't know, I didn't I didn't like Sandslash as much, so then he left my party, it was sad. I think Sandslash actually looks really awesome. I think Sandslash is such a well-designed Pokemon. He spikes on its back, too. So what do you know about Sandslash? At what level does it evolve? Level 22. Level 22. Also gets referred to as a mouse pro pro Pokemon, where, like, I don't know, it's not a mouse Pokemon. Look at those fingers. It's got claws for fingers, and it's, like, trying to dig. It's almost like an ant eater in a way as well, with like yeah. the armadillo kind of added to it. I love this one so much. I don't know why. I do agree that Sandshrew is a lot cuter, but I just feel like this is, I don't know, great evolution and just much more adults. It was definitely a cool evolution to see. Like Sandslash is like very, very powerful considering like it's a tiny little Pokemon. So I like him. And this one in terms of design, like you mentioned, these two, the nails of the fingers, they are attached, but they're so well done. And then like all of these at the back just feel really, really cool. So there's no beads in any Almost of these like again. Almost like a porcupine. Almost like a porcupine, yeah. Armadillo meets shrew meets mouse meets porcupine meets <laughs> anteater all in one Pokemon. And then they just called it a mouse. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's a mouse. But I like this guy overall. Yeah, cute and adult. And I love both of them. 29, 30, and 31, we have Nidoran, Nidorina, and Nidoqueen. So these actually have a male form, but this is the female form, so we'll get to the male form in a moment. First up, Nidoran. Honestly, as a kid growing up and playing this for the first time when I was like 10, I was so confused that there were two types of Nidoran, and I could not understand what the sign meant. Because, again, at the time, I had never seen that sign. Yes, you have the one sign with the plus on it and the other sign with the arrow. Yeah. So these I ones would no be the idea. plus. So these are the plus. But yeah. as a kid, I, f I wonder how many of us were taught those symbols from Pokemon. I th that's how I learned it. Um, so Nidoran is a poison pin Pokemon, and so that means that she is a poison type Pokemon. Now, this one just feels so soft. We've got the purple dots, just kind of off purple dots throughout this. Very soft. I mean, all of them are, but I feel like this one's even more so for some reason. I love the ears on her. Just looks adorable. Red, stunning eyes. Whiskers here, too, it looks like, which are so cool. And the buck teeth. Just a little bit of buck teeth with this little horn. And the horn really confuses me for these, by the way. Always have. You've got a little horn, and then, like, what happens? And then, like, a giant horn. Like, I just don't understand what happened. Maybe it lost it. Maybe that's what happens, because that happens in nature, too. They'll lose the horn and then grow it back? Well, I thought they grow them longer and longer, so I'm not... Po uh, maybe I'm wrong with that. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong, but if they do lose the horn, they can regrow them. So maybe that's what happened. Lost the horn and then regrow them. So at what point does she start evolving? So she evolves at level 16 into Nidorina, and Nidorina also gets referred to as a poison pin Pokemon. Now, this one screams dinosaur to me. Dinosaur, for sure. Like, so much dinosaur to me, but like a bluish-green kind of scent. This one is almost like purple off-white, I want to sure. say. I always thought purple, yeah. Yeah, I always thought she was purple too, especially because the ears and the spots. But now the spots, by the way, they look like they're almost more circular. 
and then all of a sudden now they're like kind of turning into shapes and patterns just like we had previously with another Pokemon just small things small details on this the little stubby arms on this again just reminds me of a cute dinosaur very adorable so adorable I, I was definitely a big fan of Nidorina now, I originally didn't love both of these sets, the male and the female, because I felt like they were doubling up on them, and I would, would have wanted to see more creativity with, like, other Pokemon, but now I, like, completely value the fact that you have three unique for male and female, but the same naming of the original one confuses me so much. Yeah. Because they're both named Nidoran, which confused me, but this one's Nidorine a uh, rather than Nidorine o yeah. which we'll get to with the next Pokemon. So here, the ears... I want to call them ears. They change a little bit. They're getting a, like a little bit shorter and more pointy, more spikes on them. So it looks like like three or four vertices rather than just like two on the original. So when does Nidorina evolve? So she actually requires a moonstone to evolve. Exactly. Which was, which was hard to obtain early in the game. So you had a Nidorina for a long time. But that's such a cool concept as well because like it's just something else that you've got to go after and I like it. I like yeah. when not all the Pokemon just evolve at a certain level. Yeah. It's just something else to bring to it. Or at least it took me a long time to get a moonstone. <laughs> so literally the queen of Pokemon, Nitto Queen here. Nitto Queen and Nitto King, such a cool couple they would make. This is really interesting with like the yellow and the blue. So it's just kind of a little bit different here, but the arms aren't attached as far down as most of the other ones are, where they're like pinned like a dinosaur. They're yeah. kind of up a little bit more. So what do you know about Nitto Queen? So she gets referred to as a drill Pokemon. And she not only is a poison type like the previous two, but also a ground type Pokemon. It's great when Pokemon have two types. Yeah. So much more useful in terms of like whatever your weakness is mm -hmm. and whatever you're strong against. And now the ears here, the ears change to be brown. So suddenly they like go, especially color, it's like purpley to like green blue to like blue with brown ears and the spikes are gone. Again, that teenage angst maybe. But here on the back, it looks like you have two spikes on either side, but then Nitto Queen has spikes right down the middle of her back. Traditional to like most dinosaurs. Yeah, Triceratops. Again, very dinosaur-like. I, I don't think I ever put that together, but absolutely a dinosaur. Looks a lot like a dinosaur. All right, so now let's take a look at the male counterpart of these. Let's do it. 32, 33, and 34, we have Nidoran, the male version, Nidorino, and Nitto King. First up, let's take a look at Nidoran. Nidoran, again, poison pin Pokemon. Talk about confusing when you're a little kid and do not understand what these symbols mean. <laughs> Why do they look different and what are these symbols? So confused. <laughs> this one's so adorable too, though. It does look a little bit more, like, uh, its face looks a bit more masculine to me than the other one, which we'll compare to in a moment when we're done, the female version of this. But look at this. It's got the horn on it, and hey, it's continuous throughout at least. So you've got horns on all three of them, as opposed to the female version. I love, again, the spots. The spots are the same color purple it looks like on the two of them, and then all of a sudden you lose the spots when you get to the older generation of this. The back. The back has all of these scales on it. My middle scales are kind of stuck to like always go to the right, but I don't think they should always be like that. That's probably just the way mine was made. The ears look adorable. Look at how cool this guy looks. I love this one. This one also sits kind of like on its back to like legs, and then the other two are kind of up, but I think like it's supposed to be like this. But again, the weight of those beads, it just sits really nicely though. When does this one start evolving? Is it the same as the female the version? Same. Also level yeah. 16. And then you get Nidorino, and Nid Nidorino again is a poison pin Pokemon that remains consistent. Um, I think Nidorino is really cool, and, and he's like pretty chunky, which is pretty consistent, I think, with the game. Chunky. Yeah. Yeah. Now the scales, there's only one line of scales on the back, and this was really confusing because when I first imported these from Japan, the reason why I did that is they were not available in North America. That's why I collected the Pokemon Fit first. But my contact in Japan, he had to go with his son because his son knew more about Pokemon than he did. And I really want to thank Jay, by the way, for helping me get these. So thanks, Jay, to you and your family, and especially your son. But these two looked so similar that it was really, really hard to differentiate between them. So it was hard to eventually get all of them to make sure that we didn't have any repeats because like look at these two the only difference that you can tell on first glance probably is just the eyes otherwise yeah. they look so similar and you also have this down the middle so then we have this male version Nidorino evolves when also with a moonstone moonstone of course so now you didn't need just one moonstone you needed two in the game and so quite a challenge when you're a 10 year old kid even more <laughs> difficult now Nitto King look at the teeth on this guy really representative of the real character and the ears now have like two tone colors in here these ones are felt 
but this one almost looks like it feels like it's a different material probably more like silk for inside of the ears love the horn on this guy as well and the teeth and that little mouth that's drawn spikes down the middle of the back what else do you know about Nitto King? Nitto King, again, just like Nitto Queen, becomes a drill Pokemon and also picks up the ground type on top of being a poison type. Now, just really quickly, let's just compare these two to each other. So I'll just move these to the side. Let's take a look at the two versions right here of Nidoran. So we have the female one and the male one. They look like they're definitely related to one another. The color is the biggest thing to kind of like differentiate the two of these, of course. Again, as a kid, when I had the one and caught the one and then the other one showed up and it said the same name but looked totally different I was very confused and then we have different names at least so I appreciate that because now you have the male version Nidorino, but the female version is Nidoran, Nidorana. Nidorina, yeah. Nidorina, yeah. yeah. So they do look really different at this point. So now it's a lot easier to differentiate between the two. I think it's funny that she matured faster and she's taller than he is because that often happens in, with like, humans. Well, yeah, and Nidorina like, does walk around on two feet. And so that happens in uh, Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Peach Pikachu. Like They can follow you around and they like stand up like that. And this one's killed, and like, has it like, fully. Yeah, it's it's consistent. So what I'm talking about, if you think about humans, a lot of girls grow have their growth spurt earlier than guys. So that's kind of funny. And then you have the king and the queen themselves. Taking a look at this couple right here. I think it's funny that she looks a little bit bigger than he does here. I wonder if that's consistent with the game. Like, I wonder if Nidorina, sorry, Nido Queen actually is, like, a bigger Pokemon than he is. I don't know. Yeah, and both of these, like, they're so well matched together, but it does look a little bit bigger. So these, at this point, you're not going to confuse them anymore. Just so confusing with the naming style of them originally, and honestly, I think so many of us learned the symbol for male and female from this game. Let me know if that was the same case for you. All right, let's move on to the next ones. Pokemon number 35 and 36, you have Clefairy and Clefable. These are some of the really common pink type Pokemon, but I remember this one being a normal type Pokemon originally, because I'm thinking back to the card game. There were white cards, which meant normal, but then they added more types. So what did this become eventually? So they did become fairy type Pokemon, and what's interesting is they're actually referred to as fairy Pokemon. Adorable little wings, of course. Look at this tail, kind of in the swirl, looking really cool. The ears, which I never noticed. The ears are two-tone, three-tone if you want. Pink, black, and brown. So I just never really noticed that on this adorable little Pokemon. Every time I see this one, I just start saying, like, Clefairy, Clefairy. <laughs> so I just remember that. They end up adding a earlier evolution, just how they had Pichu. Um, I believe this one is called Cleffa. Yes, Cleffa. I remember getting the card for that eventually in the Pokemon trading card game as well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting how they made baby type Pokemon. I don't mind it because it turned it into a three evolution. But when they called it a baby type, it just, I wish it was just like one, two, three rather than like the baby. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think of baby type Pokemon as well. So when does this one, how does this one evolve? Again, this is a moonstone. So again, in the games, so frustrating as a 10 year old kid being like, oh, I need three moonstones now. <laughs> so that was definitely a challenge of the brain for me. <laughs> now, Clefable reminds me a lot of, there's a coral type Pokemon that looks a lot like this one, especially at the back, it just kind of reminds me of it. Corsella or something like that, I want to say the name is, but let me know in comments below what it is. So the, the color here just changes only so slightly. The face almost looks identical, just the mouth gets a little bit longer and it loses its rosy cheeks. But other than that, these look remarkably similar from the front. On the, in terms of the nails, there's no nails on Clefable. The little feet, though, we have these little cute little patches on the feet, and then when you turn it around, of course, the wings are far bigger, and there's no kind of detail work on the wings. The tail looks really similar, though. So again, difficult to evolve. Really yeah. frustrating yeah. for that, but kind of cool. I like the stones. I think yeah. it's a neat idea. It's a neat idea, for sure. So this one is really, really common in terms of pink Pokemon that I was mentioning. So there's a lot of these cute kind of Pokemon, like Chansey. We also have Ditto coming up, but then we also have Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff. Tons of these kind of pink Pokemon. Colors. Colors sell, of course. Pink, Colors. pink, 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 pink. I guess that works for a lot of people. <laughs> All right, so let's move on from these two. 37 and 38, we have Vulpix and Ninetales. Now I know these are some of your favorites. They are just so adorable. Look at Vulpix, the cutest little fox Pokemon you ever did see. What's amazing, and shout out to Jordan for helping me to get an Alolan Vulpix. Jordan gets a shout out every video, so Jordan, <laughs> here's your shout out. 
But he helped me get a Alolan Vulpix in Gorgeous. Shield, and when Vul Alolan Vulpix evolves into Alolan Ninetales, that may be the most gorgeous Pokemon I have ever seen in my entire life. I was I am so obsessed with Alolan Vi Vulpix. Sorry, Vulpix and Ninetales. Now this plush is incredible, honestly. So like, not only does the main like. The head looks gorgeous and everything, but like, look at the back tail on this. Mm -hmm. Looks outstanding. I was really curious how they were going to do the tails for both of these because like they're really intricate. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six spikes kind of on the tail going off on this. Well, the what tail is just so important. Like it's a, it, for nine tails, it's a specific aspect of their name. And same with Vulpix, like that adorable fluffy tail was something that was such a drawing point for me as play a player. For sure. Now, if I said six tails, it just doesn't sound right. But like nine tails sounds like a name. And I mentioned six tails because I actually counted the tails on Vulpix. But Vulpix just like, look at this face. Just the face on that oh one. Oh my gosh, just so adorable. And a fire type Pokemon, which was tough to get if you didn't have Charmander as your starter. Yeah, it took a while in the game so that you could eventually get fire type Pokemon. All right, evolution. So it depends if you're using the original Vulpix that we have here, uh, then it'll evolve using a Firestone. So you could get a Ninetales very quickly. Uh, if you were to get an Alolan Ninetales, you would need to use a Ice Stone. Now, the best feature of this, now obviously gorgeous, but like, can we just look at the tails on this? They did such a good job looping Amazing. these tails together. So first of all, you have the main tail that kind of wraps around here. You've got two of them there, and then you have all of the others throughout here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the two on the bottom. They did an amazing job on these. When they loop, you can kind of pull each of them out individually. So like they don't have to all be attached. Most of them you can pull out. A few of them are attached though to the figure. So like the two bottom ones are attached, this one's attached, and one more is. But the rest of them kind of just flail out all over the place. But you can tuck them nicely all together. Ninetales is such an important aspect of this character's like so type. So gorgeous. Six tails, nine tails, <laughs> twelve tails, that would have been cool. I love nine tails, but Alolan Ninetales just has so many benefits. Alolan Ninetales is just so much more beautiful, and it, that's crazy to say, because look how gorgeous this Pokemon is. But Alolan Ninetales, on top of that, is also an ice and fairy type Pokemon. I just, I can't say enough about how much I love Alolan Ninetales. As opposed to this Obsessed. Ninetales, types yeah. are? Uh, fire. That's it, just yeah. fire. So you get two types that are different as well with the Alolan yeah. version. Honestly. What do you guys think of Alolan type Pokemon as well? Because when I first heard about it, I wasn't really sure what to think. I saw the Alolan Meowth and things like that, and I wasn't sure if I, I think I was a little bit against it at first, but now seeing more of the forms, I love them. I think it's really cool to have it, and it makes sense in the world that different regions would have different types, because that happens with all species, basically, yeah. if you grow up in a different yeah, part of the world. Cool. We also have like the mane, I want to call it here, so I just want to show you that when it's up. It goes all the way up like a turtleneck, basically. <laughs> so this is almost like a turtleneck on this Pokemon. My poor fox. A beautiful, so gorgeous face. Gorgeous. Really looks like, almost reminds me of a dog meets a polar bear in terms of the design of the style of the face, by the way. Maybe like a wolf? Yeah, maybe more than fox. It's a wolf type Pokemon, I think. Now, I know a lot of people say, like, don't have favorites, but yeah, we definitely do in this case. Oh my gosh. So another two evolution, beautiful tails, beautiful Pokemon overall. Jigglypuff, Jigglypuff. Now, what numbers do we have here? 39 and 40. We have Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff. They named them so perfectly. Look at these adorable little pink balls. It's a cute little pink ball of fluff. Oh my gosh. The eyes are captivating right here. I like can't look away. <laughs> also in Super Smash Brothers, you'll know this character. It can put itself to sleep, but if you do put yourself to sleep around other characters, it'll help you tremendously, but I just constantly put myself to sleep, leave myself vulnerable, and then get killed. But that's hilarious. <laughs> especially with the song of Jigglypuff. That song is just like ingrained in my ingrained brain. Ingrained in my brain, yeah. And just like something that I'll sing to bed all the time. It's just one of them. It's a lullaby and I will sing that to my children. That's probably how we're going to sing our children <laughs> yeah. to sleep one day. We're not, we're not foreshadowing that we have children on no. the way anytime soon quite yet. No. These eyes though, what color do you want to call that? Colors aren't my thing. Probably like a teal almost. Okay, good. I would say teal. We were playing a game, <laughs> Hues and Hues, yes. and I am not the best at colors, I learned, apparently. So not G colorblind, just names. So Jigglypuff is a balloon Pokemon, and... <laughs> oh 
amazing is that? I mean, when you think about it, in the show, she does kind of float around. Um, in the game, she's a normal type Pokemon until the later games where she also gets determined as a normal and fairy type Pokemon. And I just want to mention Pokemon Snap, the original game as well, when you're in the cave and you're trying to catch this, just flying way up high, trying to basically slow down the Pokemon so you can take good pictures. And then the evolution, Wigglytuff... Requires, again, a Moonstone! The now Moonstones. I need four Moonstones! Like, the struggles were so real as a 10-year-old kid. Well, they w didn't want to make it easy to get all 151. You couldn't even get all of them in the same game. You had to uh, trade. So much struggle. <laughs> the eyes. The eyes have, like, an extra, like, ring almost, I want to say, with that around. Additional dimension, for sure. There you go. Additional dimension. <laughs> the mouth changes to a little pink smile, it looks like. Such a big smile. Most importantly, we have this white tuff of a stomach and giant ears that get little <laughs> white tips on the end of them. Otherwise, they do look really, really similar, as they're supposed to. Yeah. Evolutions. The also, pink's the same shade, too. Also a balloon Pokemon. Also a normal type that becomes also a normal slash fairy. So, very similar Pokemon, but yeah, Wigglytuff is just so adorable, and I think everyone remembers the Jigglypuff because of the song, yep. but Wigglytuff is super tu duper cute. We should almost make the Wigglytuff song a thing. <laughs> Wouldn't be as good, though. Jiggly, Jigglypuff, it's just so just much better. So good. So they do have an original uh, baby form, too. I think it's like Iggly. Igglytuff. Yeah, Igglytuff. Now, Igglytuff, I think that's also in Gen 2. I think that most of the baby Pokemon came out in Gen 2, not all of them. But a lot of them did, to make this into a three-type Pokemon all over again, which I like. Because there's a lot of... So far, we haven't had a single Pokemon yet. All three and two yeah. generations so far. I think it's actually Iggly Buff, not Iggly Tuff. It is Iggly Buff. I think you're yeah. right, overall. Absolutely. All right, so these two adorable... Jiggly Buff, Jiggle... 41 and 42 are next. We have Zubat and then Golbat. Now, these look really similar, other than giant mouth on the evolution <laughs> after that. That's like the main thing. Again, these don't stand up, so I am using those plastic stands. And they're a lot thinner in terms of Pokemon, but it does have like its legs, I almost want to call them. Look at how funny those legs look when you're kind of like putting this Pokemon out there. <laughs> it can kind of sit up if you do it correctly, but most of the time it just wants to fall backwards. What do you know about this? Oh, in the game? When you're going through that cave? The cave? Oh, it's like every two steps you were hitting a Zubat and you're just like, I just want to get through. And the random encounter sound for oh. then, it almost started giving me nightmares. Yeah, like it, you just all the time, every few steps. It really hurt. So Zubat is determined to be a bat Pokemon. Surprise, surprise. And is both a poison and a flying type. Which is annoying because he could poison you, confuse you. It was very frustrating to be battling a Zubat. And I just want to mention this in terms of design. I think it's interesting that there's no eyes. Because some species of animals that live in a cave for its entire life, they might never actually see light. So there are a lot of species that live in caves that don't necessarily need eyes, and bats are so good with echolocation as it is anyway. So no eyes on the original. Look at these ears too, because of that echolocation. That's such nicely represented because that's how it's probably like listening most part, I think. It is very weird now that you're mentioning that that Golbat has very small ears. Well, it doesn't need them anymore yeah. because it has eyes now. Oh, I guess that's true. So look at this guy. It doesn't need the ears anymore. Tiny little, like, almost like cat ears. Yeah. If you just, like, look at it right there, it looks very like a cat. Weird. And now it has eyes with a giant mouth. So Zubat evolves into Golbat at level 22 and still gets referred to as a bat Pokemon and is still a poison and flying type Pokemon. So not a lot changes overall, but the wings, we do have a little bit of difference in the wings, not just in the mouth and the eyes. So you can see the original one, it does have this like blue little, I guess, additional part that it would flap or it would change. And like here, I'm just saying like there's only two parts of this, but now we have three. Yeah. So it almost looks like the wings would probably be a little bit larger as well, of Gold course. Gold is definitely bigger a than A lot Zubat. bigger. <laughs> yeah, but you don't encounter I mean, Gold Bat. that mouth is. <laughs> you, you don't encounter Gold Bat at the same right, rate, rarely. not even close. Yeah. So rare compared to the other one. Not as annoying as Zubat, that's for sure. No, so like we're actually discovering some things that we've never really thought of before. You know what? Lithium and ivory will make you think about these things. No <laughs> eyes, big ears, echolocation, eyes. We don't need the big ears anymore. So, in the later games, Z Golbat does evolve into Crobat, I believe? Yeah, so that's something that was not in Generation 1, though, and it wasn't in the original game. So we're celebrating Zelda, Zeldas. I just did the Zelda video, by the way. Check it out in the top right-hand corner. I'll put a link to that one as a card. <laughs> but we are celebrating 
Pokemon's 25th anniversary. This is the year Yay! of anniversaries. Pokemon! Pokemon! So many. Alright, let's move on from these. Number 43, 44, and 45, we have Oddish, Gloom, and Vileplume. Gloom is such a cool name for a Pokemon, I just want to mention that. But let's start with Oddish, the purple one. So Oddish is referred to as a weed Pokemon. Poor guy, because he's so adorable. Look how cute Oddish is. Also the name Odd in Oddish, I loved. Odd, Gloomy, and then Vile, like kind of like disgusting or like gross. They're all very moody Pokemon. The naming, <laughs> the naming conventions are awesome, play on it. words. So Oddish is a grass and poison type Pokemon. I loved having Oddish in my party. Uh, just a very useful Pokemon as far as grass and poison. I found him very helpful. Basically, it looks like a purple blob grape with <laughs> grass hair coming out of it, and then we just add these little legs to it, and then I it can walk around. It has a radish. It does look a lot, obviously, a like beet. a radish. Well, beet with legs. Right, of course. That looks so cool. So this one's dark purple, little tiny little cute mouth, and we got these red little beady eyes on it, but not a lot more in terms of design. But I gotta say, the grass hairstyle, they rocked it. Yeah, Five so coming awesome. out. These aren't really poseable, but they do move around a lot, and they're quite thick overall. They do look a lot like, gr like grass or leaves, so really well done there for the grass there. Let's move on to the evolution of Gloom. Nothing was more exciting than getting to level 21 and going from Oddish to Gloom and then being like, what happened? Because he got moody here. Very. <laughs> Gloomy. Look at this little mouth with the like the side. Yeah, I like, want to say the tooth's on the what? side. Honestly, I just remember being like, "That's what Oddish evolves into." <laughs> it was like Again, it was ten year old Ivory just sitting there going, "What the heck?" <laughs> and then they like did a good job redeeming it. I think overall they, at the they end, they redeemed it. But yeah, when I got to Gloom, I was like, "What?" It's the moody teenager. It totally is. For yeah, sure. Yeah, angsty teens. Now, this reminds me a lot, and especially Vileplume, of the flowers in the rainforest that smell terrible. The Reflacia, mm. I think they're called. So that's what we're getting at. Kind of really exotic flower that, you know, gloomy. You don't think this flower would be that beautiful yet when it comes out, but it does in the end. It just struggles a little bit midlife. <laughs> also referred to as a weed Pokemon. <laughs> so you have four of these, like, I want to, I'm not sure what to call these. I guess they would be leaves coming out, part of the flower. Sure. Petals. Petals? Maybe petals. And then you have the bulk part, the meat of the flower up here. Looking terrifying almost in a way. We got honestly, these spots on this. Honestly, I was shocked when it audit evolved <laughs> into Gloom and this is what I got. And you're like, this is it, what I'm looking at? I was like, can I go back? But the flower on top looks exceptional. So you do have these little pink kind of details on this. It really looks good. So Gloom, really odd design, but really well-made plush that's representative of the design. Mm. Then we have Vile Plume jumping up and down in the Pokemon Snap game. <laughs> Vile Plume evolves when you expose it to a leaf stone. Um, in the later games, if you evolve, you expose your your Gloom to a Sunstone, you actually get Blossom, and Blossom is really cute. It's really cool they did that. How yeah. you get to choose, almost like the evolutions. Almost like the evolutions, and kind of like how we have Nidoking King and Nidoqueen. Queen. Yeah, you get to have both. Kind of neat. Now, I'm just moving this because I remember it jumping up and down when you play the Poke Flute in Pokemon uh, Snap and it starts dancing. It either dances like this or it like jumps up and down. And it's its hair, which is its giant flower. Now, doesn't this, does it say anywhere that the flower reeks or smells bad, just like the rainforest flowers? I'm just really curious. Like the Reflacia giant flowers in the rainforest. I know so that it is a flower Pokemon and that's what it's referred to. Yeah. So right here, we have these white polka dots all over this. I think this is a great redemption. I think this is a great redemption story. Even look at the face. I know, it's such a cute smile. Honestly, what happened in those teen years? It was rough. <laughs> Sometimes, in order to become gorgeous, metamorphosis can be rough, but we got there in the end. So all three of them are a grass and poison type Pokemon, which was a nice combo to have and allowed that similar idea if you didn't get Bulbasaur as your starter to have a po like three level po Pokemon that had those those skills. <laughs> Poor Gloom. Just a little <laughs> gloomy. Uh. 46 and 47, Paris and Parasects. First of all, let's take a look at Paris here. 
What's funny about Paris is they refer to Paris as a mushroom Pokemon. Mushroom Pokemon? This yeah. is a prawn Pokemon. It's a crab or a shrimp, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, it's definitely, I understand that there's mushrooms growing off of it, but that certainly is not the defining feature. It's literally two mushrooms, though, on its back. So I understand that, considering we had a beak Pokemon type, but this is definitely a shrimp type Pokemon. I want to call it a prawn Pokemon. So Paris is a bug and grass type Pokemon, which is a kind of neat combo and you find it in the caves. So that was a neat little feature. Yeah, I like its uh, teeth here, incisors or whatever. And I feel like a lot of lobsters, almost like a lobster type too, a little bit here, but a lot of lobsters have one of its arms are way bigger than the other one. But this one, they're like the exact same size. So that's kind of cool. Like Kingler and Krabby, obviously, we'll get to those eventually. But it reminds me a little bit of those, of course. As a kid, I thought Paris was really cute, and then we got to Paris Act, and I was, again, a little bit disappointed in this evolution. I would say this is a disappointing evolution overall when you see what happens. And again, Paris Act is a mushroom Pokemon, question mark? Definitely a mushroom. That's a crab. That's a crab. It is a crab. It's a <laughs> shell. But they did a really creative job of, like, changing the shell into a mushroom, so yeah. I love when Pokemon does stuff like that. Still has six legs, three on each side. But overall, like, look at the eyes on this guy. It's like just little so, tiny so white eyes with no pupils when you compare it to this one. And also, like, I don't know, that's so cr Look at the face. I don't want that face staring at me at night. <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Somewhat terrifying. What kind of attacks are, like, how... I mean, I never chose these. A, I, yeah, it was I frequently it was would not a, catch a, these. Just to get 151. Yeah, right? this is one of the ones, like, and let's get them like, all. Alright, let's just get them all. I Could, guess I got Evolve Paris into Parasect. Because which happens at level 24, by the way. So it was, it was a commitment to get this Pokemon. That's a long time. It depends on what level you catch, obviously, the yeah. original. But, like, personally, I chose, because they are orange, I guess, and they're from the water-ish, kind of. Yeah. I chose Krabby and Kingler over I mean, these. They seem like they should be water Pokemon, but they're grass and bug Pokemon. I mean... <laughs> so much confusion. Why are they mushroom Pokemon? Why are they crabs? <laughs> Why are they water Pokemon? Why are they grass and bug? Just so many questions. <laughs> now, I don't want to be a hater compared to these Pokemon, but I do prefer the original one. If I'm going to keep yeah. one, I'm probably just going to keep this all cute. And you are collecting these. I'm collecting them most of the time just to fill our Pokedex yeah. as much as possible. Definitely not one that stays in my party. 48 and 49, we have Venonat and Venomoth. Let's take a look at Venonat first. This is made of an entirely different material, by the way. Look Cute at this. Cute little fluff. Fluff ball. Adorable. I love how they chose like very different materials for this. So you have the felt here on like the hands and legs and the antenna, but the rest of it's a giant purple fluff and the even the eyes are different. Love it. What do you know about Venonat? Venonat is an insect Pokemon and is a bug and poison Pokemon. So Venonat, I actually had like a, a weird love for this Pokemon. I don't know. I This like round purple ball of fluff in the game just like caught my interest. <laughs> I think that's what like sold this Pokemon to yeah. make it a little bit un more unique than all the other purple Pokemon, which there's tons of in or, Generation and 1. More unique than all the insect Pokemon. Like it was a big fluff. It was so cute. I don't know. I, I found it surprisingly charming. So I do love the eyes. Really look like insect eyes here with all those little dots on it. And then we have that cute little nose with like that looks so cool with little incisors, it looks like, and the yeah. incisors move off. But honestly, the main thing here is the fluff. So fluffy. So fluffy. Yeah. So when does, it fan. when does it evolve? Level 31. Again, so long. Large commitment, but what a cute little Pokemon. So I had no problem having that one in my party. For and that. then you get this guy. Venomoth. What a guy. <laughs> the poison, way you said that too. Poison Moth Pokemon. Four wings, by the way. Four separate wings. The wings on this. are really well done in this one. The wings are so well done. Because otherwise, like, I mean, like... <laughs> the eye, I gotta say, they did not do justice to the eyes here. They're, like, popping out of his face. Well, they're supposed to pop out, not but these are, like... Quite like that. Aggressively like, popping off. off of his head. Yeah, and they had to, like... Obviously, it's hard to make a circle of back of the fabric, but, like, you can just see the little... It kind of is bundled together in that, but, like... Very, very funny with this face. Ven Venomoth is way cuter in the show and in in the game than we have in front of us right now. That's yeah, for sure. <laughs> this one looks a little bit more terrifying than it did in the little game. Little scary, little scary. So we have three, like, horns, I guess, at the top of this insect. <laughs> at top of this moth, we have its little legs right here. What do you want to call these? Teeth? 
Sure. I think I want to call them fangs. teeth, fangs, and sizers on it a little bit, and then the rest of it, obviously, it looks quite like a moth. So at least this one is, what, what do they call this? Do they call it a moth-type Pokemon? A poison moth Pokemon. They nailed it, at least. Yeah, they got they, that one they right. Were correct. What do they name this one again? I think you said uh, so. An insect Pokemon. Just an insect Pokemon, yeah. but this is actually a moth type Pokemon. Now, this is another one that will not stand up. So, like, you probably need some sort of a stand, like the way I'm using. Otherwise, it's just going to fall over. Or I guess you could put it like this, because this is how it would fly. It's funny how our other insect Pokemon had the cocoon, like, in between Pokemon, and they just were like, nah, let's go straight to the moth. No, because it would go in a cocoon at some point, yes, I feel absolutely. like, most of them. Absolutely. But they just like, nah, we're good. We'll just move yeah, on we'll from that one. we'll just move on. <laughs> they were, didn't want to come up with another cocoon Pokemon. Nope. And in the same way, <laughs> we're just going to move on. We're just going to move on. At 50 and 51, we're a third of the way there. We have Diglett and Dugtrio. These guys just, I don't know, they're so iconic in terms of the memes that are out there on the internet with Pokemon, especially what these guys are doing underground with one another. But more on that maybe in a moment. <laughs> First, let's take a look at Diglett and then Doug. Doug Trio. Love the naming conventions there. So Diglett is a mole Pokemon and is a pure ground Pokemon in in the majority of the games. So he does have an Alolan version that provides you with a steel aspect, but... Most of the time, just a ground Pokemon. Yeah. What's funny about him is that in the Alolan version, he has these little, like, hairs on top. It's the defining feature of difference, yeah. Just sprouting out. Now, I do think they did a pretty good job of this one, of giving it ground that it's kind of breaking through, because most of them are just the Pokemon on their own, but this one actually has, like, a set design attached to it, because I'm quite certain this is not actually part of the Pokemon. No. They always break through the surface of the ground. Again, I'm thinking of Pokemon Snap all over again, when they break out of the ground, essentially. So, here you have the original form, and hey, look, now there's three of them. They're a little bit smaller when there's three of them in this design, but in terms of the game, they wouldn't be. In terms of the show, they wouldn't be. They would be bigger. But just for these, they didn't want to make this gigantic. So then you have Dugtrio. Yeah, Dugtrio is also a mole Pokemon, also a grand Pokemon, also takes on that steel aspect when they're Alolan. And when they're Alolan, they like have like serious flow. It's like really funny. They look like surfer dudes. It's awesome. <laughs> They're surfer dudes all hanging out together. So again, I mentioned the memes of what these guys are doing underground together, which is hilarious. Just in, in general, like there's so many <laughs> different happening? ones that are out there. Um, I love the one that has them, but then you look underground and he's just jacked. Like a huge <laughs> body is just jacked, which is hilarious. So Diglett evolves into Dugtrio at level 26. 26 to get to this one. Again, great naming convention with Dig Dug, but also Trio for three of them, almost yeah. like Zapdos, and then you have Articuno, and of course you have Moltres, with Unos Dos Tres, which we'll get to there in a second. So I do like the naming convention. Overall, though, I thought this was a funny, lazy design in the originals. One of them's fine, but then three of them together, it's almost like Magnemite and Magneton, which again will come up later. I mean, positively, I did not work to evolve from a Diglett to a Dugtrio. I just caught both and went, moved on with my life. So that was nice. Yeah, at least <laughs> they have friends to hang out with. Now, my question is, like, is this, this is one Pokemon, but I just wonder, like, underground, like, they're connected, I guess? Like, I'm not even yes. sure. I'm not I sure. mean, Magneton, Magnemite, we'll get to them when yeah. they're connected with Magnus, which makes more sense. At least there's a common theme. You got three of them here. All right, next up. Meowth. Number 52. At number 53, we have Meowth and Persian. I think these are the first cat-type Pokemon. I think so, yeah. And so Meowth gets referred to as a scratch cat Pokemon. Scratch cat yeah. Pokemon. He does scratch a lot in the show <laughs> yeah. and everything, too, of course. So in the original game, he is a normal-type Pokemon. He, Depending on the version that you get, because he comes as a Galarian Meowth and an Alolan Meowth, and they have different versions, so you can get a Steel or Dark Meowth as well. Now, I think this guy is just so interesting, especially on the show, because if you watch the original anime, he talks, and there's not, I mean, all Pokemon talk, they mostly just say their name, which was brilliant, because then everyone learns what the Pokemon are, when the Pokemon are saying their name over and over again, like Charmander saying, Char! But Meowth, he literally fully articulate with conversations and everything in the show, which you find out more about in the show. So we have this, like, up here, this, like, jewel aspect almost it's attached to his forehead. It's a coin because, you know, how associated he it is with him. He has a payday. He has a payday, exactly, which is so cool that that's involved. We have whiskers off the side, and then, like, whiskers kind of above the eyes, but they're really far away, but a lot like a cat-type Pokemon. We have cats. 
Which we'll get to. We named one of them after Pokemon, but we did not name it Meowth. We did not. Cool name, at least, for a Pokemon. Like, you know exactly yeah. what you're getting with a Meowth. Like the tail. The tail is good. It looks like it should, I think, overall. And, of course, like, this one's a lot like an anamorphic... I think that's what it's called. What's it called when it's a lot like a human? Anthropomorphic? I think yeah, that's the full that's word. The word. Anthropomorphic-type Pokemon. And then Meowth eventually evolves into Persian. Level 28. Let's go. Gotta get to Persian eventually. So Giovanni had a Persian, and so that's that's usually how you first met the Persian evolution. With Giovanni, the gym leader. Well, the t you meet him earlier as the Team Rocket leader. Yes. And you battle him then, and then you meet him again for the gym leader. It was a good build-up. Like, that was really cool when you saw that for the first time. So here are the eyes are now red, and the coin's gone. I'm not even yeah. sure what this is, other than, like, a little ball. So Persian gets referred to as a classy cat Pokemon, and I guess classy, classy cats don't have money, they have jewels. So it's a jewel on its forehead, basically, that's what it's supposed to represent instead of the coin. So that's a really cool aspect, I love how they actually did that. The tail, they crushed it. They crushed it, it, it holds it up, like it looks a, great. It looks like a cat. It looks a lot like Persian's awesome. tail should, I think. Look at this cat paw, though. The cat paw is adorable on both not as adorable on the original, by the way, Meowth with the brown little feet. But look at that. It looks exactly like a cat paw. Reminds me a lot of Super Mario 3D World right now. Love yes, that game, by the so way. Good. Bowser's Fury shout out as well. And here we have the exact same kind of mouth with those tiny little teeth that you can see right there. Just like Meowth had as well, except the whiskers. Three whiskers here. It's like the whisker that was above by the eyes of Meowth has like <laughs> moved down in the evolution. The ears aren't as pointy here. They're a little bit more rounded. Almost like a koala bear. Little bit. A little so. bit more rounded like that. Yeah. Pretty adorable Pokemon overall. This one, Persian, does a really good job of standing up, but Meowth, you kind of have to sit in the perfect way to have Meowth sit up properly. Usually it won't fall down, but overall it's pretty good. Adorable cats, but... Not my favorite cat Pokemon in the series. Not my favorite cat Pokemon. I don't know. I did. I didn't find Meowth as the the starter to be as as enticing, and so I I wasn't very interested in having Meowth, and so Persian kind of got left behind. Not as a starter Pokemon. Obviously, she just means as like the original Sorry. of the evolutionary yes. series. Yes, exactly. Name that cat Pokemon later on that was just adorable as one of the starters in the comments below if you know what we're talking about, because that is a great cat Pokemon. Love it. Adorable. Who's that Pokemon? It's Psyduck! And his evolution, Golduck, or her evolution. So here we go. Look at this guy. <laughs> he perfectly represents how, like, unbelievably dumb he can be in a lot of the games and the anime and everything. Like, look at this guy. He's Psy! Like, yep. As our number 54 Pokemon, Psyduck is, of course, a duck Pokemon. And he is a water type. I feel like this is derogatory to all ducks. <laughs> it's almost like animalist negative, that ducks are dumb, which is not the case. But this guy's just so wonderfully stupid. Look at his little hair, too. Those three little black stubs of hair coming out look hilarious. I love the bill on this Pokemon, by the way. Quite impressive. Want to talk about a bill-type Pokemon right here? <laughs> Bills and beaks. Look at how chubby he is, too. Like, he's a little, like, squished down, chubby little guy. He's got his arms... So, like, in Pokemon Snap again, they're all around the water, kind of going around, and then they just jump out of the water, yeah. and they go, Sigh! And then they, like, <laughs> look at them and go back down. It's just But perfect. it was so cool to see them, like, swimming and interacting. I love that about Pokemon Snap, is you got to see them, like, in their natural habitats. And you don't really get to see that again until Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. I but feel like it's been a long time. you see them, like in their natural habitats moving around. They're having a lot of other side games and spin-offs, like we have Pokemon Ranger and things like that, but I agree, the majority of the audience has not probably played and seen that way. I'm just so excited for the new Pokemon Snap game. We're going to keep talking about it, bringing it up. Mm -hmm. It's out in like a month and a half. All right, so Psyduck's design is pretty good. He's a little bit chubby. We do have all these seam works all over him, but I'm not sure how they can get away from that. He does sit up perfectly overall. And then we have the evolution, Golduck. Level 33, leveling up to Golduck. Is also this a, a duck Pokemon. Is this a jewel again? Because oh, yeah. like, look just at that. Like Persian. Just like Persian, bring that back. Actually, right back to back with these, almost. Really similar. So Golduck is also a water Pokemon. Water with blue. But look at these. Like, I love the paw. I love the paws. I'm calling them paws, even though it's not on ducks, obviously. Yeah. What would we call those? 
It's legs and arms with ducks. <laughs> webbed, 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 hands. webbed feet. It has the webbing. Look it at does. That. It literally has the webbing right here, which looks cool. We got the little claws on it, and look at that beak. You know, if you're staying committed to a Psyduck till level 33, this is a great evolution to be committed to. Huge upgrade. You you get an upgrade here, and it's impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Golduck is, like, to be respected, I think. Yeah. Definitely well-earned. The eyes on Psyduck are perfectly whimsically, I have no clue what's going on. <laughs> and then Golduck is like, mm, I'm intelligent now, I'm wise beyond my years. I had to wait to level 32. 33. 33 yeah. to evolve overall. Yeah. And the tail on this guy, well done as well. Just overall, like, really good evolution of this. On the back of the feet, by the way, you do have that extra little bit right here on them. So I think, like, worth the wait. Worth, worth the, the wait, wait for this. Worth the wait. Worthy Pokemon, and Psyduck is synonymous for me with the show and with Pokemon Snap. Yeah. At all times. 56 and 57, we have Mankey and Primate. They look really similar to one another. However, there are some differences, so let's go through them. First of all, Mankey. So, Mankey is a super cute monkey Pokemon. Really, really large head he for a monkey gets Pokemon. He actually as a pig monkey Pokemon, so a you can know that monkey. by the nose. A pig monkey Pokemon, not as cool as that other monkey Pokemon, Chimchar. No, but... I think Chimchar is just adorable, but Mankey's like, I don't know, so much Generation 1 here. Like, just screams to me... Well, the well done design generation one Pokemon, yeah. Yeah. but I wish the evolution was actually a little bit different. But we'll get to that in a second. Look at the nose. The nose does scream pig. Yeah, he is a fighting Pokemon, um, and yeah, like he he is pretty common pretty early on, and so I think a lot of people did end up catching a Mankey. Now I do love the tail on this guy. Just gotta say, so well done. The feet we got. Three, I think three basic toes to stand this guy up. But then when you eventually get the primate, it's just like a foot. It's not like you can see the toes overall anyways. The eyes, we've got brown eyes here and we have a little tuft head and it does look like he's been working out. This guy's been hitting the gym pretty well. So much so that when eventually it evolves Level into- 28. At 28 into primate, he's got like this furrow right here. I'm not sure if he's being hit and that's like a scar or that's like, you know, when someone's really thinking or they're upset or literally he's been in battles. I think it's like a throbbing vein. That's yeah. probably what it is, because he's been hitting the gym so hard. Yeah, he's almost just so jacked at this point that the veins are popping out. He earned his <laughs> rings here too, which he has around each of his limbs. His nose still looks very similar with the little right he's there, like a pig. Still a pig monkey Pokemon. Still a monkey pig Pokemon. But the eyes, we lose the color. He's lost some color in his eyes. It's no longer that brown that it was before. Losing some of that in his... So then the ears, too. The ears look really similar, and we have the tufts, the three tufts. So the, these two, again, to my person in Japan, Jay, that was trying to pick these up for me, these looked so similar. It was really hard to tell the difference at first. So really happy his son went with them. Now, what happened to the tail? I don't know, but I love how fluffy Primate Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about how fluffy he is. So, like, this one, the original one, Mankey, looks like it's just kind of the normal thing that we've been having with all the Pokemon, but the back... Not the front of Primeape, but the back is this giant fluff ball. If you will say, a party in the back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now, this one's really similar to Venno Nats in terms of the fluff, mm -hmm. but only on half of it. Yeah. So, really cool design feature of this Pokemon. What else do you know about Primeape? Uh, also, a fighting Pokemon. Interestingly, 50% are male and 50% are female, so that's a kind of fun little fact there. Yeah, as opposed to a lot of other, like the starter Pokemon. I think Bulbasaur is something like 12.5% yeah. to like 87.5%, because they're not all male and female for each, which is so cool. It's not all half, it's not all 50-50. No. So there we have it, these two. We're well over halfway now, but love the fluff on Primeape. Number 58 and 59, we have Growlithe and Arcanine, which I'm going to talk about from the Pokemon card game in a second. But first of all, Growlithe, this is our first dog type, I want to say. He's a puppy Pokemon. Puppy Pokemon. And look how cute he is. He's a little fire type puppy. And I don't know, I saw Growlithe for the first time and was like, I need this Pokemon. So fluffy, so cute. And when you get to play in Pokemon Shield, you actually get to ride Growl. Uh, sorry, Arcanine. Arcanine's huge. Yeah. It's so cool riding Arcanine. It's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 
I always get confused if it's Arcanine or Arcanine. Yeah, let me know how you say it. Do you guys pronounce it Arcanine or Arcanine? But great naming convention as well. Yeah. Growlithe. Growlithe. Awesome name. Oh, awesome name for this Pokemon. This one's so cute and adorable. He's so cute. What sucks about Growlithe is like you don't have to work hard to evolve him into Arcanine. Arcanine just needs a Firestone, so that's kind of just a... It was kind of sad, because like, I don't know, I wanted to work hard to evolve to get my dog Pokemon. But you just do that and you have the evolution. Now, can we talk about this one for a bit? This one looks a lot like the like the cat Pokemon, which is the starter named... Litten. Litten, so if you were paying attention, I asked a little bit earlier. So right here Litten. reminds me a lot of Litten. Yeah. On the side here. It Again, looks like a tiger, you know? A lot like a tiger. Black on this Pokemon. Not many Pokemon have black here. But can we talk about the mane and the tail and so the tufts around fluffy. this? The fluff. The fluff on this guy is amazing. It's inhibiting his vision or her vision. Look at this. Can barely see. Gets out of the eyes, which is hilarious. Love that fluff. So well done. The mane is just huge on this dog. Yeah, so Arcanine actually gets referred to as a legendary Pokemon, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, also a fire type. I don't know. I think that Arcanine's really cool. I think both of them are awesome. You can tell the difference enough. I do wish almost they went a little bit more out there with this in terms of the design. But however, when you can ride the Pokemon, though, it's so cool, especially so in Let's Go awesome. Eevee and Pikachu. Yeah. Just huge Pokemon. So cool to be doing that. So this one, in terms of the card series, I just wanted to mention, I think it has an extremely high HP in the original card game for the original set. I'm pretty sure from the original set where it was from Jungle, but it wasn't a star. So that always like baffled me of being like, how is this Pokemon card so strong with H HP, but it isn't a star Pokemon in terms of rarity for that. So I just wanted to mention that really cool dog type puppy Pokemon. And then you said Arcanine was a legendary, a legendary Pokemon. The first one we've had in this video so far, the, the 151. One. Next up at number 60, 61, and 62, we have Poliwag, Poliwhirl, and Poliwrath. I actually really like the concept of these having the swirl on them. So first up, let's take a look at Poliwag. Poliwag is a tadpole Pokemon and clearly a water type. If I were to have been like focused on one type, for sure I am the water type. Just, I feel like that's your personality. That's just my personality. I love to swim. Uh, when I think like Disney, I think Moana and that that just really spoke to me and all the water Pokemon just seem to like talk to me more and But so. not Ariel Right interesting. No. interesting interesting. We love Disney by the way We watch a Disney movie every Thursday. You should check it out retro Disney night Anyways going back to Polly Wag Polly <laughs> Polly Wag is like a little adorable tadpole I do like this design his mouth her mouth just gets to me every single time Love it. It's like the little fuzzy mouth. The eyes look adorable, and we have that swirl. I wish the swirl was a little bit better on mine. Maybe yours, if you pick one up, the swirls will connect a little bit better. Overall, it looks pretty good. They could have just put this down a little bit so the lines match up perfectly. Now, the swirl. This one is going counterclockwise. So just remember that. Counterclockwise on the swirl on Polly Wag. And look at that tail. That is a perfect tail. I wish it almost perfect wasn't connected. Tail, eh? Perfect tadpole tail. Yeah. Love that as well. Slightly different material than the soft base. Okay, so then we go from Poliwag to Poliwhirl. Look at the swirl now. The swirl in the next two are now going clockwise. So it's just interesting how they chose that. Yeah. Poliwhirl counterclockwise and then clockwise for these two. So here we have Poliwhirl. So you get to Poliwhirl if you get to level 25. And he's also referred to as a tadpole Pokemon, also a water type, really cute, a little stronger, all the good stuff. Yeah, and like this one again, well designed, it just looks so similar to the final evolution form that I wish they almost went a little bit more out there on the third form. I think feel like the eyes are kind of coming off the body. I wish these were even more off the body, I think, just to make it look a little bit different. Yeah. And I'm not sure what they could have done with the swirls. You can only go two directions with them to kind of change it up the next time. Maybe have like the background black and then the swirl white, maybe to change it up or something. It would have been really cool, just a like random thought that's come through my head, that Polyrath had like tie-dye swirl. I don't know, that would have been sweet. That would have been pretty sweet, with, like way more colors. So let's get to the final evolution here. Full-blown hands, by the way, at this point. So like, no hands at all hands but they're like only have a thumb with a fist and then now you have full-blown hands with three fingers coming off of it basically the eyes are more off the head and it looks angry like it looks ready to fight 
Poliwrath is still a tadpole Pokemon. And you're right that uh, he now is a water and a fighting type Pokemon. Now he can finally punch with his short little arms on this guy. So you only get a Poliwrath if you use a water stone. Uh, what's interesting is if you use... I think you can get a Politoed as well as another way to get from Poliwhirl, and I think you get that by holding, trading while holding a King's Rock. That's so specific. So specific. That's so specific. Yeah. So throughout this video, we're getting a lot of our information from Bulbapedia. You can check it out. I can put it as a link in the description below the video as well if you want to know any more about these Pokemon. I just wish they went a little bit further to differentiate the final form here. I'm really stuck on the on the tie-dye for this, and I really wish that was an Alolan Poliwrath. If anyone's good at graphic design or like with Photoshop, could you please tie-dye this version and then send like me it. send it to us either in like the description below or as a comment or even follow me on Twitter at Collect Nintendo and tweet me it. It had to be Collect Nintendo because we couldn't fit all the characters for Nintendo collecting, but like I would just love to see that. Tie-dye swirl. Tie-dye swirl Poliwrath. That would it be incredible. Awesome. Here we have 63, 64, and 65 Abracadabra and Alakazam amongst the best naming conventions in Pokemon, right up there with Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres in my opinion. Love the naming convention here. Very well done. Abra, playing this game for the first time when you're 10, there is nothing more frustrating than coming across an Abra and having it immediately teleport away. They would do that constantly. Catching one of those. Furiating. Like, infuriating. Once you caught that Abra though, you were so excited. I can't even describe the excitement level I had catching that Abra. Totally worth it. It reminds me a lot of Pokemon Go when like you just don't catch it and then like that was so frustrating when I finally found a Blastoise. But same thing in the game though here. Yeah. It's so hard to catch an Abra. Abra gets referred to as a Psy Pokemon. Just a Psy. P-S-I and is of course a psychic type. Can you imagine if it was a Psy Pokemon that it was just like tired and it was just like oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think Abra is absolutely adorable. Like, what a cute Pokemon. And so shy and timid, even though, like, so much power sitting there in front of you. So much personality in the head as well. I feel like they could have said that this is, like, a cat type or something like that. Like, some psychic cat, or I'm not really yeah. sure. But I want to mention, like, the shoulder pads on this guy <laughs> look amazing. Gigantic. We have some black detail here as well as the brown different shades, but look at the tail. The tail is huge that we're going to talk about in this evolution, by the way. The tail is really well done on this and very anthropomorphic, by the way, in terms of human looking. Okay, so Abra's evolution. Level 16. Not bad. Not, not bad. bad. Not if bad If you can at all. catch an Abra. Consistent. Yep, uh, and so it becomes Kadabra. One Kadabra spoon, also... by the way. One spoon. One spoon, this star on his head, Psy Pokemon still, still a psychic Pokemon. Kadabra is pretty sweet. I gotta say, I love that tail. That is a luscious tail. Reminds me of Vulpix and Ninetales. Like, I love those luscious tails like that. That is a huge tail on this, like, plush, by the way. Monstrous. But look at how cool this guy is. Like, this looks fantastic to me. By the way, the spoon, obviously, relating to psychic different abilities, which makes a lot of sense in, like, bending spoons with your mind. Mm. The star on the head that you mentioned, but also, like, the psychic kind of, like, psi symbols down here on its, like, lower belly or abdomen. The shoulder pads are huge. <laughs> now it's wearing, like, a full shoulder pad kit. This this is an awesome evolution. It even has nails. The tail, though. And then we get the evolution of Kadabra into Alakazam. And it's like, what happened? Yeah. Alakazam. First of all, getting an Alakazam was a huge challenge because you had to have a friend that you could trade. And he only traded through... Sorry, he only evolved through trades. That's, That's the, the only, only way, way you could get, get this one to evolve. You had to have a friend. But by the way, okay, so the easiest way of spotting this, because again, my friend Jay had a little bit of issues, two spoons. So two spoons now, and that's how you know it's the final form. But nothing on its forehead, nothing on its stomach anymore, and it's tailless. Where did the tail go? Like, he should have some amazing, like, luscious, wrapping around tail that's almost like a part of him that it's like creating this ball of psychic power and instead he has no tail at all now maybe that's part of the history of this pokemon that i'm just not aware of maybe it's somewhere in the mythology so if you know what happened to Alakazam, alakazam's tail or where it went please let me know please let me know overall because <laughs> honestly i need to know i feel like they messed this up like we were just talking about this i feel like this should have been the middle of the evolution and this should have been the final form 
I feel like Kadabra should be the one with two spoons and should have been Alakazam. I really feel like they messed it up. But I mean, when you say Abracadabra, Alakazam. Obviously, but I just meant like, I feel like yeah. it should be like this. Yeah. And this one should have like a small tail with one spoon, and then it should eventually earn all these excellent symbols on it yeah. and everything. I just feel like they messed that up a little bit in terms of the evolutions. And we also haven't talked about these. They're almost like the whiskers or like a mustache, a mustache beard <laughs> coming down. Yeah. And it does do a really good job of growing from this to eventually like a much longer one with more intricate detail work. So I do understand that and the two spoons. I just feel like Kadabra should be the final evolution with those other symbols and the tail. The yeah, awesome I tail. I love that tail. But wonderful naming convention. Abra Kadabra Alakazam for Psychic. They really did a good yeah. job with that. And all Psy Pokemon, that's how they describe them as, that PSI Psy Pokemon. Huh. Psy. Here we have 66, 67, and 68. Machop, Machoke, Machamp. Again, great naming. Great naming. Look at how cool this guy's hairstyle is. Just want to mention that right off the bat. Love it. That's pretty hilarious. All three of them have that similar kind of flow. A little bit of a flow, for sure. So Machop is a superpower Pokemon. That's how they describe him as. I guess that's the only way you could. And he is a fighting type Pokemon. So these ones, like, I always thought they were like a rock. Like, I always imagined them more like a rock kind of Pokemon. Like, really, really strong. But they are just basically look like humans. Just different colored humans, basically. Yeah. Especially with that hairstyle. <laughs> we got a little tail on the tail. back. This one looks like a gray kind of white Pokemon so far. Yeah. And then it changes colors as it goes throughout. But I, I, I like the color, like, change in this. It makes a lot of sense to me. So his eyes, I like his eyes, I like his personality. You see a lot in his face here and the smile of this. And then eventually over time, like, can we just talk about his lips? Like, the smile here is, like, small, and then it gets bigger, and then, oh my god, on the last <laughs> one, basically, overall. Yeah. And the eyes just get smaller. Like, huge, wide, br like, bright eyes as a kid, then teen years, and then, like, at the end, just, like, these tiny little eyes. Anything else you want to mention about Machop? Well, I just thought it was funny that they've given those little details of, like, he's trying to get abs and uh, hasn't quite gotten there yet, so he has the little mini abs. That's consistent with the game, too. That's hilarious, those little things right there. Look at yeah. that. You got the little stitch work right there is what you're talking about. Yeah. Now, Machop, Machop, like a, you know, karate chop. He'll sit up on his own, but then when you get to Machoke, he doesn't like to sit up very well. He's just, he can... But he's just so jacked. Like, look at his <laughs> rippling muscle arms. He did not work out those legs as much as those arms. <laughs> <laughs> like, almost most people. He does have a little bit of definition here, but you're right. Look at how floppy those legs are compared to those arms. So, to get to Machoke, you need to get to level 28. And he also gets referred to as a superpower Pokemon. You know those humans that are just so strong with their arms, they can't extend their limbs anymore properly? This guy's done so many curls. So many curls. Rippling biceps. <laughs> Huge. Look at his back. Rippling. Just rippling. Like, those lats? Holy. Huge. Teach me your ways. I also like how now he earned a belt. Very much so like wrestlers, basically. Yeah. A lot like wrestlers. And for some reason, now he's wearing shorts. How many Pokemon are wearing... It looks like exactly <laughs> like he's wearing shorts. It does look like he's like, wearing shorts. I'm sure Pokemon would say they're not shorts, but he is kind of wearing a belt. But no, he's wearing shorts. Like, those are for sure he's wearing, like, trunks. <laughs> now, the head. We have the spikes here getting a little bit darker. Almost like he's showing his age. Nice, youthful, blonde, lush locks <laughs> that lose a little bit. So they're a little bit darker. And then by the time he's final form... It's basically he's gone gray with his hair. <laughs> the eyes look a little bit more mean, like I said, and of course that mouth. But really, the belt with the P on the top of it. And then what? To, when does he evolve? Uh, when does so it evolve? You need to trade to get him a champ. Yep. Very frustrating. Very, well, I mean, great to hang out with friends and do some yeah, trades. But, but I mean, when my only friend is my brother with Pokemon, it got a little frustrating. Meaning, like, you had other friends, but the other friends didn't have Pokemon at yeah. the time. Because you were ahead of your time with Pokemon right. back in 1998, I want to say. When yeah. it started for us. Now, by the way, this is the 25th anniversary, but we just want to mention it's the 25th anniversary of the game's release in Japan. Mm -hmm. In North America, this is only like the 23rd anniversary, roughly, this year. So I wonder if we celebrate it all over again when it's 25 years in North America. All right, so look at this. Look at those lips. I want to say they're lips, but, like, the eyes are actually pretty big still. If you just move down his lips, his face, his mouth, 
Look at those eyes. All right, so they're back to kind of like what they were with Mach with Machop. It's just they're covered up with those giant lips. Huge. Also, can we talk about how this one has six limbs now? Oh yeah, he just like grew some extra arms. He got so strong. He was like, I need more arms for how strong I am. Please let me know if you just keep doing biceps, if you start <laughs> growing additional arms. One, I'm concerned. Two, I'm impressed. <laughs> how many? I would love to have two extra arms, by the way. Can you imagine how much you would accomplish? Fighting, though. Fighting with extra arms. Still fighting. Reminds me of some characters from Mortal Kombat, basically. Name that Mortal Kombat character. So this one, huge. Just jacked. However, lost all the definition in terms of the red ripples yeah, of, like, the vein there. work. So that didn't happen anymore. The character still has almost the same belt. It's just, I'm curious why the belt looks slightly different. It has the same number of rings. It's just like the belt got smaller. Yeah. Maybe he got more fit, even more fit. Somehow more fit. Still wearing trunks. If it was possible after looking at Machoke. But... For sure, still wearing trunks. <laughs> Hilarious. Still, and the hairstyle. Still a super power Pokemon. And still fighting type. Makes a lot of sense. Now it can kick you and punch you four times. <laughs> Basically, but look at his Six legs. Times. Still embarrassed. Got kids, don't skip leg day. <laughs> if you're working out, don't skip leg day. Now, the two of these final forms, so much choke and a champ, don't stand up all that well because they're so jacked, they're falling over because they're top heavy. But little Machop here, he'll sit just fine overall, mostly. <laughs> awesome. awesome. At 69, 70, and 71, we have. Bell Sprout. Weeping Bell and Victory Bell. Cool names as well. I guess they remind us of bells of some sort for these. So I think these are a little bit confusing in terms of evolutions as well, but not the first one. The first one's pretty similar. Just these two, if you were seeing them like this, they kind of look really similar, but there's a little bit of subtle differences, of course. So first of all... So Bellsprout is a flower Pokemon and is a grass poison type, so that was pretty great. Now the way this one walks always amuses me on its like Very feet, cute. basically. This one always reminded me of like a com combination of like a living thing in terms of like, it almost looks like it's wood as well. Yeah, it's like a sapling. Yeah, like pseudo wudo almost esque in terms of its body and base. That's a good connection for sure. Yeah, a little bit. And then we have like these arms for its leaves, which makes a lot of sense. And then its head, its definite, its defining feature, I would defining say. Defining feature. That is this petals pulling together into that nice abyss of its mouth. Yeah, and again, like, look at it, like, no teeth in its mouth, just kind of a giant, like, very big mouth at this point. Tiny little beady eyes. Keep that in mind as we move forward, move ahead. So then, when does this, and how does this evolve? Level 21, we go on to Weepin' Bell. Now, Weepin' Bell sits just like this, of course, and I always thought, like, Weepin' Bell should be, like, upside down, but it's not. It's, like, this way. So Weepin' Bell is a flycatcher Pokemon, which is pretty hilarious. Like, look at that mouth. That mouth is catching flies for sure. Yeah, it knows exactly what it's doing with that. Also, now on the top, it has this sprouting off, which eventually gets huge with the final form of Victory Bell. We have spots here, but not much. Just like three small spots up here, and its eyes are pretty well done. They're not popping off like the other one that we had. Venomoth. Venomoth's eyes were scary popping off. These ones are reasonable. Yeah. But then for some reason, they're like back on its head for the final yeah. form. And also we have the pink inside the mouth here overall, which is lost on the final form, and there's still no teeth. <laughs> Who needs teeth? Giant lips there, and then it <laughs> evolves into Victory Bell. Yes, you definitely need a Leaf Stone to get Victory Bell. Victory Bell is cool. I love how this is kind of like enticing more things, obviously, to cascade into its mouth because it eats a lot of insects if it was a flower. Still a flycatcher Pokemon, yep. And the spots. We have much larger spots, and they're all over this Pokemon. But not only that, look at this growing out. Now it's huge, which happens in nature as well with flowers like this, basically. It does have this sprouting out, which is monstrous. Also, it's leaves. Its leaves are kind of interesting to me. I'm not sure how many people will find this interesting. Look at the original form, basically. We have, like, kind of the leaf, but here, we don't. It's just like, I don't know, they're all one piece. It doesn't have the definition anymore, yeah. almost like arms. But then we go back in Victory Bell to having those definition of the leaves. I like this final form. I think it's really neat. I like I don't... this evolution crew. It's a, it was a neat evolution crew, and it was a little later in the game that you got Bellsprout, so it was a little fresh thing that you had to try and fight for to get three different evolutions. I, I enjoyed it. I also appreciate how this one sits up like this. Yeah. Like, it's kind of just completely flipped it, because it's not like... Is it like this? No. 
No, like we always see it like that. So it's completely flipped upside down. Its eyes are now on its head again. They're not popping off anymore. And we only have like little small pupils. It's kind of the exact opposite of its f like first form with black with white mm. pupils. Now it's white with black pupils. Cool. I like this one a lot as well. I'm not sure why or what makes me like these. I just, I, I feel like these are kind of cool. They do remind me a lot, of course, of the other Reflacia flowers like Vile Plumes Evolution as well. Kind of related in some sense. For sure. Number 72 and number 73, we have Tentacool and Tentacruel. Again, love those names. So Tentacool is a jellyfish Pokemon and is a water and poison type. So that was a cool thing to have in Gen 1. Can we just talk about for a moment how brilliant jellyfish are? Like jellyfish in the wild, like I have no idea the intelligence of other species and it's so hard to measure or gauge those. We know certain species are really intelligent, but like octopus are so smart and there's some other jelly type Pokemon that are incredibly intelligent. That's why I just want to mention this because look at how big its brain looks like it would be. Like it looks like it would be giants in this head overall. The tentacles, we got two tentacles on the original form, which grows into way more on Tentacruel. Way, way more overall. So level 30, you get to have Tentacruel. And Tentacruel is still a jellyfish Pokemon, and still a water and poison type Pokemon. But it also has like this beak. Yeah, it's a weird like beak claw. I think it's supposed to be like claws, because there's one at the back there too. Oh, you think like that? Yeah. That would make sense too. I completely understand that. But we have eight legs now, eight tentacles. Wait, eight? Ten. I think it's ten. It is ten. Nice. So there's ten on this one plus the two in the middle. And there are some species that do have this in the wild as well. They have like one main larger one, I believe. The eyes. The eyes are there, right, of course. And they do look like, I don't know, I feel like this one has more intelligence. It just looks like its head's even bigger. It looks a little bit more intelligent. The defining features on this with the red spikes, it still has three. Not red spikes, but I guess red spheres on it. But mainly, we do have a little bit of black on these guys as well. Again, I just love how different and unique each of the Pokemon are. And they completely went for it with so many different species on the planet Earth. Eventually, in other generations, I don't know, they just have things like Pineco, which like don't really amuse me as much as they do when they're based off of real animals. I love when they're based off of real living things. This marks the halfway point with number 74, 75, and 76. We have Geodude, Graveler, and Golem. So first of all, let's take a look at Geodude. Geodude's a rock Pokemon. Geodude. Shocking. Geodude. And he's a rock and ground type Pokemon. I don't know, I always thought Geodude was really cute. I don't know, this cute little rock? <laughs> a cute little rock type. Yeah, it was like a pet rock. Like, shout out to anyone that ever had a pet rock. No, I like how this one went from like, I don't know, really quite simple kind of in design, like a rock with giant arms, you know, like a little bit of a forehead going on. And then let's make it a little bit more complicated with Graveler having legs. And then in the end, I don't know, it just looks like a turtle. <laughs> a turtle with a ball reminds me a little bit a of Teenage turtle. Mutant Ninja Turtles. Rock Turtle. So Geodude, he does have like hands, like full blown hands basically. And like on the back we have these two little, I don't know what to call these, defining features on the back of him, but look at like these eyebrows on him. Not much more to say I guess about Geodude, but then eventually he evolves, that evolves into Graveler. Level 25. Now Graveler to me again reminds me of Pokemon Snap, when you're there with Sandshrew, on the wall, you also can get Graveler to come out as well, but not Golem. Golem's not in the original Pokemon Snap. I think it's just Graveler. Yeah, it's just this guy, Graveler. Another rock Pokemon. Now also again, rock ground Pokemon. Six limbs. Six limbs. Is it six limbs? Like these are are these? Yeah, these are hands. hands. These are for sure hands. He just holds them tight. Yeah, he just holds them really tight. He's holding his belly. <laughs> he had a great meal of rocks. Also, though, can we talk about all these like? different shapes that are just on them, kind of. I love it. I think it's really cool to have that, like, they need to give them some sort of texture, some kind of additional thing, which I like. Also, can we talk about these elbow pads? Like, spiky <laughs> elbow elbows pads. over here, <laughs> wearing some elbow pads. And the legs, again, leg day, guys. Leg day. Leg day with some features. You need to book more leg days in. Yeah. <laughs> Holy, the Pokemon, like, just looking at all these guys. Well, Geodude doesn't even have legs! So, no mouth, kind of no mouth, maybe a little bit of a mouth. Here we have definitely a little smile going on with Graveler. But then with Golem, not only do you have a mouth, you got teeth. Full-blown Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles over here. Reminds me a lot of that. So, like, 
huge ball. This guy should be more like an armadillo, though. Like, really it should. It does. Not in the turtle, I see it. Yeah. He So you get golem by trading graveler. So another challenging thing to do when you're a 10-year-old kid. And... He's called a megaton Pokemon. Yeah, must weigh a lot. A lot of stuff. This giant rock. A lot of poundage. Also, like, look at how, I don't know, he looks so chubby, because his, like, the way his arms and legs are coming out is hilarious. Also, like, what just happened with his evolution? It's like a rock with two arms for some reason into six arms, and then back to four arms, <laughs> and then, like, the head, I don't know, it, it's attached to him, and then all of a sudden it just pops out. Now you have a head, like, out of your body. It's just so strange. It's a little odd. The eyes, I get it. Now you have color in your eyes for some reason, but, like, I just want to roll this guy around. I just and think he looks hilarious. Attack. That it is hurts. literally... It will really hurt. Love these guys overall, but, like, I just think it's so funny if you had to sit there and design the Pokemon and be like, all right, these are evolutions. On the hands, though, and the feet... We have these little nails coming off as well that we didn't have on the other evolutions. So just look at those little differences. I am so excited to introduce some of my favorite Pokemon. Numbers 77 and 78, Ponyta and Rapidash. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of horses, and these are two of my absolute all-time favorites. So in Pokemon Shield, I've been like trying to build my own like horse party. My whole team six. as full of horses. All starting six horses. <laughs> Different horses. Different horses. Yeah, so um, I also needed Pokemon Shield and not Pokemon Sword because Pokemon Shield has Galarian Ponyta and Galarian Rapidash. And if you've seen these Pokemon, they are gorgeous. I talk about a loving Alolan Ninetales. Oh my gosh, Galarian Ponyta and Galarian Rapidash are just gorgeous. They're pink and like this, they look like cotton candy and Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I love them so much. It sounds like I need to get you plush of those <laughs> eventually, too. For sure. So let's first talk about Ponyta. So, Fire Horse Pokemon, and I don't know, just like a very cute little fire Pokemon. I love You Ponyta. love fire type Pokemon so much with Ninetales and like, you just love I those know, so much. Fire and Water have definitely been my preferred choices, that's for sure. I mean, it's such an iconic thing, Fire and Water, mm -hmm. of course. So looking at these, like the hooves are purpley, like silver gray purpley for the hooves, but the fire all over these Pokemon are really so cool. Like great idea for Pokemon. I love that it's fluffy. Um, they've definitely tried to show that it's a different, like, it's actual fire, which is what it is in the games. Yeah, so they did a really good job with the fluff here. Now, the fluff was on what other Pokemon? Venonat? And, and Primate. Arcanine had the main as well yes. for those with the fluff. So not too many of them have this, like, fluff, which is really neat. Now, I was just commenting to Ivory that these two are so similar. The main difference, though, what's the main difference here that you can just see, obviously? One's a unicorn, of course, and one isn't. <laughs> that's that's it. That's like the main thing. Also, the main, the flow. The flow Serious gets longer. Flow. The tail gets a little bit longer. But other than that, like the hooves the same. The body structure is obviously the same. The ears look a little bit similar. Just the ears on Rapidash are a bit more up. And the eyes, obviously, now are like flaming red at this point. I love Rapidash. Unique horn Pokemon. Again, a fire type Pokemon. Uh, in the Galarian Rapidash is so gorgeous and is ha, has been the one in my party for most of the game. Um, the Galarian Rapidash is psychic and fairy, and I just love that combination. And so I'm definitely again I love unicorns and horses, and I'm so obsessed with these. I love the original Ponyton Rapidash. Took till level forty to get a Rapidash, but so worth it for me. Getting a unicorn Pokemon like that was basically that's the dream. <laughs> She's a huge fan of horses. <laughs> if you didn't get that. <laughs> Loves them. So these two are really adorable. I really think they're well done, too, in terms of plush. I think if you're a fan of these, if you're a fan of the Pokemon, you're going to love the plush overall. For sure. What were the other horses in your party? Uh, so Mudsdale was, and that was a good one, too. And so I hadn't... I can't remember now. I haven't played Pokemon Shield in a in while. In so long, but I remember Mudsdale, but mm -hmm. the evolution there, too. Mudsdale is the evolution. Yeah. So what's the one before Mudsdale? I can't remember. No. I'm blanking. Chat, let me blanking. know. Blanking, help. Let us know what the one is before. Because, like, horse Pokemon, obviously, with the unicorn. Do you remember the last unicorn movie? I remember the last unicorn movie. I, I grew remember. up with sisters, so. <laughs> Great. But you love these kids. You love both of them. 
Here we have 79 and 80, slow poke and slow bro. The main difference is obviously their tails. First of all though, let's take a look at slow poke. Slow poke gets referred to as a dopey Pokemon. I mean, that makes some sense. And he's a water and psychic Pokemon. Water and psychic. He looks a little, little doof, like a little doofus, basically. A lot like, I think, Psyduck in some ways. Yeah, so this one, he's got his tail. His tail looks just normal right now. And then, oh my god, the way he evolves is actually so cool, which I love. Which, again, you see in Pokemon Snap. But first of all, this guy, he's got his little claws. Just one little claw on each of the ends of his hands and his feet. His face doesn't change a whole lot in the evolution. The main thing is his tail and his chest as well. How does he evolve? Because that's the fun part. So level 37 he evolves and he like catches a cloister on his tail and that makes him a slow bro. Or if you have a King's Rock in the later games you can hold that and when traded it'll become a slow king. So this one just looks ridiculous, especially in Pokemon Snap when you wait for the cloister. Because you have to, like, draw slow, like, slow poke closer and closer to the water at certain spots, especially by throwing apples, I think. And then eventually he'll just, like, he'll just, like, turn around, put his tail in the water, and then a cloister bites on, and then evolution happens, which is so cool to see. We don't see the evolutions happen all that often yeah. in those Pokemon Snap games. The Charizard evolution is also really cool. So then we have this. Now, there is an evolution after this as well, but that's not part of Gen 1. I think that's in another gen, obviously, later on with Slow King. Well, it's not actually a, uh, an additional evolution. It's a different evolution. So it, you can have two different versions. Yes, exactly. And that's what's really cool about this is, like, two sets of eyes. You've got the eyes, obviously, on the main Pokemon, but then you also have Cloyster's eyes just still, still kind of back there. He's just, like, biting his butt. Yep. It's so funny. His tail. And it's a new Pokemon, just because it bit his tail. I think that's hilarious. So what's interesting about Slowbro is he gets referred to as a hermit crab Pokemon. Well, I think that kind of makes sense a little. Well, I mean, that defines feature, because they do that with a lot of them. They just take one feature and say, that's it. This is your defining quality about you. Yeah, I think that's, there's a name for that. When one defining feature a takes over. A stereotype? It's, it's basically like a stereotype. <laughs> yeah. But I think there's an English term that like represents the, that as well. The iceberg model would say that there's so much below him and there's so much that we don't know. It's so deep. So deep. So deep. However, look at them face on. Originally, again, Jay had some problems with this because they do look the exact same in terms of their face. I actually want to say that Slowpoke's mouth and face looks a little bit smaller, but their eyes are like identical. Their ears look really similar and identical overall. It's just the belly is a little bit different, of course, and we got that back. 81 and 82, we have Magnemite, who evolves into Magneton. Or Magneton, I guess, depending on how you want to say it. But first up, the singular... Magnemite, the Magnet pro Pokemon. Who would have guessed? I think this is a neat idea. I do gr have a gripe with a lot of the Pokemon that are just based off of, like, non-living things. Like, I mentioned Pineco already previously. But, like, this one actually, I think it's well done. I think it's a brilliant idea with the next one, too. Even though it just looks like, again, like Dugtrio. Like, there's three of them. Cool, but we'll talk about more of that in a second. Magnemite is an electric Pokemon in the first generation, but after that he becomes an electric and steel type. So he kind of gets, oh yeah, the steel type was added in later on, so it wasn't like that originally. So we've got one giant eye on this guy, but mainly I love the magnets on the side, kind of as his arms, and then like, I don't know what to say about these. I guess they have a positive charge. This guy's pretty positive. Yeah, we're at that <laughs> point. We're at that point 80 Pokemon in. I guess that's what it's supposed to be. So then, if you can get this Pokemon to be close enough to others, then it eventually just evolves. So in Pokemon Snap, you have to like lure them close together, basically. And if you do it properly, they evolve. Well, so, interestingly, yeah, it, in the game, you just had to get it to level 30 and it would evolve. Yeah. Uh, but some of the games have given like kind of fun little ways that you can get a different Magna Zone, and so you can get it through through leveling it up in a special magnetic field or through exposing it to a thunderstone. So there, there's a lot of different ideas with this Pokemon. Game. I think thunderstone's a really cool idea and concept because obviously we have like the charge of lightning and thunder going on, which makes a lot of sense. 
And I think that's what was happening in Pokemon Snap. It was using the fields, yeah. basically, to get them together. And these ones should not technically be touching. They're kind of like, in Pokemon Snap anyways, they're hovering really near each other. But I'm not sure how they would do that with these, like, designs. Yeah. Because, like... I think you could make that work. No. If they weren't attached. So, like, the charges here, I just want to mention that this seems strange that two of the same charges are, like, beside each other. It's consistent with the game, though. It is. But I'm, like, just very... I'm very curious. Yeah. About why... Positive by side of positive, negative side of negative. Yeah. Like, if they had one of them maybe change the charges and this, like, flipped around so it was like this. Yeah. That would have been smart. That would have made more sense of like how they're attached to one another I think in terms of the design so really it is just like the same thing three times it's just the sizing doesn't work here because it had to make it a lot smaller obviously for this collection yeah so like an interesting idea again really consistent with the rest of gen 1 with the triple idea because this isn't the first time or the last time we'll see triple we're gonna see another triple coming up really really soon so like at least they were consistent with that but I don't know if I needed two evolutions for this one. It could yeah. have maybe just been a singular evolution that sometimes you see in a grouping. It would be like if a lot of Charmanders are hanging out and now all of a sudden it's named something different because there's yeah. a lot of them together. But I understand. We've got magnets. They're attracted to one another. These guys are pretty attractive overall. <laughs> oh, no. Who's that Pokemon? It's Farfetch'd! He literally gets to use something. He's holding it's just like, like a leak, isn't it? A yeah, leak? it's a leak. But he's holding something just like Alakazam and Kadabra. Mm -hmm. They both get to like actually use something, which I think is really neat. There are animals other than humans that use tools. So some birds use tools. We also have like obviously other primates like monkeys sometimes using tools. But here we have Farfetch'd holding a leak. Yeah, so Farfetch'd is referred to as the wild duck Pokemon. In the Galar region, the Galarian Farfetch'd actually gets to evolve into Surfetch'd, which was a pretty hilarious rendition, I thought. Surfetch'd looks hilarious, too. <laughs> and can we mention, I think this is the first one in Gen 1 who's a single. Yeah. He's no evolutions in Generation 1, but you did mention later on he evolves. Yeah, so which... it took to number 83 to have a single here. So I think, like, that's kind of... I'm really curious as how they went that, with that design, because for so long they had triples... And then a lot of doubles happened. And then all of a sudden, now we're about to hit a lot of singles, especially in the latter third of all of the Pokemon. So what's it say about Farfetch'd otherwise? Uh, so Farfetch'd is a normal and flying type Pokemon, yet I don't know if I've ever seen Farfetch'd fly. I no, feel like it's like walks around a lot. Walks around. But Almost reminds me of a penguin in that way, yeah. where like maybe some of them fly, but you don't often see them fly very often. Mm -hmm. No, I like this guy's eyebrow. He's got the brow. The brow would be his nickname. He also has a ridiculously cool beak overall. I think he looks like, I don't know, he looks way more with it than Psyduck in terms of this kind of Pokemon. Is Psyduck, Psyduck's also obviously a duck. What did you say this guy was? A wild duck. A wild duck. Hugely duck. Look at the wild nature of his eyebrows. <laughs> That's the main thing. Oh, he right. does have wings, but they're attached right at his side. And the leak. I like how the leak has a, like, look at that change in color from the top to the bottom. It's like a gradient. Yeah, that is cool. They did a nice color gradient I mean, it, on it that. It is true to the, the game. Yes. So at least they paid attention to that detail. And I do like his hair. His hair is kind of up. He's got that little thing going on overall. Cool little Pokemon. The first one that's been a single this whole time. 84 and 85. We have Dodrio. We have Doduo. <laughs> Doduo and Dotrio. Yeah. But it's not Dotrio. It's, it's Dodrio, Dodrio. Which a lot of people make a mistake. Because it's supposed yeah. to be a triple. But it's not spelt like that. So again... Common consistent bird. We just had a bird, bird type, which was a duck type. But I mentioned the double triples here. So here we have two heads to three heads. What a cool difference. But let's first take a look at the basic type, the first type. So Doduo is Not a basic. twin bird. Twin bird. And so it's a normal and flying type. I can really tell that a Doduo would fly with those wings that it has yep. on its body. Yep, this is a ball with two heads, and maybe its heads are its wings, maybe its feet are its wings, maybe it can just levitate. Perhaps. That's all it's doing, is just levitating. I don't know, it looks like an ostrich to me, and ostriches don't fly. And I want to mention that this is not the same fabric as the other ones have been. Like, the feet are, but this is fluffy, but not as fluffy as the others. Yeah. So it's, it's not as fluffy as Arcanine. For sure. Different level of fluff. Both heads are identical, two eyes, big beak, 
It's got four toes with these little spikes for its nails here. And like, yeah, where are the wings? Pokemon, wings. where are the wings? This is a dual bird Pokemon that is a ball with no wings. Yep. Makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. So then we go from duo, Doduo, to Dodrio, yes. because, you know, they couldn't make it a trio like the other ones that are triples. So, hey, three heads. Better than two. As you can imagine, they refer to this as the triple bird Pokemon. Crazy. Who would have thought? Shocking. Where did that and come again, from? again, referred to as a normal and flying type Pokemon, still looking for those wings. Now, at least it can angle its flight. It has a tail. It least. can go up and down in flight, at it's least. It's a little pinker than I would have thought. I like the gradient, Dodrio, though. Doduo, sorry, Dodrio has. Those aren't my eyes playing tricks on me. That's literally a gradient yeah, for the pink. I like that's that. That's consistent. I think it's supposed to be red, though, I thought. Oh, I think they might have not had as many colors in the original game. I'm not sure if... I think the more recent games make it pink, but I'm not okay, sure. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe not. Maybe that is red. Maybe at the base so it's supposed to be red. So it evolves at level 31. 31. Yeah. Now, the heads. I just want to mention this. They're very solid. And actually, when I started... Like, they're solid. There is some solid material in its neck. So, like, this is the only one so far that has that. It literally feels like there's plastic covered in fabric which is the first time in this series for Pokemon fit or sitting cuties that it's had it, which does hold its heads up, which is quite nice. Also, are these eyebrows? Is this hair? If you want them to be. I think it's whatever you want it to be. All three heads are identical. We do have a black on the bottom, and I like the tufts for hair, but again, where are its wings? How is this a bird? How is this? Well, I mean, it looks well, like a bird. It, how is it flying? You know what I mean? Like ostrich. It cannot be a flying type. Looks a lot like an ostrich to me, but it still doesn't have any wings. Like, how do you make a bird Pokemon with no wings? Well, you can just, you can't refer to it as a flying type. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> flying, fl flying, flying type. Also, I just think these faces look so like they don't know what's going on. And these <laughs> ones look pissed and very intelligent, or at least some of them do. Do they really change? I never noticed this. Am I seriously talking about their eyes like this? But I am. Can we just comment about this for a second? Look at the eyes on the left too. And then like this one didn't get all the genes in the gene pool. The eyes are totally different. Ivory, oh, can you look at these? That's pretty consistent actually with the picture here. Has the two left ones are like angry and the far right one is like, what's going on? Can, can we like talk about this for a second? Has <laughs> anyone else noticed this? Like, triangles for eyes that look like they're intelligent know what's going on, and this one's just, like, very content with yeah, life. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That is so cool how it's, like, the one on the... I wonder if they were all three different, I would have liked it more. Yeah. If they all had different yeah, eyes. it's weird that, like, two have the same personality and one has a different personality. I feel like the left two are going to bully the right one. Yeah. That's not very nice. So I also want to mention that the original had, you know, its four, <laughs> t like, toes... But then, like, one toe just morphs into the back of its foot. <laughs> of course. So, like, that makes sense. Sure. Let's just put the nail... Oh, it's down here now. It evolved. Perfect. Totally different. Evolution. Duo to trio. Makes perfect sense. 86 and 87, we've got Seal and Dugong. I always pronounced Dugong completely wrong as a kid. I, for some reason, pronounced it as Dugong. Like, I added an extra letter in there for no reason. So first of all, let's take a look at Seal, which I feel like should be the second evolution, not the first evolution, personally. I feel like there's more going on with this design than the other one, but we'll get to that. I think Dugong's meant to be more elegant. Like, this is like the little kid Pokemon, right? Like, he's got his tongue out, he's ready to play, he's a little sea lion, and he wants to have fun. So I completely see that. Now, my argument would be the... First of all, the teeth get smaller after the evolution. I think Dugong just gets bigger and they can't represent that right I now. guess that might be true. Also, <laughs> the tail, like two tails here, but then Dugong only has one giant one, which is like, I don't know. I feel like if you evolve, maybe you evolve another tail. And also the eyes. I feel like the eyes are way more expressive in the first one, but probably to represent that childlike right. whimsy. Yeah. So I always looked at this the opposite of you. So, Seal is a water-type Pokemon and evolves at level 34 into Dugong. And I also feel like Seal has a little bit of a blue tinge. Yeah. Slightly blue, but this one is not the ice type. No, Dugong actually is a water-slash-ice type, and according to Bulbas Bulbapedia, it says that it was an ice type even in Gen 1. Water ice. So even in Gen 1, this is a water ice type. Now this one to me would look exactly like almost like a Thai Beanie Baby. Like if I saw this one on someone's shelf, I might not be able to represent it or notify or like see it as a Pokemon right away, basically. 
just looks like a sea lion. It looks perfectly like a sea lion. With a horn on top. A little horn on top, by the way. The horn got smaller, so don't know what happened yeah. there. Dugong got bigger. But again, it's supposed to be a lot bigger. It's just represented here as the smaller plush to make them fit. Also, I feel like it's more white. It is more elegant, as you said. And that tail, that beautiful tail is now one large piece. Classy. It like it fused together in age. Dugong and Persian should hang out. <laughs> <laughs> classy cat and classy sea lion. Yeah, and I'm just, I just think it's funny that its mouth is smaller and everything. So I almost feel like these should be reversed this way. I might commonly mix those up. But yeah, it's like this. These two Pokemon, there's not that many Pokemon that are predominantly white. We'll have Voltorb and Electrode coming up that are like half like that, but there's not that many. These are like the only ones that are predominantly white Pokemon overall, and I think she is classier. I think you've convinced me. Whimsy, childlike, classy adult. 88 and 89, we have Grimer and Muck. Slight variations in purple and slight variations in their eyes. But let's first take a look at Grimer. So Grimer is a sludge Pokemon, and in the original game is just a poison type. So this is one where, like, I don't know, I feel like Gardevoir, is Gardevoir? No, Gardevoir is a beautiful Pokemon, isn't it? What's yeah. the one that's the garbage Pokemon? Oh, yeah. There's I can't remember. literally a garbage type Pokemon. Yeah, this falls in that category. Because this is like a sludge Pokemon. I'm not a huge fan of these ones compared to all the other Pokemon in Gen 1. These ones personally would be probably amongst my bottom tier because I just feel like they're a bit like plain in terms of their design. So Grimer, he has a tongue that almost looks like a heart. Look at that right there. It looks a little bit like a heart, even it's pink like a heart. And then overall, this one's just a little bit more plain than I would have liked. But yeah, it's a sludge type Pokemon, yeah. right? So then in evolution, we got its eyes just looking there with its little pupils. But in evolution, over to Muck. Muck! One of the main changes is its eye type. It's no longer a circle, it's like these pointy little ones. And its tongue, it's no longer loving life. It's just like a normal tongue now overall. Level 38, you get to go to Muck. And he's that takes a while. still a sludge Pokemon. Uh, you don't catch a Grimer from No. Him. In Pokemon Snap. You have Grimer, and then you have to hit them enough, I think, with Pester Balls in order to evolve them into Muck. What I really like about this plush here, though, is that because it's a Sludge Pokemon, look at right here how they attach that. I like that little touch. That looks really cool overall. Because really, we're just talking about two purple Sludge Piles. So the Alolan Muck is way cooler looking. It's a rainbow-colored one, and it's way more awesome than the double purple here. Rainbow colored like sludge, sludge. overall. Yeah. So I can appreciate that but otherwise there's not a lot to analyze with these ones. I'm not sure how many like oh my favorite Pokemon is Muck but if it is let me know because I need to find a person like that. <laughs> Another set of two from the sea. This is 90 and 91. We have Shelder and Cloyster. I like the evolution pattern of these, and I also like how this is only two. I don't think we need to have a third one of these ones. So first of all, let's take a look at Shelder. Shelder's a bivalve Pokemon? Bivalve Pokemon. That's what it says. I'm learning something new every day. It's a water Pokemon. I would not have guessed that. I mean, I would have called it a clam. Yeah, clam. Clam Pokemon would have made more sense. <laughs> We had, obviously, earlier in the generation, one that was basically like a shell Pokemon as well. Paris and Parasect, we thought they were like crab Pokemon. Yeah, so I feel like they're kind of naming these, sometimes a little strange, maybe in the translation error and everything. You know what's great about Shelder? Is obviously the tongue and the eyes. Very defining characteristics of this guy. Look at that tongue just sticking out at you. But more importantly right now, I don't know why this amuses me so much. I've never seen him differently. <laughs> Almost reminds me of Ghastly when I do this. Yeah. Look, it will stay up, by the way, Put like that back. if you really want. Yeah, it looks weird. It it's looks supposed to be weird. like that. Yeah. So he does have, like, these coming out. I'm not sure if I want to call them ears or, like, I'm not sure what these are. They're not tentacles either. But there's four of them. And a giant tongue. And then on the back, we've got whatever this is going on. Yeah, and it's a giant clam. It's a giant clam. It just literally looks like a giant clam that's a different color. And then eventually evolves into Cloyster. Gl Cloyster is actually only achieved through a water stone. So you have to use a water stone to evolve this. And it grows one giant horn, but then several others, obviously, all over its body. And it still has that clam-like part of the back. 
The face, though, on this one, like, at least this one's having a good time. It does, again, remind me of Ghastly a little bit in terms of the face, but, like, I don't know. I just love the teeth and the eyes, especially over this facial, like, expression. I like a lot more Cloyster, and I think these ones make sense in terms of the evolutionary pattern. Again, not my preferred top, like, top 50, probably in my bottom, like, 30 in terms of Pokemon, personally. Let me know where you would put these. For the first gen, I mean... For the first gen, yeah. So... Interestingly, I googled what a bivalve is, and it's an aquatic mollusk. So it's a mollusk. type of it's like a a type of clam. That makes sense. Mollusks are clams overall. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. But again, they're not in my top thirty. They're not in my top hundred. They're probably <laughs> in my bottom thirty in these one hundred and fifty one uh, Pokemon. Personally, that's yeah. where I would put them. But and Cloyster's another one that's a water and ice type Pokemon. Really, he's water and ice. Yeah. Cloyster, Cloyster is. Cloyster. Shelder's just water. That makes sense. 92, 93, and 94, we have Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar stuff of nightmares here. Nightmares. Yeah, uh, Ghastly is a gas Pokemon. Who would have guessed? Shocking. And is a ghost poison Pokemon, and that started in Generation 1. Wow. And this one, it has... So this one's a like black Pokemon with a lot of purple all around it, kind of representing like the gas that would be flowing around its body, I think. But I love the eyes. The eyes here, uh, by the way, first time we've had this type of material. This almost feels like vinyl. It feels like cardboard meets vinyl, by the way. Very different for its eyes. It even has this bright pink kind of detail work on it. And it has teeth, of course, right here with its giant open mouth. So this one overall looks gassy. Definitely looks gassy, looks like ghastly. I completely get it, I do. There's so many purple Pokemon in Gen 1. We just had Muck and Grimer. We also had Cloyster, of course, and Shelder, which were purple. You have the Nidoran, entire male, female. You have Ekans and Arbok. There's so much purple Coffee in Gen 1. Coughing and wheezing, lots of purple. You could probably argue that Mewtwo is purple. I think they are, or shades of pink yeah. as well. Okay, so what happens after Ghastly? Because then we turn into... Haunter, Haunter. level 25. Now, interesting to go from gas to, like, haunting. Now, it does still say he's a gas Pokemon. He is still a gas Pokemon, but it's definitely more haunting. Now we have these hands that are growing out, we have a tail that's growing out, and he's predominantly entirely purple, other than his mouth and his eyes. Now, this is a scary ghost. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of haunting stuff of nightmares. I think Gengar is like a whole different level. A whole different level of scare. So how do you evolve and when do you evolve? Uh, so you evolve through trading Haunter, and that's how you get a Gengar. So let's trade it in, and now this is like the real stuff of nightmares oh, to me. And if you've seen Gigantamax Gengar, that is haunting. Yeah, Gigantamax, <laughs> he gets so much, like, way more definition, too. Now, they refer to Gengar as a shadow Pokemon rather than a gas Pokemon. So now he's a shadow. He's no longer gas. That's kind of cool. Look at this grin, and now the eyes are, like, so evil. menacingly, evilly just, red. Just terrifying. And also, we get all these, like, spikes on its back, and this one reminds me more of, like, a nightmare monster, of course. Highly sought-after Pokemon. On, though. Yes, it was strong. Great to get a Gengar. Yeah, strong Pokemon to have in your party. Not as great. I don't use this one as often though. As like, I don't know. I feel like I use Alakazam more. Like some other Pokemon like that, like Charizard and the main three, like starters. I use Gengar pretty often. But Gengar's know, really popular. I know Jordan really likes Gengar too. Oh, Gengar is incredibly strong if you know what you're doing in the Pokemon franchise. But like, I just think this is such a cool like trilogy. Like, I don't know what it is about this. That I don't mind these at all, but again, they're based off gas. They're not based off of like living things, but it's stuff of nightmares yeah. and dreams, which I think is really interesting. At 95, solo artist presenting Onyx, who is nowhere near as big as he should be, but they did a really good job representing him with the Pokemon fit and sitting cuties here. So Onyx is a rock snake Pokemon and is a rock ground type. What always depressed me is in the card game, this was not a very high HP strong. And like, this is one of the biggest Pokemon of Gen 1. It's made of rocks. I don't understand why it wasn't stronger in the card game. I mean, but when you think about the, the show, right? Brock has... Onyx, Onyx, yep. And you beat him pretty easily. Well, I mean, it takes a little bit to get there. Because right. isn't it with the rain? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure it's with Rain with Pikachu, and that's what, like, helps out. Because, like, he is basically just coiling and strangling Ash's Pokemon at the time. 
But like, really cool idea, rock, snake, but giants. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. And this one does eventually evolve. Yeah, Steelix, if you have a metal coat. Yeah. But not in Gen 1. But not in Gen 1. So I don't mind Onyx at all. I think it's a little bit plain, but I think it's even better in the game, and I think it's better, obviously, in the show, when it's actually gigantic. But they did a good job of bringing this down to scale to all the other Pokemon. It is attached at one point here on its body, and the tail for me, for some reason, obviously does remind me a lot of a snake and, like, that rattlesnake mechanic that we've had previously. And we had, what, Ekans Arbok. and Arbok, of course. Of course. Cool kind of face, got that little spike on his head, and he's got that face that just looks like, I don't know, he looks a little wise. I imagine Onyx to be a really old Pokemon made of rock. Of course. Ancient. Introducing 96 and 97, we have Drowsy and Hypno. Again, great names for something that's psychic. Yes, they're technically a Hypnosis Pokemon, and yes, they're a psychic type. Now I'm wondering, is this based off of an animal? Because I get a little bit of anteater out of this. I get a little bit of, like, elephant with that nose. I see that. Totally. Yeah, I think anteater would be a good representation of this. But I like how this body, like, two-tone. Two-tone body, a lot like Electrode, of course, as well. We got brown on the bottom, yellow on top. I just think his face, like, I don't know. He looks like he's about to fall asleep, literally, because his name is Drowsy. And he puts you to sleep, though, as part of he his attacks. Sure does. All the time. Very annoying. Now we got the ears here, look really similar to his when he evolves into Hypno as well. And the eyes are just like, I don't know, you're falling asleep. We have this little stitch work here as well. And the hands, we got three little fingers on each hand. And look at those little pads on the feet. Cute little drowsy. So you evolve drowsy. Level 26, you get Hypno. So you get Hypno, but Hypno, by the way, is holding something. It's using a tool, just like Alkazam, which I kind of think is cool. Yeah, that's a neat little feature. For I'm you. not sure what this is called. I don't know. It's like it's on like, a... It's like a metronome almost, Yeah, right? it's like a metronome, because sure the other one puts right you to word. sleep. Now, the, the nose is completely changed into almost looking like a beak, and let's talk about this turtleneck. Let's talk about this, like, so scarf. So floofy. So floofy. This is, again, that really soft material that we had in Venonat. And the rest of it, though, is just plain yellow. So it really does look like an evolution of this previous gentleman or girl that we have over here. Mm -hmm. But the nose, we lose, like, all that detail work, and the eyes still look the same. Still looks like it's going to put you to sleep with that metronome. Yeah. And I assume, like, the, yeah, he swings it back and forth and back and forth. But I, I like these using some tools... It's Just like Farfetch. Neat idea. Perfect. Just like Alkazam. And Kadabra. They look pretty cute overall. Did you use these in your party? I, I really like Drowsy and Hypno. Yeah, they, they regularly pop in and out of my party. Especially when you can put other Pokemon to sleep. Yeah, it's, it's a nice little feature and I enjoyed them. I think it works. Yeah. 98 and 99, we've got crabs. Krabby and Kingler. <laughs> Okay, so we finally found the crabs after we were complaining about Paris and Parasect being mushroom Pokemon. Why aren't these guys mushroom Pokemon? Krabby's referred to as a river crab Pokemon. That makes a lot of sense. These ones are perfectly crabs. Like, a, look at like everything sure, about them. Everything about it. Uh, water type Pokemon, of course. And you know what? I, I really liked Krabby when I was, I was uh, growing up. He was a, just a cute little Pokemon to have around and... It was fun to like try and challenge him to level up for sure. Um, what's awesome in like Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee is like you can see these crabbies like wandering around in the wild and and they're super cute. <laughs> I think like I don't, just look at the bottom of this. Like it really does remind me of what a crab would look like. The orange obviously is a little bit more like defined. I like it though. The eyes like I'm not sure what to call these below. Like tusks. Like, they're not tusks. They kind of look like tusks. Like. When they eat, obviously, but it has no mouth. Like, both of them have no mouth, which is, like, a little disturbing in some way. I'm sure it's there. And we have, like, two little horns, I want to call it. But eventually, Krabby, with its six legs, it will evolve. By the way, look at its pincers are the same size in Krabby. But then, we have Kingler. Level 28, you get a Kingler. And I just want everyone to know that in Let's Go Eevee, I have a shiny Kingler. And he is so awesome. What color? Slightly I, different. Yeah, slightly different. Yeah. I think like gold is what it is. It's a gold. That's what it is. Gold Kingler. It, it's pretty cool looking. And uh, yeah, as far as like brags go, that was uh, found in the wild. Pretty impressed. 
the probability is very low. very low. So here, what I was mentioning previously, we do have one of them a lot larger than the other. So I did mention that previously with, was it Parasects? Yeah. I think I was mentioning that one with. So here, that's exactly what happens in nature. They have one dominant one that's a lot larger than the other one. Also, it looks one, like we have like one six. One gets jacked. Yeah, one just gets <laughs> jacked. It's true in nature. So then also we have like more, I guess, of these and way more spikes at the top. So king, it almost looks like it has a crown with these. It does. A little bit more, like a prince he, and then a king. He is referred to as the pincer Pokemon. Not pincer himself. Correct. And is a water Pokemon again. Wait a second. The pincer Pokemon? This guy has something to say about that. We'll get to him <laughs> later. I hope he's a pincer Pokemon. Yeah. Too. We'll find out. Otherwise, these look remarkably similar. It's just obviously that much larger one on the one side that, you know, it's grabber. What do you call this? A claw. A claw? <laughs> Is this called a claw? The creature is called a claw. And then these are called limbs or legs, I guess, legs. otherwise. So it's got a claw and it's got its king for Grass Kingler. Legs. And it's pincer because, you know, it likes to take names from other Pokemon. <laughs> what an impersonator. <laughs> We're finally at 100, but these guys are not in my top 100. Nope. 100 and 101. I think in this order, we have Voltorb and we have Electrode. Correct. They look like Pokeballs. They're as if, okay, one Pokeball Pokemon would have been enough. Yep. Why do I have two Pokeball Pokemon? And the difference is what you just showed us, flipping it upside down. Nope, the mouth. You just flipped it upside down. I just did. <laughs> now... So, the ref Voltorb is referred to as a ball Pokemon. I'm sorry, what? A ball Pokemon. And it's funny how this is not a ball. Like, no, this is very, very squished. Very not a they ball. They could have made this a bit more ball, like, uh, I don't know, more round? Maybe it's supposed to be. It's just like, I don't know, with weight. Weight and gravity. Well, and it's referred to as an electric Pokemon, and I understand, like, it is electric in the game. But why is it a ball electric. Well, Pokeball has some electric, like, it, it has some sort of magical electric, you know what I mean? Like when you go to catch technology. it and, like, the light eventually goes off, there's some technology in Pokeballs, obviously. So I, I get it. I get it. It's electric I, Pokemon. I definitely did not need two of nope. the same Pokemon. Nope. I think it's hilarious that they just flipped it. And then, so, Voltorb will evolve into Electrode. Level 30, you get another ball Pokemon! Yeah, but look, it flipped. Oh. And it gained oh. a mouth. Oh! Look at the mouth! And it lost its really defined eyes and got smaller eyebrows. <laughs> What's going on here? Why did I need two of these? So I'm, again, not a fan of Pokemon based off of objects. And so, like, these ones definitely in my bottom ten. Yeah, it's like the Keys Pokemon. I can't remember what that one's called, but the one that's the Keys, I don't understand. No. I don't need a... Ice cream, though? Keys. Not bad. Ice well, cream? A little bit better. I can deal with. More yeah. delicious. And, like, I just... These are in my bottom ten of Generation 1. Let me know where you would put these ones. I think this one explodes way too often as well, obviously. Oh, Pokemon Snap. Every time. Yeah. So, like, overall, not great. Not great for these two, but hey, we're at 100. And what a terrible attack. Self destruct. You've just killed yourself. <laughs> it's just what? the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> Why would you do that? Was it worth it? I mean, in the po in the trading card game, it can be worth it to take down a stronger Pokemon. So, like, I understand where that's coming from. And to have a self destruct, like, I, I kind of understand that feature. But, like, literally, I don't know. You're right. We don't need two of these. We didn't need one. Speaking of things that aren't alive quite yet, I guess, we have Execute and Executor or Executor or Ex... How do you say it? Executor? Executor. No Sounds idea. good. <laughs> it's probably Executor. <laughs> so, first of all, why not one egg when you can have half a dozen? <laughs> They're pink. Okay, I gotta be honest, that one in front right now is my favorite. With his his head popped off. He's got some yolk. You can tell that he is almost evolving. <laughs> I'm evolving, so like, <laughs> what I like about these is that they're all different faces. Like, I do I appreciate this. That is cool. Like, slightly different. So Did, slightly different faces on each of them. So we went from this guy's got a battle ball scar. Pokemon to egg Pokemon. And of course, why would you only need one egg? We already had two one balls. Let's have six eggs. They all have a various degree of cracking, too. And, like, the one that's opened already has, like, no crack on it. And this guy's got no crack on it. These guys crack me up. Okay, so eventually... <laughs> crack me up. So eventually these evolve. So they only evolve into an executor if you have a leaf stone. Leaf stone. A leaf stone. Because, of course, this looks like a grass psychic Pokemon, doesn't it? 
I really gotta think about it. That's what makes it psychic. Okay, it evolves into Executor. And what's hilarious is this says that it has chlorophyll. Oh, good. <laughs> By the way, it only has three heads. Half of our eggs didn't make it. Oh, that's rough. That's sad. So this, and I love, so we go from an egg Pokemon to a coconut Pokemon. <sighs> that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. The logic of Pokemon is what we're arguing about at this point. So it's fine. It's fine. Also, a this grass, guy's a beast. A grass psychic Pokemon. I gotta admit, I think Executor looks pretty sweet here. Isn't there the Alolan version of oh, this? Oh, the Alolan, Alolan version is so tall. It's neck. It's it's literally a coconut tree. It's a giraffe meets a coconut yeah, tree. It's awesome. Or like a bronchiosaurus. But like brilliant design. So like we got like these little bear paw feet basically. It looks like bear paw feet. Also, giant trunk of a palm tree, I want to say, <laughs> basically. And then like coconut tree. Is it coconut tree? A coconut tree. Coconut, is that even a tree? It's called the coconut tree? Isn't it? I don't even Is know. Palm, palm tree? tree? Palm tree. <laughs> We're losing it, people. So then we have like this hair, this wonderful grass hair. Another Pokemon had hair Oddish. just like this, which was Oddish. Oddish. But this one has way more of it. So great hairstyle. All three faces, though, not the same. Again, left two faces look very similar to me. I think the eyes are what's different. So the eyes here are Crescent Moon's down, and the eyes here are Crescent Moon's kind of up. And then there's the last one. The last one's like just having a good time over here on just the side. Along for the ride. On his own. So again, like that's really similar to what we had with so, Dudrio? No. No, those were all the no, same, Do I think. Dodrio. Dodrio, yes, yeah. yes, not Dodrio. Yeah. But yeah, the now, one I'm facing curious, the side. Can we identify which eggs from Exe Execute became Executor? Like nope. do do they have oh, the oh, same eyes? There's there's similar eyes. So this one might be the middle one. Okay. 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 Nope. They're all triangles otherwise, and these and ones are not trying. Nope. One guy made it, and he multiplied three times. <laughs> this so guy. That's the one that evolved. He's the one who turns into coconuts. <laughs> the rest of them turn into an omelet. Oh. That's probably what ends up happening. That's rough. Yeah. So those, you know, again, not my favorite for, uh, not my favorite for execute. But better, honestly. Better than Voltorb and Electro. Yeah, I'd probably still put these guys bottom ten for me in Gen One though, personally. Just, just them. Just the six pack. The six pack for sure. Yeah. Executor's got some things going for him. He does, but the Alolan version is amazing. Amazing. 104 and 105 are Cubone and Marowak, looking so similar that I was missing one forever. And we couldn't figure out basically if it was Marowak or Cubone because, as a reminder, the Pokemon fit are written in Japanese, so we just couldn't tell. Anyways, this one is, oh, this one is a Sitting Cuties right here. So this is what the tag will look like for Sitting Cuties with Cubone. It was the last one I had to get to complete this set of 151. So first up, let's take a look at Cubone. This one's a disturbing Pokemon. Poor Cubone. He gets such a bad rap. He deserves a bad rap. His name, his description is Lonely Pokemon. And in the game, he is lonely. It's so sad. His, His mom. mom has died. It's so depressing. So, like, the original story of this, correct me if I'm wrong, which is sad, he is wearing the skull of his deceased mother. That was the, like, original thing that I remember all my friends talking about when we were growing up. And it was like, that's pretty dark. It's quite morbid. It's very morbid for a children's story and everything. He's got a bone that he uses, again, as a weapon, which I think is kind of neat when they have this. But, like, I wonder what his head looks like. And, like, Pokemon would be against, like, if you remove his hat helmet, is it a different Pokemon? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. They could. I'm not sure if there is a baby type of this, eventually, or anything like that. I don't that. think so. Uh, but it evolves at level 28 into Marowak. Now, Marowak looks so similar. Look at these two. I wish they did something more different. Completely like, different. What are you talking about? Look at that. I mean, the eyes are, like, maybe slightly different. The eyes do look different. I'll give you that. There's, you know, the eyes, like the actually, owl, the eye color here is brown. The eye color here is black, but there's some brown around it. Also, the nostrils. Can we talk about that huge difference? Huge difference. Huge. He closed up his nostrils over time. He realized just too many issues. Hold, hold it in. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> The weapon is the same, so he, like I think it looks very similar. Oh, it's not! It is not! The weapon is different! Can we talk about this for a second? <laughs> this looks more like a bone! Both sides! Real Whoa. bone! Not, not both sides. Only one side. Half of the bone. Who would have known? So, 
the Alolan Marowak is actually pretty cool, and he carry his bone that he carries is like flaming on both sides, which is pretty neat. That's actually really neat that they changed that. Okay, let's just take a look at the tail because the tail in the back does change. Spikes on Cubone, only one spike on the tail on Marowak. So that's another way how you can tell the difference. So the tags again, just to compare the two, right here. Those are the two different tags. So this one you'll get in North America, ages four and up. This one you'll get from Japan. In Canada too, you'll get this one on the left and the rest of North America, Which I believe. Is 30 plus? 30 plus, yeah, it's gotta be 30 plus, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense whatsoever. I think it's funny how they have the hashtag oh, my151. Interestingly, we're, uh, Cubone is the lonely Pokemon, Marowak is the bone keeper Pokemon. The bone keeper Pokemon, mm -hmm. that's also terrifying. I don't mind these, but I wonder what animal they are underneath this, underneath it all. Underneath it all. Nope, nope. Also, <laughs> on the stomach, uh, this one has a seam here, but it looks like it's supposed to be all one continuous thing. This guy's either got abs or he's got different sections on like his stomach, he's basically. He's just a dinosaur. Because Maybe he's just dinosaurs. a dinosaur. That would make sense if they're just dinosaurs. It doesn't say like the type, it just says obviously bone. Bone keeper. Bone keeper, Pokemon. Bone keeper Pokemon. So here we have Cubone and Marowak. 106 and 107 actually modeled and named after humans. We have Hitmon Lee and Hitmon Chan. Now they're not evolutions of one another, but you have a story behind that as well. Well, so they both evolve in the later games uh, from the same Pokemon, Ty Rogue. And like at level 20, they evolve depending on, I think, if they're male or female, because I'm pretty sure that all Hitmon Lees are male and all Hitmon Chans are female. I feel like Jackie Chan would be upset. But I'm not 100% sure on that. So we have Bruce Lee and, of or course... Maybe they're actually both male. They're both male. They both they should be male, obviously, for right. Himmo Lee and Himmo Chan. So we got Bruce Lee and we have Jackie Chan is who they're actually named after. This is not the first time Nintendo's named characters off of popular figures. If you think of the Koopa Kids, many of them are named after actual musicians for the Koopa Kids from Bowser's Children. So that's kind of interesting that these are named off of really popular icons, especially popular icons in like karate and action films from back then. So first of all, they let's do take add a look. They one more in the, uh, in the later games too, yeah. called Hitmontop. Hitmontop, yes. So first of all, let's take a look at Hitmonlee. Hitmonlee is a kicking Pokemon, as you can tell. Makes sense. It's very long legs. Yeah. And it's a fighting Pokemon. So the focus here is obviously on kicking, which the focus there is like boxing and punching, yes. which makes some sense. I don't mind because they had a fighting type, so they wanted to add like more Pokemon maybe to the fighting type, or they already had these that they thought of, because these were originally fighting type. Do they have a second type? I they're feel just, like they're just fighting. They're just fighting. So this guy kicks a lot. I also think it's amusing how if you look at his body when you peel away his arms, there's no defining features other than his eyes. He's just got eyes, no nose, no mouth, no tail, just a human. Just a human with no face, basically. And like these rings around his legs, around his arms. All right, so next up, let's take a look at Hitmon Lee. Hitmon Chan. Hitmon Chan, I mix them up. Hitmon Chan's more of a puncher. He's wearing gloves. He's literally wearing boxing gloves. And also, can we talk about his tutu? His or her tutu? Are we sure this isn't all? All male. Um, I appreciate this, this like, this is a, a great representation of a punching Pokemon. I love the shoulder cuffs. Very inclusive. I like it. Very huge shoulder cuffs. Again, wearing, wearing like an outfit. Like for sure it looks like this is wearing an outfit and that this is a skirt. In some sort, it looks like a skirt. Fighting skirt, of course. We have like pink purple boots that match what it's wearing basically. And I feel like that's a belt. Looks a little bit like a belt, but the gloves, the definitive boxing gloves, the hair that just spiked up. I think that's hilarious. And the fact that these are named after humans. I just think that's so strange and peculiar. I wonder what they're named. They must be named the same way in Japan. They must be named after the real people. Yeah. So again, we have the first version that they evolve into these at level 20 is called... Ty Rogue. Ty Rogue. And then we also have Hitmon Top as like a third one of these three. Mm -hmm. But again, these are not evolutions of one another. No. Um, I mean, you could only get one in the game, and I think I usually picked Hitmonchan. And then the other one you had to trade in order to complete your Pokedex. Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. Introducing number 108, this is Lickitung, who does eventually evolve in Next Generations. So this one is Giant Tongue, obviously. Is this just literally named a tongue type, or is it named a bill type? It's called the Licking Pokemon. It's called a Licking Pokemon. <laughs> 
Uh, so Lickitung is a normal type Pokemon. I feel like it's like a, a dinosaur meets tadpole kind of Pokemon. Yeah, I could agree with that. It's got the markings there on its belly. It also has these like circle gold on its like legs. And it also has like little paws right here, or I want to call them, what are they called on cats when they have those pads? Like pads the little pads. But the tongue is just everything here. I like to call them toe beans. Toe beans. Yeah. <laughs> nice jelly beans. The tail is obviously, like the tail is huge. It is attached right here. Another pink Pokemon. So many pink Pokemon. But I just, I think that's, like the, the tongue's hilarious. The tongue's just everything. What does this eventually evolve into? Licky Licky. Licky Licky. Wow, creative name. Let's just say it twice. <laughs> Overall. I like it. Um, so to get like a tongue, you had to in the game like go up during the right time, like at the right uh, like moment moment in a building, and you had to go up and you could trade for a lick a tongue, and that was the only way to get it. I'm pretty sure you it's could related not catch to Psyduck. It in the wild, it must be related to Psyduck. Obviously, look at that tongue slash beak. When your defining characteristic is constantly falling out of your mouth to uh, attack others, hilarious. <laughs> What was its main attacks? Uh, rollout, I think? Rollout. Here we have 109 and 110. This is coughing and wheezing. The only reason why I like these is because of the show. They're in the show, they're with Team Rocket a lot. Coffee. Coffee. And that's the other reason. Anytime any of my friends want to drink coffee, I feel like <laughs> they have to say it like that, like coffee. Because like you're upset and you obviously want to wake up with some coffee, I guess, so. First of all, let's take a look at coughing, and then we'll take a look at wheezing. Coughing is the poison gas Pokemon, and as you probably guessed, is a po poison type. I don't know how you could tell that with the symbol literally, it literally on its stomach. When it comes to women, it's right there for you. <laughs> the, the cross, the cross, <laughs> right there. Uh, I just, I love its like. I want to call them arms. Like the two of these at the front always remind me of arms, but they're not because it has it all over. But I always picture it as like, oh, come give me a hug, and then like it's poisonous and it'll like kill you because he looks so pleasant. Like he looks like he's having a good time and he's so happy and so pleasant. And then he evolves. Level thirty-five. And like doubles because like, you know a lot of Pokemon then they double or triple. But look at how like this guy's not having a good time anymore. If you've seen Galarian wheezing though. Now they are not He's having a good time. wearing like a top hat. The epitome of smog. Isn't he wearing a top hat and he's got like a yeah. pipe yeah. and everything going on? It's, but it's quite depressing. It reminds me of just, yeah, like the industrialization of the world and how there's so much pollution. Oh, that's really good. Basically, like symbolism going on with that Pokemon, which yeah. makes sense. We have the huge symbol here, but then like, is this guy fine or like moderately fine? I don't know. Like what's going on with the symbol? Is, is this he like growing off of his like, and then is this like, a third one? I don't know what's going on there. This is the third failed growth <laughs> that like didn't work out because like so of sad. bad pollution, right? It just know. didn't, maybe this is, I'm not even sure if that's a tumor or what's going on with that. Obviously the shades change, so we go from a, I don't know, like a brighter purple to like a much lesser bright purple, almost a pink color. And the eye, like the eyes are being glazed over a little bit, the eyebrows are coming down, and like I said, we got that, we got that growth going on. <laughs> Really strange Pokemon overall. Really Again, strange Pokemon. I only respect these because they're in the show so predominantly with Team Rocket. Otherwise, they're in my bottom 10. I'm almost done my bottom 10, I think, overall. Let me know what you think of coughing and wheezing. Hilarious names, by Hilarious. the way. Hilarious. Especially because of, like, pollution. <clears throat> coughing. Coffee. 111. And 112, my 111th birthday for all those <laughs> Hobbit fans out there. Now, I really feel like these could use a third evolution, and they got it eventually. Heck yeah, so, Rhyperior. First of all, though, we have Rhyhorn, and then Rhydon, and then eventually Rhyperior, but not in Generation 1. Yes. Exact same color scheme between the two of these. He really, they really grew up from one to the other. But first of all, let's take a look at Rhyhorn, which makes a lot of sense. The Spikes po Pokemon, of course, and a Ground Rock Pokemon. Now, this one reminds me a lot of a dinosaur as well. Like a rhino meets a dinosaur. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense for this guy. That's exactly what it is. Now, I do love, I like the horn. I like, I don't know, the little paws over here, the little feet with their nails going on. We have really small incisors and like just a plain mouth. But also, I don't know, I love this stuff at the back. It reminds me of like all the spikes. Because you said it was a rock slash ground, right? Yeah. Rock slash ground Pokemon. What else do you know about this guy? Well, I don't know. He just kind of reminds me of like 
having a little dog around. I don't know, just that's I I could keep one of those around. They, they look cute. Yeah, a little pet, but then they grow up a little bit, and they evolve oh. into Rhydon. Takes a long time to evolve into Rhydon. Level forty-two. That is way too long yeah, to evolve. You get Rhyhorn pretty late on. Yes, so, so you're that's the. Why, is it, he's already when you get. Yeah. He's usually a later level, like at least like probably level thirty. Okay, that makes more please, sense. Please correct me because I haven't played. Also, no tail, huge tail. Spikes, monstrous. Spikes, tiny. But you get to grow up, and he, I think the horn looks way better now. So he's now a drill Pokemon. Because that makes more sense. Both sides kind of look like that a little bit. Remind me of that like symbolism. Yeah, and still a ground rock Pokemon, and. Thankfully, we get a third evolution into Rhyperior by trading while holding a protector. Holding a protector? Of course. Do you mean just holding someone who protects you? Nope. It's like a... <laughs> it, it's like... It's a, an item. It's an item. Yeah, it's an item. Of course. The incisors still look very similar in size, but like this one, the design of it has it actually like coming off the animal, I would say, coming off the Pokemon. And then here, it's not. It's attached. And we just have, like, the ears. We even have ears here. And this one, I've just got to be honest with you, it reminds me way too much of the, like, Nidto King, like, Nidoking. trilogy. And Kangaskhan. Yeah, I feel like all of them are kind of really similar in terms of design. Yeah. A little bit of Dragonite, but has a different color as well. Mm -hmm. Little bit of that. Well, yeah, I think Nidto King and Nidto Queen a lot. Yeah. Nurse Joy's main partner. Here we have Chansey! So Chansey is holding an egg. Can we just... Egg? Can we just talk about this? Oh, because that's an egg Pokemon, obviously. It is. Just like Executor. Yep, you gotta define no, sorry, the Pokemon. Execute. execute. We've gotta define the Pokemon by one characteristic. One characteristic. Obviously an egg. Just how Paris is a mushroom Pokemon. Yeah, that makes perfect, perfect sense, sense, of course. So this one again, another pink Pokemon that looks a lot like Clefairy, Clefable. Yeah. Way too much. I feel like this is, like, a lot of people confuse this as one of the evolutions of those two. Because mm -hmm. it really does look almost the same. This is a wonderfully positive and helpful Pokemon, though. Especially in the TV show. Uh, yep. Normal type Pokemon and likes to just help out. Yeah, as much as possible. So, like, not a fairy type Pokemon? Not a fairy type Pokemon. Uh, now, it does in later games evolve, and it evolves from Happini, and it evolves into Blissey, so they do add in some evolutions later on. Yeah, and like the, the, the previous one's like a baby Pokemon, but I remember Blissey, of course. So this one has these little like wings, I want to call them, that are really similar. Another Pokemon had this. These are vinyl feeling. So they're very different in terms of design compared to the other one, just with that. Like Ghastly's eyes. Like Ghastly's eyes as it was. There is a tail on this Pokemon, but otherwise it does look like like a ball. Like it just like looks like it should roll around and it's kind of large. Kind of like Jigglypuff. But definitely helps with the healing process in terms of the show all the time with Nurse Joy. Kind of cute, but looks too similar to a lot of the other Pokemon. But very useful, I think. Of course, overall, especially, especially like I said, in the show. And a very rare card. Very, yeah, especially in the first set. The first set of Pokemon cards. If you can get a Shadowless first edition Chansey card, which I actually had, but it was in terrible condition, there's not that many that are rated 10 as a Pokemon card. 114 is another Pokemon that looks a bit like a ball. We have Tangela. <laughs> so Tangela literally looks like a Tangled disaster mess. It's a vine Pokemon. Sure looks like a vine when it's blue. The, the blue is a bit confusing. Uh, it is a grass type Pokemon, which would be consistent with the vines. It is, but not consistent with blue. The blue is confusing. It should be green. And then like, I don't know, it just has these giant eye circles with like these little red feet that they try to give it some defining characteristics. But otherwise, <laughs> it's just a ball. I mean, like, when I look at Venom Venonat and how it's a cute little ball and this is also a ball, like, this does not bring the cuteness factor. Not really. What I can say that they did a really good job with this sitting cutie or Pokemon fit is all the tangles do, like, you can, like, not move them, but they are, like, it is in a knot and they're all, like, tied together. So, like, all over this, you can see my fingers going through it. They did a really good job, actually, with that. So, like, Inside here, you can see that there is obviously a circle or a sphere somewhere, but like they did such a good job with the plush itself. They did as best they could with this design. And this is probably one of my last in the bottom 10. I think I mentioned enough that are probably bottom 10 for me. 
I feel like Tangela is probably a bottom 10 to a bottom 20 for me in my list from Gen 1. So Tangela in later generations does evolve into tan growth. So I guess we needed an evolution of this circular vine Pokemon. There's potential. It can go places. It could it could only go up, that's for sure. But if you ever want to just be like this is just this is what a knotted mess. Basically Tangela. Looks like a good one to toss around for a ball. I feel like they had a good name for it first and then they designed the Pokemon. They're like, sure. Yeah, that's good. Let's go. Yeah. Number 115 is almost like a two in one. This is Kangaskhan with Child. So cute. I love this Pokemon. I love this Pokemon. Again, it reminds me a lot of several others in Generation 1. There's so many that are so similar to this. They all look kind of like dinosaurs. Yeah, like a dinosaur is just so cool to me. You and I both love dinosaurs. Uh, you love Jurassic Park so much overall. But like the fact that this is a kangaroo-like type as well, mixed with a dinosaur, I love it. I think I'm so intrigued by kangaroos and their pouches. Did you know that all Kangaskhans are female? All of them. That's what it says. All of them are with child and they're females. And it's referred to as a parent Pokemon. That's it. Again, defining characteristic parent <laughs> Pokemon. Not a kangaroo. So we've got scales here and spikes, and we've got hexagon scales all over this that are really well done on this, actually. Look at the ears. I love the red eyes. And I want to call it, I'm not even sure what color this is. This is like silver, gray, brown. I'm not sure what color this is on top. But look at the little cute baby in the pouch. They've done so well with this plush, by the way, to have that. I love it. You can put maybe a few things in here, by the way. It's a deep enough pouch that you can probably use that. To, I'm not sure what you're putting in there. A penny? You can put a piece of gum. Just one Sweet. piece. A, a penny. A lucky penny in the pouch of Kangaskhan. And look at this. What are these, by the way? We got the arms, obviously, but I'm just curious. Like, are these shoulders? Shoulder pads, of shoulder course. Shoulder pads, of course. You gotta have shoulder pads with tiny little, tiny little nails all over this Pokemon. But I like it. I like it a lot. All female, though. Mm -hmm. What's nice is uh, Mega Kangaskhan, the the baby comes out and fights with her. That is so cool. Yeah. I have to. I have not seen that yet. That's pretty sweet. I've got to look at that. So that's cool because like I feel like there should be a baby type of this, and it's just this, just out of the pouch. Right. That would be hilarious. One hundred and sixteen and one hundred and seventeen. Some of my wife's favorite. We have Horsey and we have Cedra. So I think we've heard now that I like horses, and so of course. These seahorse type Pokemon were to my own heart. Now, first of all, these do look like this one looks cute, but then it grows up like viciously, in my opinion. Yeah, so interestingly, they refer to Horsey as a dragon Pokemon. And again, I've said like I definitely have an affinity to water Pokemon, and so Horsey is a water Pokemon, and I'm definitely a fan. Look how cute she is. She is just so adorable. What's the attack? Bubble block? Like, what is it? Yeah, bubble beam. Bubble beam? Yeah, it looks like it a lot, especially with the mouth like that. It makes a lot of sense. I like the design of this, and like definitely like a seahorse, but seahorses, interestingly, the male is the one that usually takes care, not always, I don't think every single species of seahorse, I'm not sure, but the male usually takes care of the babies. I'm sure. curious what the gender is, like, breakdown. It's a 50-50 split. It's a 50-50 split. Crazy. So I like this. It's got one, like, one fin at the back here for swimming around. These do not stand up on their own, as you can imagine. They're just always going to fall over. So again, I'm just displaying these with a little thing here to hold them up. All right, evolution. Seedra. So how does it get to be Seedra? Seedra, you evolve at level 32. Now again, I feel like this isn't. This is later game, right? Uh, you get horsey mid 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 game. Yeah, and then yeah, you gotta work your way up to Cedra. Um, also a dragon Pokemon, also a water Pokemon. Interestingly, in later games, you are able to get a Kingdra by holding a dragon scale while you trade. Because dragon. Because these are dragon Pokemon and not seahorse Pokemon. No, I feel like this is much more of a dragon than this is to me personally. I mean, uh, they definitely have that. That like feeling of a dragon, yeah. but I I just think they're seahorses. No, I love this like I, I just love the way this one was designed as a plush. So first of all, the tail looks awesome in the coil, yeah. just like it does with Horsey. Yeah. But I don't know. I love the belly on this. It looks so cool. I love the way they did that. I also love the expression on Cedra, and this just looks it looks really cool. It looks really cool. Yeah. And the fins here on the sides look wonderful. They're awesomely big. They're expansive. I love the way this looks, especially with the yellow to blue. They did a really good job on this. And even the yellow stitch work here. 
I think it looks great. I would refer to this as a classy Pokemon that can join Persian and Dugong. Persian, Dugong, and Cedra can go have their own little classy party. This would be like in your sixth of class. Yeah. If you had to have if six I had a classy, classy ones. Team, Cedra's joining my classy team. I think these ones are like these ones I like. I don't like them. They're not like I like them, not but not enough to be. Or anything. Yeah. Like, these aren't my top thirty, but they're like in the upper half for me. I like them a lot. Yeah. Number 118 and 119, we have Goldeen, and we have Sea King, which I think is funny. It feels, I don't know, Goldeen to me, maybe doesn't seem like a, like a masculine name. It feels more feminine to me overall, but then Sea King is like king, like very masculine king of the sea. But what's the breakdown for gender for these? They're 50-50, and I genuinely had never considered that until you said it this moment. I always imagined it was like... I, like seeking something out. That's how I always pictured it. And yeah. I know that's not the proper way to spell seek. It was just always in your the, brain. That's that what was it was. In my brain. Yeah. So like seeking out something. Yeah. And golding like goldfish. Yeah. Yeah. So fun story. Um, I had a goldfish that I named Goldine, and it's the longest I've ever had a fish ever live. That fish lived for I'm not kidding, four years. Her parents actually. I'm just kidding. But her parents actually replaced it after two years, and she was supposed to name it into Sea King, but she just kept the same name. No, it was definitely the same fish. Yeah. Because... The same markings and everything. It was so old, and it swam upside down, and, like, it, we really... <laughs> we should have put it out as misery, but it just kept living! And so we named it... it was, its name was Goldine. You gave it a great life. It had a great life. So first of all, let's take a look at Goldine. Obviously a goldfish Pokemon. I don't know how you got that idea. And... I know, shocking, a water type Pokemon. Again, like this one, I mean, beautiful, gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah. Look at the fins on this one. They did a really good job with this. Three at the Love back, it. two on the sides, horn on top. Look at that. I think it's hilarious, the mouth. I don't know why. The mouth is such a, like, fish mouth. It is. It's. I mean, like, I feel like it should it be like the like other, it should be like this. I'm not even sure which way it no, should be. that's the way a fish mouth is. Maybe. Yeah, perfect. Like, the eyes, I like how they're little blue eyes. I don't know. It looks really, like, it looks pretty, but 50-50 in terms of gender. Yeah. Eventually evolves into Seeking. Yes, at level 33. So this is, to me, it was supposed to be the king of the sea, but I think it's, I, I like how they changed the color. They, like, reversed the color scheme a little bit. Also, this one gained some spots, getting a little bit older with some spots, and it has a little bit of feature work around its eyes, but it lost its blue eyes. Its horn kind of moved down its body and went a lot brighter in color, but it still has that fish mouth, but now with teeth. Yeah, the teeth are so awkward. Just little tiny <laughs> teeth. Tiny little teeth. Just little tiny ones. So Seeking is also a goldfish Pokemon, and I know you're surprised, also a water Pokemon. Very shocking. And also the tail. The tail's now like almost fully connected and it's huge. Huge. Huge fin for the tail. Now, these ones are, like, a little bit too plain for me overall, I feel like, for fish. I don't know. I feel like some of the Pokemon, they can kind of go way out there, but, like, the most beautiful part of these is the markings, but also, like, the tail. The tail does the best part for it. The tails are really cool. I like them a lot. Like, redeeming qualities for these. I like that Goldeen is, like, a salmon color. I'm a big fan of the salmon. Here we have number 120 and 121, Star You and Star Me. What kind of Pokemon are these, Ivory? Well, you would think they were starfish Pokemon, but of course, Star U is a star shape Pokemon. Star shape Pokemon! Also, we have this defining feature right here of this yellow wrap, and it is supposed to be like this. This yeah. is the correct way of doing I think this. It would be like a necklace, maybe, and so it would be at the top, but it's not. Nope, nope, it's not. It's like the bottom right corner, the way it's supposed to actually be. So this obviously looks exactly like a starfish. And. It's a water type Pokemon. Again, I know, quite shocking. And like, this looks like a nose slash a jewel. It is. Yeah, a little bit too plain of a Pokemon for my liking to put it in my like, top 100, but it's not bad. I understand why they made it. I do. I, I get it why needed, they made it. Again, I don't know if we needed two starfish Pokemon, but as we said, that is a star shaped Pokemon, and star me is actually a mysterious Pokemon, of course. Mysterious. Mysterious. It's mysterious that this isn't a starfish. Right. 
So you get Starmie by exposing Star you to a water stone, and Starmie is a tough battle when you go against Misty. Like it's a it's a tough run. It's strong. It's a quite strong Pokemon. So here we it almost looks like there's two of them on top of each other. It looks like there's two rings of five on top of each other, where it's a little bit bigger here. And then also obviously this is just much more defined. The nose jewel, I want to call it, looks a lot bigger. And also the area around it, like this here, it just has more spikes. Other than that, the back looks really similar to the other one, of course. So, like, there's not that much that changed otherwise, other than the fact that, like, it's two of them sandwiched on top of each other, and now it's purple. Well, Starmie is actually not just a water po Pokemon, though, but also a psychic Pokemon. So, again, made it that much harder to beat. Like, Misty was a tough battle with this Starmie. That makes sense. I wish there was a little bit more to them. I almost wish they did have, like, eyes or a face on it yeah. a little bit more. Yeah. Just something extra. It's okay. But it's it's not my top 100 for me. Number 122, we have Mr. Mime. What's the breakdown of male-female for Mr. Mime? 50-50, of course. So Mr. Mime can be a Mrs. Mime yeah. or a Miss Mime, but still referred to as Mr. Mime. Of course. Now, this one looks the most human of almost all the Pokemon. Uh, I mean, the, agreed the with... The gangly legs and gangly arms. Almost looks like a clown. Like yeah. a little bit like a clown. Five fingers, feet with shoes, it almost looks like, right? Rosy cheeks, eyes, and a face looks a lot like a human. Reminds me just so much of a clown. So they refer to Mr. Mime as a barrier Pokemon and a dancing Pokemon? Well, because Mr. Mime, obviously the barrier Pokemon, where he like acts like there's a wall in front of you, just like someone who's doing that with like... Reflect. The, in the invisible walls, basically, that mimes usually do. So Mr. Mime, like, literally, like, a mister. So like a human. he is a psychic Pokemon in the first generation, um, but that expands to be a psychic fairy. And there's also a Galarian Mr. Mime, which is an ice and psychic, so that's pretty cool. I think a psychic fairy is the perfect name for this Pokemon. I think that works really, really well. Mm -hmm. And psychic makes a lot of sense, especially with imagining there's a force field with Reflect. I think that's a wonderful, like, mechanic of this. Now, if I were designing the first 151 Pokemon, I don't think I would have made one like this. No. So this is a very different kind of style or design, and I'm not sure what to call these. Are these ears? Are they growths? I don't really know. Is it, is it hair? hair? Maybe it's hair, and it's just designed in that way. I'm not sure, but I like the rosy cheeks. Look at that. Look at these shoulder pads, too. I feel like they're shoulder pads, basically. Lots but... of our Pokemon have had shoulder pads. Very interesting. Yeah, good design with the shoulder pads. Otherwise, really interesting, like, kind of made-up thing creature. At 123, we have one of my personal favorites. Easily a top 10, maybe a top 20. Here is Scyther. Scyther is a Mantis Pokemon and is a bug-slash-flying type. Now, I love the wings. The wings have the exact same material as what we've had previously. They're kind of like, I don't know, vinyl meets fabric. Just probably some sort of fabric. So this was on Ghastly, and it was also on Chansey, I think. That yeah. fabric type. So yellow wings, four of them, which look really, really cool. Mantis for sure with these giant cutters right here. Again, I don't know who I'd want to meet on the street. I'd be terrified of Beedril seeing this one on the Scyther. street. Beedrill or Scyther. I feel like Scyther would win, though, overall. Yeah. Love this Pokemon. I'm not sure what it is about it. I think, it, again, it goes back to Pokemon Snap. When it's hiding in the weeds, basically, and you have to keep throwing things in, and eventually you hit it, and that moment when you hit it, and you see it fly up, and it starts, like, I don't know, hacking at the air and yeah, screams its, it's name out. It's terrifying. Scyther! Yeah. Um, at later generations, he evolves into Scissor or Sizer. I'm not sure which way you pronounce it. I don't that. think I've ever heard it said out loud. No, I've only I read have it. No idea. I'm really happy they gave this an evolved form, because it's such a cool Pokemon, in my opinion. Again, like... Kind of Obviously, like it should a, be bigger. A dragon bug. Yeah, dragon bug would be perfect. What? It's just normally. What's it labeled as again? Mantis. Just Pokemon. a oh, mantis Pokemon. But like, what type? Grass. Grass and flying. Grass and flying. Sorry, okay, bug, that makes bug sense. Bug and flying. Bug and flying. Okay, they could have gone with so many different types here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this also could have been a dragon. Dragon, dragonfly, maybe a little bit more mantis though. Yeah. Now, just a small story. I saw prey mantis at my friend's house when I was growing up. Scared us a lot. It was in their garden, just in a planter right by their window. It was terrifying because they also are the ones that during reproduction, the female just eats the male. <laughs> Mid reproduction. That's insane that that happens in the world. Thank God that doesn't happen with us humans. That's my girl. Oh no. I love Scyther though. Number 124, we have Jinx, 
such an interesting Pokemon with a lot of history and changes behind it that maybe we'll discuss in a moment. So, interestingly, they refer to this as the human shape Pokemon. Literally the human shape Pokemon. We've had others, like Mr. Mime, that have been human shape, but this one, I guess they went for it. So she is a ice psychic type Pokemon. Ice psychic. Now you said she, what's the breakdown? 100% female. 100% female. Mm -hmm. That's really funny, but it makes sense, I guess. So this one got into a lot of trouble with the early design. Originally the color of the Pokemon was black, and they changed it to be purple eventually because Pokemon Company got in a little bit of trouble, I guess, of course. Well, it's just a, a, an equity issue. It is. Absolutely. So it's good that they made that change. So here you have giant lips here. Hilarious that this is like, a, I think, what, what's its attack with that? Doesn't it kiss? Oh, what What it, is it yeah, exactly? It has like some sort of kiss thing. Now it does evolve in later generations from Smoochum. Smoochum into Jinx, which makes sense as well. And I want to call this hair like blonde locks. They remind me a lot of Ninetales locks, basically Ninetales tails that we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven tails. And then it has purple hands that, yes, it looks a lot like a human. Looks way too much like a human. What'd you call it? Human type Pokemon? Human shaped Pokemon. Human shaped Pokemon. Come on, Pokemon Company. You are more creative than this. I don't mind this one. It's somewhere in the middle of the bottom half for me, probably. Where would you put it, Ivory? Definitely bottom half Pokemon for me. Now, it was quite a challenge to battle this when you went to the final four, though. Um, the One of the the leaders there of the final four has a Jinx, and, and they're tough. Yeah, they're tough to battle against, Ooh, especially because you don't see it. Because that ice-psychic combo, it made it very hard to find the, the right combination to battle against. Especially because most of the Pokemon, probably for most people leading up to that point in the game, like they don't have that much to attack psychic ice. Fire's really common, but it's just, <laughs> it's tough to have that perfect weakness matchup against Jinx. Next up is Electabuzz, which does have a kid form called Elect Kid, I think. That's like its baby form Pokemon. And it actually also involves into Electivire? Electivire, not very common with me in terms of the video games or anything like that. However, I love this guy again in Pokemon Snap. He's running around a little bit in the same level that you get Magneton, which I love. This one, like, I don't know what it is about its tail. It reminds me a little bit of Ampharos. In terms of the yeah, Pokemon type and coloring and everything, I can see that. We have like lightning bolts right across its chest, which I love. That lightning bolt, it did a really good job here. Otherwise, it looks like, a, I don't know, tiger markings and meets zebra markings with yellow. What else do we know about Electabuzz? So they just refer to it as the electric Pokemon, and of course it is an electric type. Uh, Electabuzz is 75% male and 25% female. And I do love, like, the lightning rods kind of for ears here, or antenna that it has. It has this giant eyebrow right here as well, kind of like, I don't know, it just looks... Everything screams lightning for me, even, like, the scales at the top here, or, like, the hair. And again, that tail, that multicolored, I guess, gray and yellow tail, lightning bolts all over it. Look at the cuffs here on its, I guess, elbows? Looks pretty neat. Sure. Little bit of, I guess, toenails on the bottom as well. I like Electabuzz. I just think he's kind of cool. He's a neat idea in Pokemon. He's definitely not in my top 20 at all, but I can see the value in him. Yeah, somewhere around the middle, and I appreciate them giving other generations or other evolutions, basically, yeah. for this. Both forward and backwards. Makes sense to me. Makes sense. Here we have Pokemon 126. This is another single. Lots of singles at the end of the Pokemon series here for the first generation. Magmar! Magmar is a really cool Pokemon as well. I don't know, fire types get oh, I, us. I love Magmar. He is a very cool Pokemon to me. Uh, they refer to him as a Spitfire Pokemon. Of course, a fire type. 75% male, 25% female. I don't know, I just... There's something about him very cool. I think the design is great, and I think this plush is excellent as well. The cuffs, first of all, really scream out to me. I like the cuffs and the way that they're done. I think the flames are just so unique and crazy on this Pokemon. Especially just like the coloring mechanic all over here. Looks great. The scales aren't really scales as much as like, I don't know, cylinder spikes kind of coming off the body. Flames kind of flying off this Pokemon. And again, in Pokemon Snap, so cool. So cool when it's in Pokemon Snap, but can we talk about these, like, double, giant, like, I don't even know what to call these on the top of the forehead. Giant a forehead. double forehead? A double forehead. So Magmar does evolve eventually from Magby. 
And, and oh yeah, I remember Magni. I remember getting the card. Then Mag Mortar. And it evolves into Mag Mortar. Yeah. In I appreciate that. I yeah. appreciate this having three evolutions. I like that they added these for Electabuzz and Magmar. I think they deserve those evolutions, and I'm glad they paid that off. Yeah, I think I'm still not sure about the baby Pokemon names for them to be baby Pokemon. I just wish it was the first evolution of the three. Yeah. And again, like look at this beak. Almost reminds me of a duck. Mm -hmm. Interesting choice, a little bit different, but like just kind of a cool, well, nice fire design Pokemon that like almost like a fire demon in some way. Yeah. I like it. 127, we have the single pincer. Obviously, he's not a pincer type Pokemon because we already had that in Kingler, who is actually named the pincer type Pokemon. No, of course, pincer is actually the stag beetle Pokemon. I thought he was a Kingler type Pokemon. Oh. Oh, well, no, you're wrong. Pincer type. He's, he's a he's a bug type Pokemon. Now, what I love about this is it has all four limbs, but then it also has the pincers on top as like an additional two limbs. But not a pincer Pokemon. No. Nope. Let's be clear. Now, this is what type of Pokemon? You said a insect. Stag beetle. A stag beetle makes tons bug, of sense for a this. Bug type. I like that pose, by the way. You can get its arm right above one of its pincers. That looks really cool. One of the pincers. Now, it does have all of the stitch work, which I appreciate, too. Almost reminds me, again, of a little bit of a dinosaur meets a stag beetle. But this it, is a big Pokemon. It kind of reminds me how, like, a centipede or something has that kind of, like, layers. Yeah, I completely understand that. And I, do, I don't mind it having hands like this. I mean, if it didn't have hands, and it just had those pincers, which it used, like, to attack everything, which it does anyways, would make sense. He just got way scarier when he did that. Yeah, I feel like this is scarier. I feel like that's a scarier Pokemon, where he's just, like, coming at you like that the whole time. What's the breakdown, male-female, for this one? 50-50. 50-50. Okay, 50-50 split. So I think, like, does this one have evolutions or baby types? No known evolutions, but a sweet mega pincer. Yeah, the mega it's is like, he, ridiculous. He grows wings, and it's it's pretty intense, I gotta say. And like these pincers, taking something towards its mouth would be absolutely terrifying. Terrifying. I like this Pokemon. I would not want to run across this Pokemon. No. Again, not in my top 10 or top 20. But like in my top, I would say fifty probably for I'd this say gem. The, the the stuffy they've done here is really well done. This is one of the best stuffies yeah. for sure. It's very well done. The color I think is a good color match. I think they did a really good job with designing this one. It looks excellent overall. At number one hundred and twenty-eight, the single Tauros who doesn't evolve and doesn't have a baby form either. No. Uh, now, they refer to it as a wild bull Pokemon, which I'd say is appropriate. I mean, it really reminds me more of a buffalo, a wild buffalo. This one could definitely use some evolutions, I feel like. It could do very well for it, but yeah. I love the design of this. This plush is actually amazing. I've never really, really liked Tauros, but I think what brought Tauros to my attention more was Pokemon Go. I'm pretty sure Tauros is one of the Pokemon you could only get in certain areas of the world, or regions like Kangaskhan, I'm pretty sure. So correct me if I'm wrong this for that. This is a, a really great stuffy. I I love the fluff that is like the ruffle around his neck. So soft. So soft. I love the like triple tail. Like that's really well done. Yeah, the bull tails and with three got, of them. And they like little like cording for the tails. That's this really is the cool. first time we've seen this, by the yeah. way. Yeah. So like it's own like this almost reminds me of like the Joy-Con straps for like it the does. Mario edition and the Animal Crossing yeah. edition. Almost. But yeah, the tails, the bull whip tails are a fantastic. No, the the. The hoops here, I think, are much more blue, and the tail, I thought, much more blue than I would have pictured. Than I remembered. I, I always pictured it very gray, and the, so this is a much bluer gray than I would have thought. But you're right, the mane looks fantastic, the horns are really Fabulous. incredible. Those, I'm not sure, we're calling them jewels or something on the forehead. <laughs> I'm not really I don't know sure. what they are, but the markings on this. Overall, this is one of the better plush as well in the series for representing the character, other than the blue that I just don't remember it being yeah. that blue. Yeah. Now... Did you know that Tauros are 100% male? I mean, that would make some sense. I think that would make some sense with it being a bull. A wild bull. Yeah, a wild bull Pokemon, 100% male. But mm -hmm. let me know if you guys would like to see this evolve or have a baby form before it as well, because I think it could do really well for those. Yeah. Or is it just kind of cool having Pokemon that are one ofs? Because there aren't that many. Usually they invent an yeah. evolution or a baby type. Number 129 and 130, we have one of the biggest payoffs, Magic Carp into Gyarados. Man, they really rewarded you for having the patience Carp? to keep having a Magic Carp in your party doing nothing. Literally just wasting space 
building up levels and Magikarp is so hard to evolve. It takes so long. Like there's some Pokemon that like you can level up really fast, not Magikarp. Magikarp takes forever. And so they totally paid this off. Gyarados is literally one of the coolest Pokemon ever. And so strong, so epic. Like it really makes up for the fact that Magikarp is as we see right here, this tiny little goldfish. I think this is hilarious of how different these two, because you could almost go like, I think the evolutions of like Dragonair to Dragonite with Dratini, like I think that is like, I don't know, it makes sense with the natural progression of that. This one's like almost out of nowhere. You've got like a little fish that's useless for the majority of the time that like you're wondering and waiting and wondering and waiting at the first time you ever played the game. And then you're like, what is the point of this? And then eventually you get it to evolve into Gyarados, which is so cool. But first of all, let's just talk about Magikarp for a little bit. Nothing better than the splash attack. Splash. Now, this stuff is well done. I, it I think it's pretty accurate. It has the little, like, mustache that Magikarp has. They've done a good job with that. Again. And the, the gaping mouth that just... just screams just Magikarp. Screams Magikarp. This one just feels like it should be an evolution with Sea King. Like, it really <laughs> does. With Goldeen and Sea King, like, it could have just been, like, the first one of those three. But instead, it eventually evolves into Gyarados. Alright, so how do you make it evolve? Oh, well, wait, by the way, let's just look at this plush really quick. She mentioned, like, the mustache here, whatever you want to call this. Amazing. Amazing. So well done. Like, the fins look awesome, too. I want to skip over this one so fast because Gyar Gyarados is so cool. The back tail fin looks spectacular. All of these markings with the stitch work are so well done. They really like, look like fi like fins and scales. Yeah, and then you have like, I don't know, the midpoint here is changed up. And also like, most of you are probably, if you really want to get Magikarp, you probably want to get Magikarp with Gyarados. They're such a cool pair to get both. So how do you make them evolve? You just work your way up. And wait. And hope that you have wait. rare candies to make it a little easier. And eventually, you're rewarded with this god of a Pokemon. Gyarados. God of a Pokemon. <laughs> Let's not speak too they, highly of Gyarados, but we have to. They refer to Gyarados as an atrocious Pokemon, and it is a water flying type. It was a really cool thing to have in the first generation that somehow Gyarados was a flying type Pokemon as well as water, and not a dragon. Um, yeah, how is this guy not a dragon? Like, this is very clearly a dragon. He's a dragon. If we're talking dragons, this is a dragon. This is the definition of a dragon. <laughs> Uh, so in Pokemon Shield, I actually have a shiny Gyarados, so he's red, and he's so awesome. Definitely a fa favorite for me. Now, I remember getting these, obviously, in Pokemon Snap. You could push a Magikarp into the waterfall, spoilers, and you could have it turn into a Gyarados. When he comes out, it's shockingly awesome. Such a dragon. This is one of the best Pokemon fit or sitting cutie as well, in terms of design. I just think... Also, our love for the Pokemon, because most of them are so well done, but like this thing really does look beautiful. It looks gorgeous overall. Beautiful. They've nailed the mouth open. The like, yeah, the scales that are coming along either side. Very well done. The same amount of shine that I imagine. The tail's excellent. The tail looks with those great. little spikes. Love it. But the face, like all the detail work coming out of the face and the mouth. They spent a lot of time designing this and designing it right. I a love lot of all the scales. Things going on here, like it looks like different fabrics, lots of different colors. It like this is definitely one that took a lot of work. Can we just compare some Pokemon for a second? Can we just talk about this? Look at the different design in the Pokemon. I know it's based off of a Pokeball. I understand that, but like the amount of detail work in Gyarados when you compare it to someone like like Voltorb and the Electrode, it's just remarkable how different they are. Yeah. And they really do show it, obviously, with these plush. But we love Gyarados. Again, Gyarados won't stand up that easily, so I have this stand. Because it looks way better when it's, like, flying, I think, like this. Absolutely. 131, the solo artist Lapras. Huge I, Pokemon, by the way. Big Pokemon. I really liked Lapras, and I was kind of sad in when I first played that there were no evolutions of Lapras. I, it really is reminds me of Loch Ness, right? Loch, it's, it's Nessie. Yeah, Nessie. It's Nessie. Loch Ness monster. I have a few stories about Lapras, but I really want to tell you, I thought this was the evolution when I was a kid at first. I really did. I thought this was the evolution. I thought it just made sense to me. It does. Dragonite doesn't look like the same as the other ones, but these look like, look at these. They look so similar, and I really thought this was the evolution, but it's not. More on them later. 
I love how Lapras's eyes have that kind of like seductive look. They've done a really good job of that because that's what he, he he or she looks like in in like the show and everything. Yeah, and the back looks excellent with the shell. The shell looks really good overall, a lot like what I would picture and a lot like Nessie, like a lot like what you would think Nessie would look like. Also reminds me a little bit of in Mario 64, you have one of the giant creatures in the caverns. So if you can name that creature that Mario jumps on, it's not Plessy, by the way. But still, definitely shout out to Plessy here. Plessy a little bit. is definitely built off of Lapras. From Super Mario 3D World. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get that. And Lapras is referred to as the transport Pokemon, which is absolutely Plessy. And Lapras is in a water and ice type, which was a good valuable combo as well. Now, this one does have some spots on it, which is a nice little feature and design. I like that too. And also just a little bit of a story behind Lapras. There is a giant, giant Lapras you can order that you can actually sit on as well. Now, I ordered one of these from a site that I thought was legitimate. It was not. I did get my money back, but just be very careful. If you're wanting to get one and the price seems too good, it probably is and it's probably fake. But you're right. I love the design of this. All the colors are right. Another very perfectly designed sitting cutie or Pokemon fits. 132 is Ditto. This pink thing. It's like blubber. It really it's does flubber. look like blubber. It's like flubber. It's, like flubber. it's, it's a lot like, like flubber. flubber. It is a transform Pokemon. That's what it's referred to as. And it's a normal type. But the best thing about this Pokemon is the name. Like Ditto is so clever overall. Because like whatever you can do, I can do like Ditto the whole time. Which is like honestly really clever that they nailed that. I just, I don't know. Even though it's a pink thing, blah, blah blubber. It's just a little bit, obviously, really simple in its design. I think it was supposed to be like that. I don't know. I just wanted a little bit more out of this, but I understand that it was just, you know, supposed to take on other things' characteristics, which is a cool concept for the game and also for the trading card game. I always pictured him to be see-through and, like, jelly. So I guess you can't really do that in a sweet, like a, a sitting coot. A flush. Yeah, really a difficult flush. to do that. What's it describe the Pokemon as otherwise? Transform. Pokemon? Transform Pokemon. It'll just transform into whatever, you know, it'll copy basically whatever it's attacking against. It was definitely valuable when you could breed Pokemon and you only had one of that Pokemon. That's true. That's like the biggest use. A ditto is not male or female and it just would copy whatever that Pokemon is and so you could breed that Pokemon. So definitely valuable in that sense. Yeah, again, for me, like, I think the abilities make this more worthwhile, but in terms of design of the character, it's just too simplistic for me. Could have been a little bit more out there, a little bit different. Even Porygon has a little bit more going on in terms of design. Next up, the moment my wife has been waiting hours for, we have number 133, 134, 135, and 136. Go ahead. It's Eevee and the Eeveelutions! So, of course, we have Eevee first. And then we have Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon. Now, I'm not going to hold you back much longer. Who's your favorite of the evolutions that you have here? Oh my gosh, hands down, Vaporeon. I, obviously, I, I really am akin to water. I love water Pokemon. I love cats. And so this is a water cat Pokemon with a mermaid tail. How much better does it get? It doesn't. I love Vaporeon. This is definitely one of my top three. I think it's just really cool the fact that you get to like choose which evolution you're going to use and then they add so many different evolutions later on. But first of all, let's talk about Eevee first. Eevee first. All right. Adorable. Adorable. There's a reason why they named the Pokemon game either Let's Go Eevee or Let's Go Pikachu. People love Eevee. I love Eevee. We named our cat Eevee. We really should. <laughs> we, we really should bring her down and show you what our cat is like. Because she's just such an Eevee. Like, she's so adorable. The design of this plush is excellent as well. The, like, the fluff around here isn't as fluffy as what it will be on Flareon. But it definitely looks like a nice scarf on this Pokemon. You have these little paws right here going around. The eyes are perfectly well captivated here. A little bit better than Pikachu in terms of design, I think, with this. We have some spikes here for the fur or the head. The tail. The tail is wicked. The tail reminds me a lot of the tail on... Who was that? Kadabra? Kadabra. Kadabra. Yeah. A little bit like Kadabra's tail as well. Well designed. There's obviously some seam work on this. But what else can you tell me about Eevee? So we refer to as the Eevee, the evolution Pokemon. It's a normal type Pokemon. So 
What's, what's really interesting is the majority of Eevees are male and only a very small percentage are female, 12.5%. And so when I played the Let's Go Eevee, uh, I kept restarting my game until I got a female Eevee. Because the tail's different. The tail's yeah. a heart Yeah. when it's female. So a lot of people do that. You just restart the game until you get a female for your starter. Well, but I wanted a female Eevee. I know. I know. A lot of people did that with their starter Pokemon, too, to make sure their stats are good enough, too. Also, the name Eevee is a palindrome, which is just cool. E-E-V-E-E, -E -E -E, the same forward, the same backwards. I don't know. I love that. So, let's start talking about how you evolve this wonderfully cute Pokemon. Well, you'll need a certain stone. So, let's talk Vaporeon, because Vaporeon's next in the list. Vaporeon, you, of course, need a water stone. And I know I've already kind of talked about it, but, like, this little mermaid tail that it has, the, the incredible details of it's kind of like a water Pokemon. We just looked at Lapras being kind of like that Nessie feel, and I think that Vaporeon builds on that. Now, you said this is a cat Pokemon as well. I remember you mentioning to me. Yeah. It's a, a bubble jet Pokemon is what they refer to it as, and of course it's a water Pokemon. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of a water cat, and that's just the epitome of what I love. So it's not listed as a cat. No. But okay, so it always just reminds you of a cat. It just reminds me Because I cat. thought that was so strange, but like once you said it, like I see it. I totally see it, but it's not officially like that. But this is such a cool water creature. Like we have the tough of Eevee that evolves into various things, obviously with the Pokemon, but like that is just so cool with all the scales, the ears. I mean, this almost reminds me of Zora's from the Legend of Zelda as well. Like I love this Pokemon as well. Definitely, it's one of my favorites because it's one of your favorites, and it just kind of... In my top three. In your top three is so high up. You're right, the tail is wonderful. The design on this girl, this, I mean, what's the percent breakdown for this, then? Well, it would be the same. It's the same. 12.5% percent. Oh, because of all the Eevees, obviously, mm -hmm. all the way through. Okay, so you can use stones to evolve this one, mm -hmm. but what about the next one? Because they're all like that. Yeah, you can use... Uh an electric stone for this one too. Now the electric stone for this one, now this one I always picture to be, I don't know, I thought it was I'm more- sorry, a thunderstorm. A thunderstone. I thought this one was more like spiky. Yes. Like that's the way I remember very it. Very sharp. Like sharp like quills. I don't quills. think they really captured the sharpness at They all. tried I think a little bit here with this, but I don't think they did as good of a job as they did with Vaporeon mm. because I picture like quills. Yeah. So here you have all those spikes there, you have all the spikes here and here. But I don't know, I wanted them like different, a little bit all over, somehow for it to be a little bit different. It's still good, it's just not as great as the design for Vaporeon in terms of the plush yeah. for this set. Now Jolteon is, I believe, supposed to be the fastest of the, po like the a, evolutions. Like a lightning bolt. Which makes sense, like Fast. a lightning bolt. And it is referred to as the lightning Pokemon, and of course is an electric. Now all of these obviously look really similar in terms of their paws and their design, and even like the shape of their eyes is all basically the same. I think they look very, very similar. The ears! The ears are quite unique to this one, but again, just even more spikes would have done even better for yeah. this one. And then the other stone that you need to use to evolve into this fluff ball. Firestone, of course. The Firestone, I love this. The tuft of fur on the head, on the Flareon. entire neck on Flareon, and the I tail. Love it. It's so adorable. It's so fluffy looking. This one to me looks like the most natural evolution of Eevee. Just like, I don't know, naturally speaking, the tail looks the same. The tuft around the neck looks the same. Like, but otherwise, I really like Flareon. I think Flareon's so cool overall. Again, fire Pokemon always get me personally. But again, it's same like pretty. tufts, same little pads on the feet. But there's so many other evolutions after these in the Eevee series. Do you want to name just a few of the other ones? Because, I mean, in Gen 2, we get two more. So then we get Umbreon and Espeon. And those are really cool Pokemon. Dark Pokemon and Psychic. Yeah. Um, purple and black, basically, I think, black. for those ones. Like a light purple and black. And then there's Leafeon. What, what's interesting about those is you don't actually use stones to evolve them. You have to have, like, Night a, and day. Your, it was your friendship level and then the time of day that they were evolving at. And that's so, really neat, like, different thing to use, too. It was, a, it was a huge challenge as a kid, too, trying to add up that friendship and then trying to get Umbreon to make sure that you had to play at night, and it was it was a lot. That was tough. <laughs> it was, it was tough. tough to get Umbreon. But then eventually there's, I think, Leafeon, Glaceon, yeah. Espeon, and Sylveon. And Sylveon, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we missing any of the other ones? So Leafeon being a grass ev evolution. Which is smart to have. Vapor sorry, Glaceon being the ice evolution and Sylveon being the fairy evolution. I feel like they're going to come out with more. 
I feel like there's more that they could definitely have. It would be have. really cool to have a dragon evolution, I think. Yes, yeah, so you, you just mentioned the fairy type, right? Mm -hmm. So how many are there in total? Because I feel like there's eight. I think there's eight. Because we mentioned five, six, seven, eight. I think there's eight right now. Yeah. What evolution type would you like to see next? Because I don't want to see bug. I personally don't want bug, but I wouldn't mind. You mentioned that there's grass. So, like, obviously you could have, like, what, poison, I guess? Dragon would be cool. And steel? Like, we already have psychic, so that's done. Steel would be neat, too. Steel would be awesome. So there's a few other ones they can bring. I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to end up with ten, eventually. I think ten would make a lot of I sense really to me. I really hope there's a dragon evolution. That may, if it, if it looks amazing enough as Vaporeon, because I feel like you can, like, build off of that, and, and that would be in my running. Uh, for sure for my top evolution, but there's just something about a Vaporeon. Just, I just love I, I think love, I love her. I like the evolutions a lot We've been waiting for this moment for so long. So that was a lot of fun <laughs> 137 we have Porygon This is the geometric type Pokemon. I think well, it's so they refer to it as the virtual Pokemon But the picture is supposed to be very geometric shape and this has none of that geometric shaping. No, I mean like very supposed to be very harsh lines yeah. on the Pokemon, but I think it's harder to represent that. They tried. They tried. So this is supposed to look like more like a triangle, I guess. It's head, they're trying to make this look like, I don't know, more geometric shapes, but this one does look like more like Porygon 2. Porygon 2 is much more smooth and round yes. in terms of a character design. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't think this one matches the design quite perfectly, but it's very difficult to do that with plush, I think. The tail is supposed to have those geometric patterns as well. But overall, this one does look a little bit more too curved. Too curved. Too curved for this one overall. Now, this is a Pokemon that I've always not loved that much, but again, it's in Pokemon Snap, in the wall, hidden, was hard to see, definitely. But I just feel like... I'm not sure what this one was all about. It was a virtual I'm not Pokemon, sure what this one was all about. which confused me a lot. But you said this one does evolve into Porygon Two. Yep, and then into Porygon Z. And then how do you make it evolve? Uh, you need an upgrade for Porygon Two, and then you need a dubious disc to get Porygon Z or Porygon Z. So this one, like, I just took, like don't understand enough. And the design here, like we said, should be a little bit more geometric. But the coloring's correct. The eyes are pretty good overall. It's just, again, not in my favorite Pokemon because I'm not really sure what it's going for. And maybe that's the whole point. Because you said it's based off of a, not virtual Pokemon, but a, yeah, virtual Pokemon that looks geometric as much as possible. Yeah, it, it's an interesting idea and I, I would have liked to know more about the history behind it. And I think we still, we can learn. More to come. More to come. 138 and 139, we have Almanite and Amistar. These ones, obviously, are the start of, like, a few in a row that are, like, ancient Pokemon that I really like. I like how they brought this mechanic in late in Gen 1, though. So, first of all, let's take a look at Almanite. So, Almanite's a spiral Pokemon and is a rock water Pokemon. That makes a lot of sense in terms of design. This one obviously reminds me a lot of the other water type Pokemon, like Paris, like Parasect, a lot like those other ones too that were in like shells, basically overall like Shelter and Cloister. Yeah, it definitely brings on that crab, oyster, clam idea. But like almost, almost part of the fossils, like the ancient dinosaurs like that. And you actually get to choose it as a, a and it's like a fossil, I believe. Yeah, exactly. Which is really cool in the game and everything. So this one, it's really true to its design for me. I love the stitch work and the swirl that you get here with its like shell. That looks really good. And also, I don't know, it just, its eyes, it really captivates, it captivates it really captures the way the Pokemon, I think, is supposed to look. Yeah. The eyes are beady off of its body, but it's I well done. That's accurate, yeah. It's very well done overall. Mm -hmm. So eventually you can have it evolve. Level 40. Which, again, seems late, but it, it makes sense. It takes a while sense. for you to get it evolved in the first place with the Helix Fossil. Now, when it evolves, look at its eyes. Its eyes change quite a bit from white to yellow. And also, obviously, now we have, like, lines as the pupils with this little white dots in it as well and the spikes so like those are the main differences otherwise it does look really quite similar still referred to as a spiral pokemon still a rock water pokemon uh Amistar, yeah it i think they've done a really good job to represent this pokemon it looks good it looks good overall the tentacles of course the tentacles are a lot longer on this one so it's just grown up and it has a full mouth that looks a lot more terrifying 
This one, like, I don't know. This one looks cute to me. Yes, I agree. And this one looks, like, way more terrifying to me. Quite intimidating. Yeah, definitely more intimidating overall. I like how they added the spikes. These are, like, natural progressions. I wonder if they could have taken this one even farther. I feel like they could have. Maybe a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, they could have picked it up. But, but I'm happy I with like two. It. I, I like think it. two's enough here. Yeah, for sure. At 140 and 141, we have Kabuto and Kabutops. Now again, I love these like ancient fossil type Pokemon. I think they're really neat. You could have gotten Kabuto by choosing the dome fossil. And Kabuto's a shellfish Pokemon. And we've talked a lot, and that's probably what a bunch of these Pokemon should have been. The Krabby and Kingler and Shelter and Cloyster and Paris and Parasite, they all should have just been shellfish Pokemon. Maybe they held on to that for like like these. For this moment. Yeah, so like this one I'm not in love with that much, but I really like its evolved form. And the fact that, like, they're, I don't know, ancient fossils. I like that concept. Because overall, this, this is a little bit plain. Obviously, like, a shellfish. We have these, like, I don't know, circles here with, like, lines through them with the, I guess, this, uh, the patchwork here. But then we have these, like, beady it pink eyes. It made me wonder which ones are which, the eyes. Which is the eyes? Is it like this? Is it like this? I feel like these are the eyes to me. And these are, like, fake eyes because a lot of them have that yeah. yeah underwater and then we have the legs basically here four of them so this one i'm not in love with but eventually it evolves into kabutops which is so cool a lot like scyther very similar arms in terms of scyther also evolves at level 40 and they still refer to this as a shellfish pokemon uh, both of them are rock water Pokemon again, so just like Amistar and Ammonite. And ripped abs. Looks like it's uh, pretty pretty strong overall. Quite jacked. It's got its its arms evolved incredibly into full blown legs, but also <laughs> like look at these a lot like Scyther. Uh, terrifying. I like Kabutops quite a bit. Probably close to my top twenty, not my top ten, but really high up. The head here looks a lot like what I would picture it, just obviously with the seam work giant head its eyes are now triangles it's a huge evolution from the previous form like that is such a drastic change it's a big change it's a giant change but this one almost looks like maybe too humanoid for me maybe very human-esque it and it doesn't sit well as a plushie at all no it's really hard to make this sit because its head is so top heavy so, like, you can do it probably, but it won't stay there very long or forever. Hey, there we go. We got it finally in the right spot. It's back, by the way. It has great, like, I love these. The detail work in those looks excellent as well. But, like, I'm not sure exactly how many human forms they have are very, very similar to human forms. Maybe I'm just, like, I see things, I just think I'm relating to one another. Yeah. But this one, again, reminds me of, like, a brown-typed scyther. Almost in that same vein, especially with those hands. Yep. It looks like it has scissors for hands, or yes. knives for hands. Or claws for hands. Do you remember that character with knives for hands in Guardians of the Galaxy? It wasn't in Guardians of the Galaxy, it was in Hulk. It wasn't in Hulk. Hulk was in the movie too, but it was in Thor. That's what it was in. It was in Ragnarok. <laughs> the guy that has, like, hi, I have knives for hands. What a great character. Love that as well. All right. After this, though, we're in the final 10. Woohoo! Number 142, making this the 10th last Pokemon in Generation 1. This is Aerodactyl. So Aerodactyl is a fossil Pokemon, and you could have got him through uh, using Old Amber. I love this Pokemon again for some reason. I think it looks hilarious when it has no true arms. It has wings kind of for arms. And I just, I'm shocked that this didn't have, a, like, evolution either prior to it or after it in Generation 1. Did it ever have an evolution throughout Pokemon's history? I think it's on its own. On its own. It does have a mega evolution, and it's it becomes much more like rock-like, and so it is a rock flying type, and when it mega evolves, it does take on more of that rock shape. That makes a lot of sense, but the mouth here is fantastic. Not too many of them I had a mouth that's like opened like this. <laughs> teeth only on the bottom, no teeth on top. Which is, which is like consistent. part of its design. It's yeah. very consistent. Yeah. Its eyes look great. I love its wings. To me, it's such like a dragon type purple gray Pokemon. And the tail. The tail is like so iconic for me for Aerodactyl. Again, like we've had so many of these kind of fossil ancient Pokemon now in a row. This is the last yeah. one of those. And like, I just love Aerodactyl. I'm not sure why they didn't make other forms of it. It is a, it's a good question for sure. It's definitely a, a nice dinosaur Pokemon to bring in and... 
connects well to that whole ancient theme. I like that they bring it out as old amber. It reminds me of that nostalgia of things like Jurassic Park. So I definitely like it. It's not one of my top tops, but it's a cool Pokemon. No, and the one that I can compare it to the most, obviously, is Charizard. And Charizard just, I don't know, Charizard's just cooler to me, personally. But the mouth isn't. The mouth wins on this guy, for yeah. sure. I think everything else, like Charizard, kind of wins. I don't know, it's got a flame tail. It has its own arms. It has a different colored belly. Perhaps. Perhaps. You'll bear with me. Yep. Maybe Aerodactyl was the prehistoric Charizard. Nice. Nice. Who knows? Maybe they were long, ancient cousins or somehow related all right. the way down the line. That would be really cool as well. But the mouth on Aerodactyl wins. That's like one of the best ones in this series. For sitting cuties or Pokemon fits. Number 143 is the giant Snorlax. Man. I like this guy too. When you're playing this game... And you you meet him for the first he time. He blocks see, the oh, path. He's blocking the path, and you're just like, what is going on? Just let me pass. This giant Pokemon's in my way. So confused. Uh, so Snorlax is referred to as the sleeping Pokemon and is a normal type. Now, in later games, he does evolve from Munchlax, so that's pretty cool. Munchlax has a much bigger mouth, like Munch, like eating. His Gigantamax form, though, is so sweet. Yeah. He, like, literally is laying down asleep, and he's got, like, a tree growing out in front of his belly because he's been laying there for so long that he's, like, taking on the growth around him. Now, the pads on his feet look cool. I like the little nails here you got. And the face is so perfect for, like, Snorlax sleeping. You can wake him up in the Pokemon Snap games by playing the Poke Flute when you eventually get it. And depending on what song you play on the Poke Flute, he has different dances. So like he literally just starts like dancing and you like wake him up, which is so awesome. You get these different pictures in it. So definitely check that out in the original Pokemon Snap game. I'm really pushing Pokemon Snap throughout this video. We love Pokemon Can't Snap. Can't wait to play that game that's coming out. So overall, this guy's huge. It's a well-made plush overall, but again, the seam work is a little bit too evident probably across his belly. Otherwise, it's a well-done plush. It would look adorable his, on a shelf. His face is pretty, pretty perfect here in terms of that sleeping look with his two teeth up. And his little ears right here little as well. Well-made plush. They did good there. 144, 145, and 146 we decided to do all together because Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres, Unos, Dos, Tres, I did not notice that Never for so it. long nope. until someone pointed it out to I me. Didn't, I didn't realize it until you told me earlier in this video. Really? Yeah. That is insane that yeah. you just realized. Yeah, Unos, Dos, Tres means like... One, two, three, obviously, is what we're doing here. All right, so these are legendary bird-type Pokemon. They're right at the end of Gen 1, of course. They are beautiful, gorgeous, and also, they were very, very popular with Pokemon Go. First of all, let's take a look at Articuno. Beautiful bird. So referred to as the Freeze Pokemon and the Cruel Pokemon. Cruel? Yeah, that's what it says. That makes some sense, too. And it's an ice-flying Pokemon, and... There's no known gender, which is interesting. That's crazy. No known gender for this. Can we talk about how gorgeous this is here? It's like, that looks amazing across its chest with how soft yeah. that is again. So it has that material on it. Its tail is huge. I wish, I'm not sure what I wanted out of its tail. A little bit more based on what I've seen in like the anime and the games. Yeah. So overall, like the tail's fine. It's just not great. But the rest of this is so well done, I think, overall. I think this represents the character very nicely. I love the, I'm not sure what to call these, the tufts on the top of its head as well, like the yeah. feathers kind of coming off. Well done. I love it. So Articuno won, and then we have Zapdos for two. Zapdos is something that, for me, is so nostalgic because the very first Pokemon pack of cards, I always went with my father to hockey card conventions. He collects hockey cards. And when I was there for hours with him, you know, he would give me a few dollars to buy a Pokemon pack. And I remember sitting there and opening my first pack of Pokemon cards and getting Zapdos as a holographic. So I've always been connected to Zapdos, basically for that reason. So Zapdos, I love, and this is pretty well done. I love the black and white of this for the two different, like for the wings and for the, the tail. The wings are awesome and the tail feathers are awesome and the way they've done like around his legs is awesome. I don't... I think his head looks funny, though. His head does look a little <laughs> bit strange to like, me. It looks too big. Yeah, maybe a little bit too big. And, like, I'm not sure. Maybe not bird. Not pointy enough? Not pointy enough? I'm, yeah, not maybe really not sure. pointy it's, enough. The head, the head doesn't quite 
match up, I think. And the beak's made of a different material. Uh, some other type of felt, basically. So, like, overall, this one's pretty well done, especially because the wings are so fantastic. The legs are really good, as she said, but you're right. Now that you mention it, I think the head and the face look a little bit strange. You'll love the that what they describe Zapdos as. The electric Pokemon and, are you ready for this? The strong legs Pokemon. I'm sorry, what? The strong legs Pokemon, of course. I don't see it. <laughs> Another leg day Pokemon. Uh, yeah, what's good? Like, we gotta get them doing more leg days. Definitely not the, the leg day Pokemon. strong leg Pokemon? What are they talking about? All right, the next one for three, we have Moltres. Moltres. <laughs> this Blowing one's my gorgeous. Mind. Gorgeous. I, Moltres was definitely my favorite. So this one, as a plush, is... Oh, I like this one probably the most of the three, mostly because they always get me with this the softer flames, material. The flames. The, the flame. Fluff. The flame fluff. And so Moltres is a flame Pokemon and the malevolent Pokemon. So, hold on. Articuno is the cruel Pokemon. Moltres is the malevolent Pokemon. And Zapdos is the strong legs Pokemon. <laughs> I don't think they crushed that, it. I don't think that translation came through properly. No, I think they missed something there. <laughs> Obviously, like these two are kind of negative because like they're legendary, right? Yeah. But then like I don't understand what happened there. Cruel, malevolent, strong legs. I don't know what happened there. That's I'm not, strange. I'm not really sure what happened there, but I I really love that fluff. That that really does add that extra dimension for that flame aspect. So I appreciate that they tried there. What I think is really interesting with all three of these is they have almost the exact same feet. And I know they're birds, but I meant like they all have like the three toes with the one thing on the bottom. And like they're obviously just slightly different color variations. And this one's like, you said ice obviously, right? For Articuno. So, but what's your favorite? What team would you be on, especially with all the things going on with all three of these? in the various games going on right now. What team are you a part of? Which is your best of these three? I'm def definitely Moltres. And if you've seen Galarian Moltres, Galarian Moltres is black and pink, and that is totally my jam. I'm probably Team Zapdos just because of my childhood for that reason and the nostalgia, but I really like Articuno from these three otherwise. Mm. 147, 148, and 149, we have Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragon Knights. I love Ooh, this trilogy this of Pokemon. This trilogy is awesome. Not enough, really, for me of a change between these two, maybe, but then you have Dragon Knight at the end, which is just so cool. I could have been with only one of these two, probably, personally, but I know the size is quite different. Quite different, and the, like, beauty factor of Dragonair, she ends up being such a gorgeous Pokemon. Now, Dratini is referred to as the dragon Pokemon and is a dragon type. And so this is one of the few dragon types that we see in Generation 1. This one is a little bit simplistic in terms of design. They have the tail attached to the body. We have half white, half blue. And then on the top here, I'm not sure if I imagined her... Like, this is very kind of curved features here, I would say, overall. But I love kind of like the fins for, like, ears almost, it looks like, on this Pokemon. And a little bit right here. I would call this a little bit of a horn. Does it say what the breakdown is for male-female for this? It's 50-50, and so this is our, our baby sea serpent, I feel like. I feel like that makes sense. And then evolves into Dragonair, how and when? A uh, dragon Pokemon again. It evolves from Dratini starting at level fifth, sorry, 30. Now, this one, you're right, is the, it's the most gorgeous of the three, for sure. For sure. Just gorgeous. The, as far as, so, we've been talking about classy Pokemon. Uh, Dragonair is definitely joining Persian on this classy Pokemon. And I wouldn't put Dragonite on that classy list. No, 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 no. Dragonair, very classy. Dragonite, no longer classy. And this <laughs> one, like, does it refer to it at all as, like, a snake or is it just serpent? A or dragon Pokemon again. Just, just dragon. Because I like the blue touches on this. Yeah. Almost reminds me again a little bit more of a snake with this though, it does. and it's definitely much, a sea serpent. it's much bigger and longer than the other one, mm -hmm. and like definitely much more classy as a Pokemon. A little bit simplistic in its design. Again, it has the horn and the I would call them I guess they're fins for ears, but I, I like that overall. The eyes are a little bit changed from the original Dratini. It looks like I don't know. It just looks a little bit more intelligent to me as well. Definitely. And then you have the final form. I love this guy. I don't know. This was a ton of work to get a Dragonite. You had to work to level 55. I remember trying, like, plugging away and working with that Dragonair for so long, and getting this Dragonite was so worth it. It was. And, like, Dragon types are hard to come by in Gen 1. 
So like just earning it, you definitely had to. That's such a late level is 55, but yeah. very powerful Pokemon. I like the blue wings. They do really well. I don't know. This guy looks like just such a cute little. He looks cute. He's Again, not a little very, at all. Like, plezzy like. Yeah, very plezzy like. What's the breakdown for gender? 50-50. So like all three of them are 50-50 the yeah. whole time. But like look at this stomach here and the patchwork looks excellent That's on really this. Well done. And like you're right, a lot like Plezzy, like a very pleasant dragon. Friendly so, like, dragon. Shy and smiley. If we could find uh Charizard, I'd be curious to compare, compare the two? them. We're just we love Charizard cuz they are so similar as They're dragon types similar. obviously. Both dragons, both flying, both, both orangish. Orangish tinge with the bluish greenish insides of their wings. They are honestly way too similar. Now like, looking at them together... It should have just been a blue dragon. Right. Like you could have had a fire dragon. Dragonite, a blue dragon. You could have had a fire dragon and a blue like ice dragon. Mm -hmm. Which would have made like a lot of sense. Yeah. Overall. That's very interesting. But I do really like Dragonite even though it's so similar. Maybe yeah. that's why because it's so similar to Charizard. So now we have the fins are kind of now just like eyebrow extension things yeah, here. The horn is now on the top of the head. So there's a little bit of a horn there. And like she said the wings are almost the same color as the previous form. Really, really similar. I do love that they've made Dragonite smiling because that's pretty consistent with the game. It's like the gentle giant. The gentle giant, really pleasant. Overall, nice design. I like the tail as well. So this tail is a well-made plush. I like it. And I'm really curious why they decide blue. Different shade of blue. Kind of looks way too similar to Charizard with color, to orange. Wish they kept that one blue. And maybe it could have been like breathing fire ice. Or something like that. Yeah. That would have been cooler. Well, it uses Hyper Beam, of course. It would have been cooler. Hyper Beam makes sense, too. <laughs> We're at the end. This is number 150 and number 151. We made it! We have Mewtwo and then Mew, which is really Very confusing, confusing for a lot of people. Very confusing. But first of all, let's talk about Mewtwo. Had his own movie early in the Pokemon franchise as well. One of the most well-known Pokemon, for sure. For sure. Uh, referred to as the genetic Pokemon, which makes sense. And it takes on a bunch of different forms depending on what game you're playing, but essentially it's a psychic Pokemon. And this one's insanely intelligent. Like, brilliant. Brilliant Pokemon, smarter than some humans, can also telekinesis, and like, mind... Speak to you through its mind? Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't know what that skill is exactly. What's but... that called? Because it's not telekinesis, that's moving no, things that's with your mind. That's moving things with your mind, which it can also do. Yes. Um, yeah, very intelligent being. Genetically made, purple eyes, terrifying to battle against as well. Terrifying. And, like... Such a cool Pokemon. The design of this is really well done, actually, overall. The tail is great, and I just think this does scream Mewtwo. The eyebrows look a little bit like, a l I don't know. I think they're too big, honestly. They're too big. They do. They look a little bit too intrigued, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, like, Mewtwo definitely has the glaring look, but this is almost too glary. Yeah, a little bit almost too glaring it overall. Anger rather than glare. But otherwise, like, this is really well designed. Just, I do think those eyebrows are maybe a little bit off, but I like the purple eyes, and the design is quite nice. And then we have Mew. Adorable Mew. The final... I don't want to spoil it for Pokemon Snap. If you've played Pokemon Snap, play it, please, again. Because, so yeah, awesome. of course, of course I'm talking about something near the end of the game. Yeah, okay, we're spoiling the original Pokemon Snap a little too much. So here we have blue eyes, adorable little feet. It has the pads on the feet and everything, and then the tail is really similar. So what do we know about Mew? They refer to Mew as a new species Pokemon and also a psychic Pokemon. Of course, no known gender. And not much was known about this Pokemon for Generation mm -hmm. 1. And, I mean, I think it's so interesting that we go from Mewtwo and then number 151 is Mew. Yeah, when I'm pretty sure Mewtwo is built off of Mew and like designed off of what Mew was, I thought. But their numbers is a little bit different. Yeah. So it depends like when you find them and discover them and everything, I guess, within this series. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of other Pokemon obviously after these, and they actually had some within the Generation 1 show that they show off even in the first episode, ho ho. But it's not in Generation 1, which was so interesting yeah. to me. Togepi. Yeah, Togepi as well throughout the entirety of the show, yeah. but not in the not 151. in the 151. So I actually have a set of 151 figures plus Togepi, just because it was in Gen 1 the whole time. 
Maybe one day we'll have to do this video for Generation 2, but I really want to thank Ivory here for helping me out and do all of these because, wow, that was a lot of Pokemon. If you had to name your top three from Generation 1, would you be able to name your top three? I'm going to think about it for a second. Everyone in, sh everyone in comments, by the way, what are your top three favorite Pokemon? I'm just Mine curious. Mine Blastoise, Rapidash, and Vaporeon. Wow, so Blastoise... In any order? Does the order matter? Blastoise is first. Blastoise is first. Then Rapidash. Then Rapidash. Then Vaporeon. Then Vaporeon. That makes sense. Top three, baby. I think it's really hard for me to get away from, like, this starter Pokemon. So my number one as well is Blastoise. We're both so incredibly inclined towards Blastoise. Charizard's got to be near the top of my list as well. Charizard's just so cool. And, like, I just think Charizard is just so iconic to the Pokemon franchise and the trading card game. And I do honestly love Venusaur as well. But I'm not sure if Venusaur is in my top three. My last pick might be Pikachu. Just because of, like, my childhood and nostalgia. I really like Pikachu overall. There's so many to choose from, from Generation 1, that I thought they did a really good job with the diversity of Generation 1. And I'm trying to look around and pick my other top one. But, like, Dragonite's so cool as well. Ninetales is wicked. Golduck's pretty cool. Arcanine, I loved growing up as well. But if I had to pick three right now, it would be Blastoise, Charizard, and Pikachu. Probably for my top three from Gen 1. As part of a conclusion of this video, I thought I had to show off my Pokemon Wall collection of all the main series games. When I heard it was Pokemon's 25th anniversary, I kind of did a double take because I thought they were released really close to the year 2000. When I looked it up, they were released 1998 in North America. However, for the 25th anniversary, that goes back to 1996. So although we got Pokemon Blue, Red, and then eventually Yellow in North America, earlier than that in Japan, they had Pokemon Green and Pokemon Red released, and then later on they had Pokemon Blue as the special edition, and we got Pokemon Yellow as I said. These are the special edition 2DS consoles that were released for the 20th anniversary of the Pokemon franchise. They're on rose-colored gaming stands if you were wondering. I also have some other systems like the 3DS systems that were released for Pokemon X and Y and the really cool original Game Boy Yellow there it looks like, Game Boy Color with Pokemon Yellow in the pack. That's insane that I have that. Prices for these have been going up and up and up. I just wanted to mention, especially this year with Pokemon trading cards being so so collectible and everyone going after them and all of the games. There's so much to be doing with Pokemon this year, so I really hope you enjoy this video and you had a great time watching it. I can't believe how long this video went, by the way. Crazy. My wife's awesome for helping me out. So there you have all 151 Pokemon from the Sitting Cuties collection, otherwise known as Pokemon Fit. I will put a link in the description below the video in case you want to buy them from Pokemon.com. Also, I really want to ask you guys, who is your favorite Pokemon out of the 151 that we went through in this video? And who's your starter? If you're replaying through Pokemon Blue, Red, Yellow, or Green as part of the 25th anniversary, who do you choose to start the game with? I'm probably picking Squirtle, part of that Squirtle squad. Thank you so much for watching. I really want to also thank my patrons. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, I also have a link in the description below the video. Feel free to subscribe. I generally post videos on Thursdays and on Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Go collect them all. Keep smiling while gaming. Stay awesome, my friends. Happy 25th anniversary to Pokemon.